challenges I face it when during my referee careers. I face challenges like being a female referee. My challenges is like uh, when you facing men, like sometimes men they, they think that I cannot do things like men do it. So some challenges I face it, but I always put things at my bike. I don't think too much like negative things. I just put it on my bike and I get the positive things and I move forward. And, um, you know, overcoming some of these challenges and cultural barriers to being a, a female referee, um, it's male dominated. How did you overcome like being a female referee, some of the decisions that you make? Um, how do you overcome those kind of challenges? Uh, during my matches, when I, it comes to a men's game, uh, it feels like sometimes I overcome because I know that this is this is what I'm doing. I'm doing the right thing, okay? Just like decision making, sometimes men don't think that, hey, you're not doing the right, but I know what I'm doing. Sometimes they just want to get over me. Maybe they think because I'm a lady, I can't do I can't do the right decision, maybe something like that. But for me, I was just overcome and give my decision and go and go. Um, also, like now you, you have um, your FIFA badge. What does this mean for you? Like ref, uh, doing um, refing or officiating games locally. What does this mean for you personally? Uh, for me, uh, I want to be like go more further. I want to achieve. I want to be like officiating in the World Cups. That's what I want as a referee, and I need to work hard. And I'm looking forward to officiate in more matches in FIFA tournament. Okay, just I think um, uh, I think it's a dream to, to be refereeing at a World Cup. But just um, in the Pacific, what do you think about, you know, the level of football, uh, women's football, like in general in the Pacific? You have um, the exposure, the experience, you've been to like many countries in the Pacific. How, um, how do you see the development of women, women's football? Uh, for me, in women's uh, women football in Pacific, yeah, for me, uh, it, it quite, uh, sometimes I see their challenges and also they are playing well. But for me, I feel like when I'm officiating women's football in the Pacific, it's like, for me, it's quite not that, it's not that tough for me because I always officiate men's game, so when I go to women's games, it's more like it's easier for me to uh, to officiate. Uh. So have you seen like over the years you've been been a referee for quite some time now? Um, each year as you go out um, to tournaments around the Pacific, has the level of football gone up, or um, what's the level of development in football over the past probably couple of years? Uh, for me, uh, I think we need more, like we need more, yeah, we need more, develop more, yeah. And what would you like to say to other aspiring women who may be interested in doing um, referee? What is like the highlights of being a, 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 a female referee? What's the, a really good thing about it? Uh, just to tell my aspiring referees, the young ones, uh, please don't give up on your dream or what you can do. Believe in yourself that you can be the best that you can be and never give up. Just keep working harder and stop. Uh, keep working harder and fight for your dreams and you will be get there one day. Fresh off the field. The Sporting Pulse of the Pacific. ABC Radio Australia. That was Sharma Mai Mai. FIFA referee from the Solomon Islands. Of course, we have our very own fresh off the field co-host, Finau Vuli Vuli, who was also the first FIFA referee, male or female, to come out of Fiji. That was back in 2008. So it's great to see so many women taking up refereeing in the Pacific region. Well, that brings us to the end of the show for this week. I hope you've enjoyed taking a look back at some of our best interviews across the Pacific so far. Thanks for listening to Fresh Off the Field, the sporting pulse of the Pacific on ABC Radio Australia. I will be back next week with two new co-hosts from across the Pacific talking all things sport in our region. 
This episode was produced on the lands of the Ghana people and the Gadigal people. This program has been funded by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. If your brain is hungry for insights, the ABC Listen app has a feast of podcasts. Try the minefield. Today we're going for the problem of evil. Injustice and evil, if they're the same thing. Yeah. You might also like future tense. And there is a sense of privilege in that idea of natural, isn't there? Which can easily be manipulated without a doubt. Or Dr. Carl. So you can feel a slight cooling, that's latent heat of vaporization or something. Load up a podcast and Feed your mind with the ABC Listen app. ABC News, good evening. I'm Christian Silver. A second man has been charged over the fatal shooting of Melbourne gangland figure Gavin Preston last year. The 24-year-old man is the second to be charged with murder over the alleged assassination of Preston in Melbourne's West. The 50-year-old was killed in front of diners outside a cafe in Keelor in September last year. The man charged today was arrested in Sydney last October but had been in custody on unrelated matters in New South Wales. Victoria Police have successfully applied to extradite him and he's expected to face the Melbourne Mag- Magistrates Court tomorrow. The other man charged over Preston's death remains in custody. Meanwhile, in a separate incident, a 35-year-old man from Melbourne South East has been charged with a non-fatal shooting earlier this year. Police arrested a Cranbourne North man in Noble Park this morning. He was charged with intentionally causing serious injury and reckless conduct, endangering life. Investigators will allege a fight occurred between two groups of men who were known to each other. The man who's the second to be charged over this alleged incident is facing the Melbourne Magistrates Court tonight. Victoria's Environment Watchdog says two key mulch producers are not to blame for an asbestos contamination in parks and reserves in Melbourne's west. While investigations are continuing, the Environment Protection Authority says the production processes at the two mulch suppliers are compliant with environmental standards. Meanwhile, the Hobsons Bay City Council says samples taken from the Altona Coastal Park have tested positive for asbestos. Samples have also been taken from five additional reserves across the council area. Councillor Daria Kalanda has told ABC Radio Melbourne she wants a task force set up to bolster the investigation. A task force, in my view, is about creating a surge workforce um, set up to instill confidence that the issue is being investigated quickly, thoroughly and independently. A Melbourne business figure who can't be named for legal reasons has been sentenced to 15 months in prison for a child sex offence. The County Court of Victoria heard the man used an online voice recording service to describe sexual fantasies involving children on about 15 occasions between November 2020 and July 2021. He was convicted of making available child abuse material using a carriage service but he was actually released immediately on a three-year good behaviour period. The man's lawyers successfully applied for his identity to remain suppressed out of concern for his mental health if he was named. Julian Assange's brother says momentum is building in the US to end the prosecution of the WikiLeaks founder. US President Joe Biden says he's considering Australia's request to end Mr Assange's prosecution. The 52-year-old is facing 18 criminal charges in the US over the publication of classified documents in 2010. Gabriel Shipton, who's Assange's brother, has told ABC Radio Melbourne press groups are pushing for further action. I think there's a lot of goodwill to be taken up in the US uh, in in terms of dropping this prosecution at the moment. You've got every major press freedom group who have uh, called it, uh, you know, a threat to press freedoms in the United States. An American general is expected to to be due in Israel shortly to discuss Washington's fears that Iran is about to launch a retaliatory strike against the country. Here's the BBC's Lise Doucet. Israel and other countries in this region have been on high alert ever since Iran vowed to retaliate for the attack on its consulate in Damascus, which killed some of its commanders. Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, said Israel must be punished and would be. And Israeli officials are warning if Iran attacks Israel, Israel would attack Iran. 
Stunning artworks have been uncovered in a new excavation at Pompeii, the southern Italian city, buried in an eruption from Mount Vesuvius almost 2,000 years ago. Mythical Greek figures such as Helen of Troy are depicted on the high black walls of a large banquet hall uncovered by archaeologists. To the weather... Across the state tomorrow, patchy morning fog over Gippsland, mostly dry in the north. Temperatures will be slightly below average. Tomorrow in Melbourne, a shower or two and 18 degrees. Saturday, partly cloudy, 19. Sunday, partly cloudy and 21. You're listening to ABC News. Here's my top footy tip for the season. You can get your games live and ad-free on the ABC Listen app. I know, right? AFL, NRL, men's, women's. Whatever footy you're after, we've got you covered. Every goal, try, mark and tackle. Called by ABC Sports expert commentary team. How did he do it? Game, set, bingo. This season on the home of 100% pure footy. The ABC Listen app. ABC Sport. We begin this broadcast by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which this match will be played today and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. We extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples listening. The moment of truth has arrived. If you think you have anything other than a split second in this game right now, you're kidding yourself. He's all to play for. Every single bloke has stood up. They are leaving nothing out there. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else on earth. Welcome to ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL Premiership season. From 55, side bottom, launches, go! The crazy match points are on top of the AFL world. They win a spellbinding game of footy. Call me what a premise. This is ABC Sport. The umpire holds the footy up. You want your very best players having the ball in the moments that matter. Take your moment. This is that moment. Listen to the roar. The pressure's certainly gone up. Punches the air with the right hand. That's why we love football. Brilliant to watch. Stand by. The arms are outstretched as he pumps his chest out. Fill your lungs, fill your lungs. Are you ready for it? AFL Premiership season. From outside 50, goes bang with everything he's got. Former bad boy looking to redeem himself with kicks like that. And Gordon can finish from 35. Oh, Harold. It's there. Superb finish. What a hanger. He joins the party. Walks through the goal. Oh, what a moment. Brilliant, wasn't it? There's nothing this man can't do. Rioli with some magic. The check side finish. He seizes the moment. Stolen. Snapped it over his shoulder. He's kicked an absolute ripper. Spins around and buries it. Lightning speed, Bobby Helm. He's Bobby Thrill. This is just football at its best. Reeves around the planet and gets a brilliant goal. Gathers, snaps, to bring the house down. Talk to Steady and pull the trigger. Right foot drop punt is pure. We're not done yet. The 2024 AFL Premiership season on radio, sport digital. And take us with you on the ABC Listen app. Just look for the AFL button. Something big is coming, I know. High stakes Thursday night footy from the MCG as Melbourne hosts Brisbane to kick off round five of the AFL on ABC Sport. The D's are chasing a fifth consecutive win after losing in the opening round of the Sydney Swans, while Brisbane are desperately trying to claw their way back into the season after four losses, their first win of the year against North Melbourne last week. Hi, Brian, Matt Clinch with you for ABC Sport. Last year in round 18, it was a thriller, an epic finish. Melbourne came from uh, four goals down in the last seven minutes to prevail by a point. 
Brisbane have only won once at the MCG since 2014, but they do celebrate Lockie Neal, who plays his 250th game today at the MCG. What an occasion it would be if Brisbane could come away with the four points tonight. We'll also see uh, Colson Falstall, who will make his debut for Melbourne, pick 13 in 2023. The Western Australian comes in for Cozzy Pickett, and there's no change from the Brisbane Lions side, who defeated North Melbourne last week. So Taj Woden and James Tunstall is the subs tonight. Ben Cameron to call the action alongside me. Welcome back, Benny. Yeah, thank you, Clinchy. Who could forget that uh, meeting the last time out? They were uh, down by four goals, 16 minutes into the fourth, and were able to kick four goals unanswered. Melbourne to run over the top of Brisbane, and that was when we thought they'd answer the questions about their troubles here at the MCG. I don't want to say it too loud because I know Swanee's about to join us, but <laughs> I did enjoy both coaches' press conferences this week as well. So Simon Goodwin said, look, really, it's their forwards against our backs. And Chris Fagan said, I don't think it's our forwards against their backs. So there's a little more that goes into the game than that. I'm sure our experts will be able to tell us whether that is the case or not. The AFL Games record holder, Brent Harvey, is here for another week. Welcome, Boomer. Good evening, boys. That's... Uh Great to be back here on a Thursday night with well, such a good game, isn't it? Brisbane just got their mojo back last week against my old mob, the the mighty Kangas. Well, not so mighty at the minute, but um, but it's going to be good because... And I know we're not talking about backs and forwards, but the two big boys last week dominated us. I think they had 14 shots between them. And, of course, they got Lever and, and May to contend with tonight. So probably a little bit tougher components and... Uh, oh, sorry, opponents. So I'm looking forward to it. And alongside Boomer, the Carlton 300 gamer, Mark Murphy, is here once more. Welcome, Murph. I'm McClinchy, Benny, Boomer. Good to be here. I'm looking forward to tonight's game. I'm interested to hear the, uh, the coaches talk about it being a forwards versus backs opportunity, but there's some superstars through the middle of the ground that I'm, I'm looking forward to watching tonight. And uh, we're fortunate enough to have the CEO of the Brisbane Lions, uh, Greg Swan, come and join us right from the outset here at the commentary box at the MCG. Uh, welcome, Greg. Thanks so much for coming up. No problem. Thanks for having me. It doesn't feel like that long ago you were playing on a an MCG in a grand final against Collingwood. Now, there's some CEOs you wouldn't ask as to where you feel <laughs> like it's gone wrong. But in your eyes, where do you see your team at the moment? Yeah, look, we, ha- we've, we haven't been at our best, obviously. But I, th- I think, um, and I think Fags might have talked about that, We every game this year we've won the inside 50s. We've actually got got plenty of the footy, but it was probably just the way we've been going inside 50 that, um, yeah, we haven't... We haven't gelled properly. Like we've had some games where, you know, certainly early against Carlton we were awesome, and then we just fell away for a bit. And we started well against Freo and fell away. And you know, Collingwood in the second quarter we had twenty inside fifties to two, you know, which is a complete domination. But we didn't really bury it. So we we've, we've sort of just been a little bit off. And we, I know we worked hard last week and before the game to talk about our entries inside 50 and you know we lowered our eyes we took 22 marks inside 50 last week so the week before we took six so you know it, it got a bit better now obviously it is a different ball game with the melbourne back line and their mids like they're you know they're good they're a really good team and so but i think that's you know that's that'll be our challenge if we can get enough footy in there um yeah a few guys got a bit of confidence back last week so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think the challenge of playing back at the G, playing against a really good team, yeah, I, I, just been down there before, there was a bit of a sense that, you know, hopefully we can turn it around. When you have a mature group, obviously you don't panic, you know you can make up ground, but when you lose someone like Kadeen Coleman, the questions start to come of how different does the side need to play in this year's edition as opposed to last year. Has there been any moments where you start to just panic a little bit and think, well, it's not quite going how we expected it would go? Um... No, not yeah. You're right. We don't panic. I mean, there's a lot of experience at our place, but yeah, there's, it's you know, and you, and you can't deny it. Everybody says next man up, but like Kadeen's been, yeah, you know, he's he showed it last year in the finals, and we just thought he was ready to go this year. And even the first half that he played, he was he was really good, and then did his knee. So, but you know, that's that's where it's at. And then you know, we had Tom Duda was about to play his first game, and then he did his knee at training. So we've just yeah, there's been a few little hiccups <laughs> for us. It hasn't been perfect last year. And probably the last few years, touching wood, we've we've had a lot of good fortune with injuries. So maybe this is our year that we, you know, the, the injury gods are catching up with us. Uh, a couple of broad ones. I mean, everyone hates losing their McCluggage. Uh, are Brisbane confident? How confident <laughs> are you that he will stay? Hugh McCluggage as a free agent at year's oh, end. Oh, I know. I'm I'm very confident that he'll stay. Um, you know, he's been here for the whole journey. He loves Fags. He loves the club. Uh, loves the boys. So you know, he's our vice captain. I'll, I'll be. I'll be very surprised if he doesn't recommit soon. Are talks ongoing? Are they advanced? Yeah, I, I look, I'm I'm not in those. Uh, Dom Ambrosio, our list manager, is doing that, and I know there's 
been plenty of chats. Um, so yeah, hopefully you know these things take a little bit of time to work out because it's a big, it's a you know the timing of it, the, the the length of it, where he is as a restricted free agent, it's a big decision for him. So you know we've we've given him as much time as he needs, and you know we've but as I said, he's um, yeah. He's part of the fabric at our place, so we'll be. You know, I'd be very surprised if he left. Uh, you mentioned the the fabric of your place. Uh, I know you've got your training facility, but in terms of an actual home ground, that's been a bone of contention with the the Olympics supposedly coming up. Where does it all actually sit from the Brisbane Lions' point of view as of right now? Uh, well, it sits pretty well actually, because they the problem we had at the time was they were going to knock the Gabba over, rebuild it, and we would have to move out of there for four or five years if we didn't have a home to go to, but that's been now uh, that acts that decision, so the Gabba will stay. The only debate is now about whether they build a new stadium or not. And, um, and yeah, that's an ongoing debate. We'd like them to build a new stadium, but either way we'll be playing at the Gabba for the next, or for the foreseeable future. There's talk that they'll give it a bit of a Makeover. Uh, I think they put six hundred million dollars in the budget to give it a bit of a spruce up. Um, so that'll be helpful. And yeah, but we, we've got the good fortune now of staying there for the next for the foreseeable future. So what's the best case scenario for the Lions? You're saying a, a new stadium, not just a, an upgrade of the Gabba. No, that that'd be perfect for us. So yeah. they, if they build a new stadium for the Olympics, you know, we'd stay at the Gabba. They'd run the Olympics and then we'd move into it. It'd be a fifty-five thousand, yeah. sixty thousand seat stadium, a bit like what they've done in Adelaide and Perth. And if they did that, that would be that would be gold for us. Do you have a, a meeting with Andrew Liveris, the the chair of the <laughs> organising committee for the Olympics, about that? Oh, we, we've been talking to a lot of people about that. We've been talking to yeah, those guys, the government, the the mayor, the everybody, <laughs> anybody that can help us with uh, getting it through. We've had meetings with, but um, yeah, no, we, we've had good relationships with all levels of government and the opposition as well. So. Swanee, a player that we all love to watch, and he better stayed on the ground last week. I was a little bit scared he would have had 70 <laughs> possessions. He's Lockie Neal, 250th. Yeah. Can you give us an insight of... We, we all see from afar, and yep. two-time Brandon Brand- Brand- medalist, he's, a, he's an absolute star. What, what does he bring, not football, but around the football club during yep. the week? What, what are we missing? What, are, what don't we see in Victoria? Yeah, I think... Um it's funny when you look at all the, you know, and you guys obviously played a lot of footy. The guys that are really good, in my view, are still, they're almost still the most professional. Like, it's like, you know, he, he's always on the ground doing extras. Like, his touch, you, you, you never see him fumble. But he's always, like, every time you look out the window, there he is. You know, just someone throwing ground balls to him or he's doing one-hand stuff, two-hand stuff. He, he just works really hard at his craft. And so he's not a very, he's not a demonstrative guy, but, you know, everybody in the place... You know, you you follow. Well, he's our captain. He's our best player, and look what he's doing. And that's a really good benchmark for the rest of the group. And so that's that's his greatest strength. He's um he's you know he's he's a great team man. But I think I think that's what he brings. He brings just a, a level of professionalism that you you don't see very often. And another one of my favourite players I love to watch. He hasn't hit his straps. I don't think this year. Charlie Cameron. Yeah. He looked like he had his ankle strapped to his thigh last uh, <laughs> the last couple of weeks. Is he is he okay? And yeah. Well, is he just about ready to burst? I think he is. He, um, he he was better in the back half of the game last week. He's had, he's just had a whole lot of different issues. Fags flagged that he had his two front teeth knocked out and had a lot of nerve damage. And I reckon he's been back to the dentist about twenty times trying to get the things fixed, the implants in. They didn't fit, and then they came out, and he's been sore, and then he got the flu, and yeah, and then he hurt his ankle and. Anyway, but he's he's pretty good now. And as Fag said, when Charlie's up and about, which he has been this week, then it, it means um, that he's ready to go. Yeah, Swanee, we, you mentioned Hugh McLogage before being your vice captain. Is he someone that you can see being skipper of the footy club down the track? Is yeah. is that is that as a, a higher sort of mark that you, you see him filling? Yep, no no doubt. I mean, you know, Locke's heading into his thirties, and Harris is the other co-captain. But yeah, Hugh could. You know, Hugh's only twenty six, but he could he'd certainly be. Uh, Next cab off the rank is our skipper for sure. What about when you were dealing with Murph? Are you stunned that he's now in a commentary box after you told him you needed to do some media and he refused the whole time? Yeah, he wasn't the best at it. Was, uh, <laughs> he'd, uh, it, was yeah. good, it was good fun after losing most weeks. Yeah. That's, that's probably why. It was, uh, that's right. It's, uh, it makes it tough. And then Juddy came along and helped him out. So we, we, we chucked Juddy up all the time. So that was good. And you talked about your, your key targets getting back to some form. Joe. Joe Danaher was, was terrific in the grand final last year. Eric Hooker, he, he gets a bit of 
bit of attention, doesn't he, from a few people who um, like to think they're experts on football. Where, where do you see him getting to the, the next level? Like, is he one where he needs to really set himself today against two really key defenders, probably the two best key defenders in the comp yeah. in May and Lever, to really make a statement tonight? Yeah, I think... Um yeah, it's a really good point. It's funny with us. Every time we lose, it's their fault. It's, mm. it's, it's Hippie and Joe. And I think at the moment, as a combination, I think they sit third in the comp. You know, I think it's Mackay and Charlie on top. And I can't remember who's second. And these guys are third. So, you know, they've been pretty consistent. Um, but every time we lose, they get blamed that, you know, they haven't played well. But, it, again, that that's probably a more of a reflection on how the ball's coming in and all mm. that sort of stuff. But, you know, Hippie played... When we beat Melbourne in the final out here... Um, you know, he kicked four and he was he played really well that night and so you know he's got the capability to do it he, he you know he, he'd admit that he's been a little bit inconsistent but again he's only um, he's only 26 so he's still got a lot of footy ahead of him um, you know he did a knee two or three years ago and, and for big guys it takes a little bit of time mm. to get back but yeah we're hopeful yeah he's really important to us because he's he's a hard matchup he's a good athlete he can he, he likes playing at the G you know it's um, plenty of open space for him and uh, yeah, hopefully tonight he has a good, has a good round, a good game. The yeah. Brisbane Lions CEO, Greg Saunders, with you on ABC Sport. You can hear in the background the Brisbane Lions have made their way out onto the MCG. Lockie Neal led them through the banner in his 250th game with Piper in his arms as he broke his way through the banner. Uh, Will Ashcroft, how's he progressing in terms of his recovery? You're hopeful he'll be on the part uh, sooner rather than later. And, and his brother, is there a possibility he'll be in Lions colours next year? I'll do Will first. So Will <laughs> hit the track this week. Um, he's been so he's out. He's sort of done, uh, did a big block of running, but now he's joining general training. So we've always had him around round 10, 10, 11. So we're hopeful that now we can get another five or six weeks into him, and then he'll be ready to go. Um, he looks really good. Like he's he's filled out. He's done. A, you know, he's, he's another one. He's a super pro. He's done a lot of weights and things like that. He's. Yeah, he's pretty happy with himself walking around now. He looks, uh, he look, you know, the shoulders have got bigger and everything. And, and yeah, young, his younger brother Levi. Um, yeah, he's he, he's a really good player, and we, yeah, we're really hopeful and confident again that he'll nominate us as a father son, and we'll get we'll get him along next year. So he hasn't nominated Brisbane just no, yet. No, not yet. But he, look, he did the preseason up with us, and um, every school holidays he comes and trains with us. So it's you know. He, it's to give him. I reckon he's coming. Oh, we on. just have to do a deal, I think. But yeah. The like Brisbane Lions have a, a bad history of, of father's sons turning their back on the club. One who's just to my right, uh, Mark Murphy. So nothing's a given. Um, just on the, the news of the week, obviously a very serious issue. Jeremy Finlayson, a, a three-match ban. Do you use that as a, an opportunity to counsel your players about their responsibilities when it comes to vilification? Yeah, look, we, we didn't do anything special. I mean, it's fun. They all know. Everybody knows. We do a lot of training in this. And I think, you know, without knowing the specifics, I think, you know, Jeremy, from what I read, realised straight away that he'd made a mistake. And, you know, and he, he, he did it. You know, he, he fessed up and sort of tried to, you know, fix the problem. But, you know, again, he, he's made a mistake and he's got the three-week penalty. And I think, um, yeah, that's a lesson in itself that I think everybody will... Um, you know, take heed of and hopefully it doesn't happen again. Uh, Greg, really appreciate you coming up. Good luck tonight. Hopefully it's no another problem. win for the Brisbane Lions. Yep, let's hope we can get, on, get back on the winner's list at the MCG. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks Greg. Greg. The CEO of the Brisbane Lions joining you on ABC Sport ahead of a blockbuster Thursday night. It's Swanee's Brisbane Lions taking on the Demons on the MCG. Matt Clinch and Ben Cameron to call the action. Lauren Borden down on the boundary. Brent Harvey and Mark Murphy are your experts on ABC Sport. There's no late changes for either side, so it's Taj Woden who will be the medical sub for the Demons and James Tunstall for the Brisbane Lions. So Ben asked about the events of the week and Jeremy Finlayson, a three-match suspension for his uh, homophobic slur. In your eyes, Boomer, is, um, is that dealt with? Is that an adequate penalty? Yeah, I think it is. I, in today's age, uh, the game's changed so much in so many ways, not just the style of play, but things that you used to say and, and way before me and then during my time and then now way after me. It's the, the, the world's evolving and football's evolving. So I, I like the way Jeremy went about it. Um, straight away put his hand up and said that he did something wrong and he wasn't very proud of it. And then the AFL, yeah, well, I like when the AFL be leaders in, in industries. So I think they can do it in a few more different ways as well, but um, I think that's a pretty inadequate, and it sets a, 
sends a really good message, doesn't it, uh, around the rest of the around the rest of the competition. The standards have been set, haven't they? Yep. That uh, no longer, uh, as a community, we're going to walk past these comments that are made on a sporting arena, and uh, they'll be called out. And uh, unfortunately for Jeremy, he'll have a, a time on the sideline, but uh, it does send a message for the broader community that the AFL is uh, trying to stamp this out. What takes place on field no longer stays on field. The, the, the counter to that is, I mean, Alistair Clarkson five weeks ago made a, a very similar um, comment, certainly a comment that is vilification and homophobic and uh, there was a fine there of $20,000 but um, yeah uh, we spoke about it with Corbin today on, on Corbin and Ben and, and he spoke about in isolation uh, the Finlayson incident uh, feels about right. Yeah, he made a public apology immediately the day after addressed his uh, a team manager at three quarter time and, and spoke to both the individual involved and Zach Merritt at uh, the full time siren so uh, it sounds like it hasn't been a great week for for Jeremy as well, but I think the next time it happens that the penalty will be even greater. So uh, I guess now the precedence has been set. Uh, the crowd is slowly building. Um, we're not going to quite get the 62,000 we had when these two faced off in a semi-final a couple of years ago, but uh, the stakes are pretty high, Murph, and two midfield to you look at Lockie Neal and his impact on the Brisbane Lions, but Melbourne all of a sudden feel like they're almost back to their best. And there was some rumours uh, circling around Clayton Oliver as to whether he might be a, a late out tonight, but he is in the, in the selected side. So it feels like Brisbane need to somehow wrestle one back against the trend, and this is as good a challenge as you can get. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a really good opportunity for this football club to really kickstart their season. The, the Lions have been you know, really disappointing so far, having a great win last week, even though it's against a, a side who hasn't won a game yet. They... Would have, would have got confidence, and they would have got confidence through a few of their key targets that we spoke about just before, and Hipwood and Danaher getting on the scoreboard and having big games themselves. So they, they've got to really set themselves those two key targets to to go up against the best players or the best two prong defence in the competition in May and, and Lever tonight, and and really set the scene. But there is some superstars in the middle of the ground, and and Melbourne are littered with them when you're looking at Oliver and Petrarca and and Viney in there at the moment. And then you've got Lockie Neal, the dual Brownlow medalist with uh, Dunkley, who I think will have a tagging role tonight. And it be interesting to see whether or not he'll go to Oliver or, or Petrarca. Greg Swan seemed to think he was going to go to Petrarca. So who knows <laughs> if that's going to be the case tonight, if he's trying to lead us down the the, uh, the wrong way. But if I, if I was uh, Brisbane, I'd be, take, I'd be tagging uh, Oliver. And then I'd be going head-to-head against Petrarca with a Lockie Neal if they're not willing to to tag him, but they have tagged Lockie Neal in previous uh, games, but um, it might be a Jack Viney might go to him at stoppages and they just go uh, their own way from there, but it's going to be a, a really good battle inside, and then you've obviously got Max Gorn, who's an absolute superstar, and, and Oscar McInerney, he's a, a very, very good ruckman who doesn't really get a lot of uh, attention probably because he's, he's up north. It, it blows my mind that people don't go after the best player. Uh, and Lockie Neal is certainly one of them. Petrarca or Oliver, flip a coin. Oh, I think you're bitter after all of the tagging you had to cop, Burma, <laughs> oh, no, that they're no. not doing it anymore. Benny, you are not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, mate. I got punched from pillar to every pillar to post. Pinched as well. Game. I got every single game. And then you come out and you just watch Lockie Neal just go about his business. The best player in the competition just about well, last year mm. was the best player. And he just gets a free run in it. So... Oh, I think you've got to stamp these players. I, there's no way known I would let Petrarca run around and do what he wants. Or Lockie Neal. Just, you know what? You're probably not going to stop Lockie Neal from having 20, 22, yeah. 23 touches. But what you can do, you can make those possessions a little bit less effective um, from his handballs and, and Petrarca. When he gets time and space, he, he absolutely carves you up. Now, if someone's got his, their finger in his back and he's got to kick it under pressure... We've seen it work. I just, I, I just can't fathom yep. why the, the taggers are still not around. And even if it's not a tag, like we, we see with Melbourne and Max Gorn, like if you decide you're going to go after Max Gorn, bump him, buffet him off the, everything. the ball, 100 See? hits for the game and make his day really and, hard. And I know why the coach is not doing it, because it's team defence now. Yep. There's not one player where we can just sacrifice and say, do that. But let's make him a focus for the day. Let's make Lockie Neal earn every possession he gets. Every time he gets the ball, he's got to go to ground. Mm. And when he's getting up, you're pushing down on him. You've, you've got to make their, their life harder, because I'll tell you when it happens, Halfway through the last quarter when the game's on the line and Lockie Neal's been dragged to the ground 37 times, he's going to be feeling sore. If you want to join us, we'd love to hear from you on the SMS, 0437 774 774. Let us know your name and where you're listening to. Mark Murphy and Brent Harvey in the back row, ready to go. Matt Clinch and Ben Cameron to call the action. Lauren Borden down on the boundary. So, Boomer, if you want to make the case as to how Brisbane win tonight, you spoke a bit about 
Eric Hipwood and, and Joe Danaher, the role in which Stephen May and Jake Lever have played. Do they have to play slightly bit different, Brisbane? I don't know if they have to play slightly different. We've got to remember they've played Carlton, who we all think is going to finish in the top four. They played Collingwood, who we all thought was going to finish in the top four. They got beaten by the Gold Coast Suns, which was probably the one that they would have penciled in. And then they had a fairly easy game last week against North Melbourne. So I don't think Brisbane need to change too much. For me, if Brisbane are going to win, I think Cozzy Pickett's a huge out. Like a huge out. For pressure, yes. And he generates goals whether he doesn't kick him, he sets him up. So he's always involved. I think if Brisbane can stamp Bailey Fritch tonight, they're a massive chance. Because I don't think Melbourne are going to kick any more than 12 goals if Bailey doesn't kick a big bag. And when I say a big bag, four, four or more. I'll ask you both. Third suspension in 27 games for Cozzy Pickett. Does he need to change the way he goes about it? He watched his uncle play for yeah. 30 years. He played with his uncle, yeah, didn't Byron, he? Didn't yeah, Byron. If you watch the way Byron plays, he will get suspended another 60 times. <laughs> used, to love, used to love watching Byron pick oh. play. You, can't, you just can't do it anymore. You can't leave the ground. And that's the, that's the one thing that he's got to get out of his game because he picks leaving the ground. There's been a couple where he's, he's been lucky to get off too. Yep. So he's just got to take getting off the ground out of the ballpark in terms of with the way in which he goes about football. And, and for Cozzy to get someone in the head, he's not very tall, so he has to jump. Yep. And he's done that in... On numerous occasions, so I think Murph's right. He's got to, he's got to stop just jumping. If he's, if he, if he doesn't jump, he's going to hit him in the chest, and he probably mm. doesn't get suspended. Swatchy Max Gorn head out to the middle. It's a big opportunity for uh, Oscar McInerney to take on one of the, uh, well, best ruckmen in the competition, probably the favourite for the the All Australian. And we saw the way in which Brody Grundy was able to to play him in opening round. So uh, that'll be the challenge tonight for Oscar McInerney as Harris Andrews makes his way out to the middle. The final member of our team sitting in the front row tonight is Lauren Borden. Welcome again to you, Loz. Thanks, Clinchy. Nice to be sitting here to get a front row seat for the action tonight. It is a little bit chilly down here, about 15 degrees or so, but nothing uh, nothing to stop probably the crowd coming in. Although when you look around, it is a little bit sparse. Probably just under 40,000 expected tonight. Harris Andrews has just won the toss. He's pointing towards the city end of the ground, so that's the way that Brisbane will be kicking to start the first quarter today. And like you mentioned a little earlier, no late changes, but Taj Woden and James Tunstall, the two subs for both sides. So they both had that role before, and they have it again tonight. Thank you, Lyle. I was looking forward to your contributions throughout the night. So Melbourne have won their last four matches over the Western Bulldogs, Hawthorne, Port Adelaide and Adelaide. So they won their two matches away in South Australia. They spent the, uh, the week over there. And Brisbane have lost 15 of their last 16 matches at the MCG with their only win coming in the semi-final against Melbourne in 2022 by 13 points. So the rivalry is real amongst these two sides. Melbourne beaten in straight sets last year in the finals. Brisbane got to the grand final and hit the lead in the final term. But uh, what could have been as they now embark on a new season and the newest challenge. Who are you tipping, Boomer? Can you see an upset? Oh, I, don't th- I actually don't think it's an upset. I'm going to be tipping Brisbane, but I don't think it's an upset. I think that... They had a light game last week, and I reckon that's going to play into their hands. I think Melbourne's too good. I, I just worried about the way in which Brisbane are moving the ball forward. Their, their key targets need to play well tonight for them to win. I know they've got some stars on the ground level down there, but they need a good contest out of Hipwood and, and Joe Danaher. They need to, at worst, bring the ground, ball to ground and let their smalls go, go to work. But I just think Melbourne be too good. The 18-year-old Colton Falstrop is there in the forward line with number 39. We won't miss him with the mullet. And we're all in readiness. Round five of the AFL kicking off with a Thursday night blockbuster. The Demons and the Brisbane Lions. Here's Ben Cameron to get us underway. Umpire lays it down. Gorn and McInerney. McInerney goes over the top, taps it to himself. Thumping kick inside 50 here for the Lions. Danaher goes to ground. So too May coming up with the football Salem. Clearing kick for the D's. Up to the wing. Here is Tolstrup taken down in the tackle. Driven into the turf and held in. An early touch for the young man, but not a disposal. A ball up to come. He's from the farm down in Esperance of the southwest of WA. Has a haircut that resembles Gary Hocking back in the day. Big curly mullet. Viney going after the footy handball out of play. Another throw in to come. On the southern side of the ground, no score through the opening 25 seconds. Here at the MCG, his parents have made the dash from down on the farm. They've made it in time. His mum dropped the magic <laughs> on the club video after he told her he was making his debut. Yeah, asked if he was serious when he told her the news. Max Gorn wins down the tap. Lester comes charging in. Neil Bullen lays the tackle and we're locked under the Shane Warren stand. Brisbane are in their old school Brisbane. Fitzroy Lions jumper. And Melbourne in the red and the blue. Scorn wins down the tap to Sparrow. There's nowhere to go as Neil and Dunkley lay the tackle. 
So is this an insight into the match in which we might see in the first half? Gorn flicks it over the back against McInerney to the advantage of Sparrow. Zorko lays the tackle, locks him up hard against the boundary. He travelled about 10 metres, but neither side can break clear. It's hard to work out the matchups yeah. sometimes until probably five, six minutes, isn't it, Boomer? But it looks like Sparrow might be going towards Neil and, and dunking on Petrarca. Umpire puts it up. Gorn just spikes it forward. Here's Tolstrup again, close to the line, carries it out. A couple of early touches, but yet to get his first kick in AFL footy. Subiaco in the WAFL. Umpire brings it back in. Gorn and McInerney. Gorn with hands on it. Comes down in front. Knocking it on quickly there. Neil Bullen close to the line. And again, Tolstrup. And his hands on the footy. Knocks it out again. Another throw in to come. High half forward here for the D's. No score through the opening two minutes. It's been an arm wrestle early on. This is Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. 732 games experience between Mark Murphy and Brent Harvey. Shallow throw in. Gorn wastes his way to the front. Knocks it down to Chandler. Trying to break out of the tackle of Fletcher. The sound passes wide of Sparrow. And it goes out of play just outside 50 for the Demons. Heading to the punt road end in this opening quarter. Looks like Judd McVie got the job on Charlie Cameron as well. So it'll be interesting. Both speedsters are looking forward. I reckon Charlie might have a, a little bag in him tonight. Five goals, nine for the season for Charlie Cameron. Chris Fagan said he had some work done on his teeth in the offseason. Petrarca gathers the clearance. Hand pass to Neil Bull and outside of the boot to the goal bar. And it bounces through for the opening goal of the match. Melbourne from a stoppage clearance breakaway. And Alex Neil Bull and able to finish with a bounce through. The Demons on the board first. They're one straight six to Brisbane. Yet to score three minutes gone on ABC Sport. He's one of those players that just gets up and works super hard, Murphy. He comes up to the stoppage, and then the opposition have got to make a call. Do we go with him, or do we stay back and get a spare? Normally when they get a spare, he gets involved, and the ball gets kicked over the spare head. Yep. But he's, um, he's a player, and by all reports, they reckon he blows up the GPS most weeks just on his acceleration now. Yep. Hardy works forward. Just another uh, well, goal from a clearance from a, a pretty handy tap from Max Gorn to uh, Chris Petrarca on the fly and talked about a few of the matchups. It looked like Fletcher was then trying to get to Petrarca and be interesting to see if they try and stay with that. I know Dunkley now is matched up against him in the centre square bounds, but so, so important there, Petrarca in that clearance. Gorn runs underneath it, back in the middle. Viney trying to soccer it on. Dunkley picks it up, handball away towards Hipwood. Handball misses Zorko. Tolstrup onto the footy for the D's in the middle. First handball in league footy. Gorn's kick smothered. Ricochets away onto it. Hipwood there for the Lions. Handball to Zorko. Handball to Neil. Handball back to Zorko. Slippery footy. Fumbles it a couple of times. The D's arrive. Tolstrup going in. Getting involved though. Lester for the Lions. Picks it up. Handball away. Zorko again tackled. And a ball up between wing and half forward for the D's. They've kicked the opening goal of the game through Neil Bullen. That's the only score. Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. A little bit fumbly, the Brisbane Lions at the start there. Seen a really easy handball by Hipwood missed. McInerney one down the tap, looking for Fletcher, who lays the tackle on Petrarca. He gets boot to ball oh. as he was tackled and sent it straight over the boundary line. And the umpire says insufficient intent, which wow. I'm not sure he had any control of the ball or his body. Just, just change the rules. Yes. The quicker they do it, that's, that's what it is now. I said that last week and I'll say it again next week, I'm sure. Free kick to Cameron, a quick one too. As he works it up towards half forward, Stephen May comes charging in. Hand pass to Salem, hard against the boundary. Gardner trying to keep it alive for a moment. Tom McDonald can't force his way through two Brisbane Lions. And the umpire will board up at left half forward for the Lions at the city end. Melbourne with the opening goal through Alex Neil Bullen. Umpire puts it aloft, McInerney slapping it down to Rayner. Quick snap inside 50, high ball, Hipwood coming up, the leaping chess mark. Eric Hipwood, 40 out directly in front, will go back and have a shot on goal. Well, it was a perfect start here for Eric Hipwood. He, he got the ball in, in the centre square bounce before and missed the target by hands, but then followed up to his, to his credit. And then he gets his first opportunity inside 50 to, to really make a stand in that inside 50 for the Lions and he's attacked the ball really well there and found some space and be a really important start here for him and the Brisbane Lions. He was goalless his last time out at the MCG. That was on grand final day for an early confidence boosting goal. Big Easy drives it through the middle. And Brisbane cancel out the early Melbourne lead. It's one straight six apiece, six minutes played. 
Opening term, Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. Mark Murphy and Brent Harvey. Well, it's an important kick for him, isn't it, Murph? Just yep. before, just because of his own confidence that we spoke to Swanee about. And they get a bit of flack, the big boys here mm. at, at Brisbane, especially, oh, I think, he would more than, than Danaher. So for him to go back and slot it from 45 out, enormous confidence for him for the night. Next kick he gets, he knows, already done this bang straight through the middle. And you, could t- again. and you could tell that his teammates knew as well because yep. there was probably only one bloke I reckon didn't get around him. He just wasn't w- wasn't aware but everyone V-lined him and, and got around him because they understand that he's probably been under a little bit of pressure to start this season. And that they did that last week, Brisbane, and I, I think Mick Malthouse mentioned it on our broadcast Clinchy or maybe Adam Ramanaskis and then Brisbane admitted as much during the week that they would over-celebrate and really get around each other. Yeah, there was talk at one stage where they'd be dropped to the reserves. Gorn gets the clearance out of the middle of the ground. Kicks Melbourne towards 50. Spoiled away. Archie onto it. Billings onto him. Careful not to fall on his back. Sliding in Dunkley for Brisbane. Hand pass chopped off by Billings and Melbourne. Centering ball to the top of the square. Petty in a wrestle with Andrews. And Harris Andrews in the show of strength takes the mark. Hand pass that releases Zorko. Kicks out towards McCarthy at halfback. Good mark. Flying over the top of Salem. He's just able to get to the fall of the ball. He takes the mark at left half back. Shane Warne stands side. Scores level at a goal apiece through seven minutes. Lincoln McCarthy, so many issues with his body at Geelong. So durable at the lines. Kicks around the wing. Through the hands there of McInerney. Now the other way. Quickly go Melbourne. Gorn gets it on to Petrarca. High kick inside 50. Petty underneath it. Andrews fists it away. Straight down to Brown. Loses it. Getting involved, Payne Answorth trying to get into. Brown goes in again, ball up to come. 30 out from the attacking goal. Here for the D's at the punt road end of the ground. Scores level Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. You've got the matchup right, Sparrow going to Neil Murph. It'll be interesting to see the way he goes about it because he's been a good ball winner for Melbourne to date. Gorn flicked it over the back, but Answorth read it best. Hand pass to McCluggage. Kicks in the middle of the ground. Judd McVee had it for a moment. Couldn't get it to Clayton Oliver by hand. The ball spills clear. Oliver almost beats his own teammate to it. Gathers in front of House. Hand pass to May. Kicked inside 50. Brown with the arms outstretched. Can't take the mark. French too slow. Tackle by Stasevich. Holding the ball. And Brisbane went back at right half back through Brandon Stasevich. Lauren Borden on the boundary. Early concern for Melbourne. Christian Salem has just limped off the ground. He called the physio over in the middle of the ground. Nearly got stuck in a contest, but he's going straight down to the rooms at two. Thanks, Lars. We'll keep an eye on that. Brisbane has switched it to left half back. Lester around the outer wing. Works it up to Hipwood. He marks that left half back. Last goal scorer in the match. Looks to send it out wide in the direction of Charlie Cameron. What a pass. He didn't have to break stride as he marks on his chest. Just in front of the boundary, centre wing. Charlie comes infield with his kick. Spots up Fletcher. But it's not one going to go long here. Max Gorn sitting in the hole. We'll have to try and change angles and work it around. Jasper Fletcher, the second generation line, kicks into the pocket right in that Gorn direction. Gardner drops the mark. Goes again at ground level, trying to extract it. Neil wrapped up quickly in game 250. And a ball up to come. 45 out from the attacking goal for the Lions. One straight six apiece. We played nine and a half minutes. This is Thursday night on ABC Sport. Toss in the air, Gorn slaps it forward, Sparrow knocks it on as well. Quick hand pass to Chandler and now to Neil Bullen, kicks up towards Fritch. Payne in front, uses his body as a battering ram. Knocked it but straight into the path of Petrarca for Melbourne. Hand pass and uh, in the end, Fritch and Gardner, they try to fend off each other. In the end, Fritch's contact was deemed high in the eyes of the umpire. A tangle between Petrarca and Zorko off the ball as Gardner kicks it. Danaher on the lead! And he marks on his chest, slightly left of centre. All the eyes are on the middle of the ground. Petrarca in a tangle on the turf, and Danaher came out and took the easiest of marks. That's two inside 50 marks to, to two of their key targets so far. The Lions have been really enjoying that start with their connection going inside 50. We heard Greg Swan talk about that being a, a bit of their issue to start the season. So, perfect start here with their key tools, having some marks inside 50. Yes, yeah, so two marks inside 50 to none the way the Brisbane Lions. Joe Danaher had a day out last week, five goals for. Looking to join Eric Hipwood. Danaher comes in and misses to the left-hand side. A minor score. The Lions take the lead by that point. They're 1-1-7 to Melbourne. One straight six. 11 minutes gone. Opening turn. Lucky Neil just come from the ground and uh, Chandler followed him straight away. Yeah. So uh, look, look look forward to that matchup for the rest of the night, hopefully. So got Dane Zorko loves getting under the skin, doesn't uh-huh. he? He's already been involved in a tussle with Christian Petrarca. Here you go the D's down the wing. Handball from Chandler trying to release a teammate. Couldn't quite get it there. In the end, he goes back and gets it. Kicks around the wing. 
Picked up quickly there for the Lions by Stasevic. He's wrapped up and a ball up to come. Between wing and half forward, southern side of the ground. Lions lead by a point. McInerney spikes it away back down the wing for the Lions. Slapped on by McCarthy. Lever right there. Dunkley too. Dunkley picks it up. Handball to Bailey. He'll spiral a kick towards half forward. Danaher juggles it. He marks 55 out for the Lions. 50. He's, he's going to get 50. His hand. Stephen May slapped the ball out of Joe Danaher's hands. I'm not sure it was all that intentional. He's trying to get his left arm around. But Joe threw the arms back and the umpire said, yes, that is 50. So this will make a certain goal that from point blank range, Danaher comes in and kicks his first of the night. Hipwood and Danaher both firing early here at the MCG. And Brisbane take a seven-point advantage. 2-1-13 to Melbourne, one straight six. On ABC Sport, you're with Mark Murphy and Boo Mahali. Sorry, I, my apologies. I said Chandler before. Um, Sparrow. Sparrow, obviously, is, is going with Lockie Neal. So, um, yeah, Lockie, Lockie Neal comes off. That's one. That's a silly mistake by Stephen May because Danaher gets an opportunity just a couple of minutes before and misses it. Yeah. He kicked 5-4 last week, so he's not kicking straight. And then you give him one from the boundary that he probably would have What's the chances? 30, 70 maybe? Yeah, he, he, probably, he, probably, he probably wouldn't have kicked that. But the, I think the one thing that Brisbane would be really enjoying at the moment, outside of their two marks, they've taken inside 50. It hasn't gone down there and we've seen a, a lever mark or a May mark or a, yep. a third man up coming in and making an intercept. So that's what they're doing really well at the moment, Brisbane. They're holding the ball inside their 50. From the restart in the middle. Free kick quickly paid. It'll go to Bailey of the Lions. It might get down to Lauren Borden on the boundary, Ben. Yeah, Taj Woden, the sub for Melbourne, is just getting ready to come on. Salem at the moment, Melbourne is saying they think it's a hamstring. Bailey, a long kick inside 50. Putting his fist through it, May arriving. Rayner gets a handball away, straight back towards May. Going in quickly, McCluggage. Oliver gets involved, out towards Windsor. Off to McDonald, and then McVie going back with the kick. Goes right back to fullback and spots up Howes. He has a top of his defensive goal square. The Lions lead by seven points, 13 minutes and change into the first. Blake Howes has played every game for Melbourne so far this year. Goes short to Lever, who drives it along the southern wing. Brisbane have the number set. Leicester takes the mark for the Lions. Turns and comes inboard by foot. Spots up Rayner at the edge of the centre square. He looks inside 50 for options. Kicks laterally to the top of the arc. And Darcy Wilmot takes the mark. This might be just beyond him. On the run, maybe. As he wheels out on the right-hand side, kicks it as high and as long as he can. Hipwood sets himself, tries to crash the pack, brings it down, buries there, becomes the tackle. The footy stuck underneath him and Langdon. Hipwood trying to knock it out. Oliver slides in. The umpire will come in and ball it up just 15 metres out from Brisbane's goal. They lead by seven points. Up it goes. Van Royen doing the ruck work. Knocks it down towards House, following up there. McDonald able to get it on the boot. Clear and kick. Beyond the defensive arc for the D's. Coming up, Petty slaps it away. Out of play and a throw in to come. Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. Lines by seven points early in the first. Well, Brisbane had all the play in the last four to five minutes. I think Melbourne probably had the first three or four inside 50s and it's been on Brisbane's terms in the last couple of minutes. So. Three, three clearances, hasn't it? Seven yeah. to four in favour of Brisbane so far. The voices of Mark Murphy and Brent Harvey from the throwing. Both rucks miss it out the back. Neil Bullen quickly gets a kick away. Free kick paid downfield. D's with it on the southern wing. And they move it quickly because they're on the break here. Rivers takes the mark. Hand pass to Langdon. Gives it back to Rivers. Arches the back. Kicks inside 50. Fritch on the lead. Was he dragged down by Perry? He was. Chopping the arms and the eyes of the umpire. And Bailey Fritch will have it. Ten metres in from the boundary in the right forward pocket. Harris Andrews and Harrison Petty in a tangle of bodies as well. well Brisbane just got caught there in a, a bit of a defensive breakdown. It was a, a good clearance win due to free kick out there on the outer side of the wing. But then Brisbane just kept on trailing up and trailing up and unfortunately for them, there was no one to pick up Fritch. Kicked three goals in a quarter, Bailey Fritch, last week. He can turn it on for the Demons. He's out to the right, looking for their second of the match. Fritch comes in. It's not a bad effort. He's got it. Demons hands are back. And Bailey Fritch is on the board. A flat precision shot on goal. And the Lions lead his cut back to a point. Brisbane 2 1 13 to Melbourne 2 straight 12. 15 minutes gone on ABC Sport. You had Mark Murphy and, Bre and uh, Boomer Harvey.
Yeah, you're right, Murph. The, the press just wasn't right for Melbourne and the, uh, sorry for, for Brisbane. The, the Melbourne ball movement was fairly quick, and they just kept pressing forward and just left one spare up forward. And uh, if you're a good team with good skills, which yeah. Melbourne are, you can you can work that out pretty well. It was a hard running from the midfield that created the overlap, and they were able to work their way through the Brisbane line defence, and they just have to keep on coming up and collect the next one. But pretty hard to do that when you've got Bailey Fritz standing there inside 50 by himself. Yeah, to chatter during the week around some of the speed Melbourne now have with the likes of Rivers, who we saw there in the lead-up to that goal, and his bounce-off halfback. Bounce in the middle. Gorn winning the tap. Out in front of Viney. Out the front of the contest he goes. Kicks inside 50. Brown coming up. Can't take the mark. Ball pinballing around. Quickly wrapped up Andrews. Taking to ground and a ball up to come. 45 out from the attacking goal for the Ds. Kick the first goal of the game and the last. Brisbane with two in the middle. Both rucks with hands on it. Neil receives the tap. Goes after it. Handball away to Answorth. He's tackled quickly in the middle of the ground. Ball up to come. The Sparrow just starting out the centre bounce in that last one. Murph and coming straight to Lockie Neal. Uh, one touch each. Or Lockie Neal second touch just then. From the throw up. Gorn taps it down. Oliver just can't quite take it cleanly. Kalar Chi slides in. McInerney can't rip it away. Lauren Borden telling us Christian Salem has been subbed out of the match. Taj Woden comes in. A hamstring injury for Salem in the first 10 minutes. A chance for Chandler. Can't break away from the tackle. Hand pass turned over. Berry for the Lions to McInerney. He loses it. Viney for Melbourne. Can't get it to Oliver. McCluggage through traffic. One way, then the other. Swings onto his right-hand side. Kicks out to the members wing where Charlie Cameron takes the mark. Has Hipwood one-on-one inside 50. Kicks it to he and May. They tangle. May takes the mark. Great defending, worked his way to the front and despite losing his footing was able to take the mark. He's got a couple of fractured ribs but not taking a backward step. Goes to Lever who tries to swing it out to the southern side. Flying it from the side with Sparrow off hands, he's locked up. And the umpire will ball it up on the wing. That was a great contest down there by May and Hipwood. And Hipwood's credit, he actually made contact earlier to try and force him off the line but Stephen May's is too strong. He had great position, Hipwood. And uh, yeah, like you said, May just held his ground. There's a little slip there by Hipwood as well. Ball up on the May. wing, slapped on there by May onto it quickly. Berry for the lines, goes back to Zorko. Little stab pass back to Stasevich. He'll kick around the wing to a contest. Up goes Lohman. Lever punches it away. Rayner there for the Lions. Gathers the footy. Palms off Viney. Kicks on the left into the pocket. Looking for Hipwood. May halves it again. Brings it down to ground level. McDonald's handball right into the path of Cameron. He can't gather it. Goes again though. Tackled by McDonald. Rolled onto his back. And a ball up to come. 25 out from the attacking goal for the Lions. They lead by a point. 2-1 plays two straight. 19 minutes into the first Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. Did really well there, Tom McDonald, not to fall on the back of Charlie Cameron. Gorn wins down the tap to May, who's free. Smothered. Great effort by McCarthy. Spills out to Windsor. Tries to dodge the tackle. Hand pass to Howes. He knocks it on. A chance for Melbourne to get out of defence. Hard against the boundary line. Chandler was across. And it will be a throw in. And right half forward for the Brisbane Lions. The Lions leading by a point. And laid, laid 19 tackles to Melbourne, 16. The Lions going at just under 80%. Disposal efficiency, Melbourne just over 60. Thrown in, Gorn and McInerney tangle. Gorn knocks it down to the front. Finey head over the footy, trying to get the hand pass away to Oliver. McCluggage slides in, can't get a clean disposal away. Neil somehow got it out to Rayner. Spirals a kick towards the teeth of goal and Hipwood in front. Takes the mark. That time, nothing Stephen May could do. No, there wasn't, and it was just great pressure so far. You just don't have much time out there at the moment to get a clean disposable. And again, both teams tackling and trying to force the ball free. And then it was just a handball up from Lockie Neal, who found a teammate. And then it was just a scrag ball four. But he was first to react, though, Hipwood. He was on his toes, ready for it. So Eric Hipwood with one already. A chance to extend the Brisbane Lions lead once more from directly in front. Only about 25 metres out. Hipwood starts his approach, comes in, and rams it through. These are all confidence builders for Arab. He can see second. And Brisbane open up a seven-point advantage once more. 3-1-19 to Melbourne, two straight 12. 21 minutes gone in the first term. You're with Mark Murphy and Brent Harvey.
Well, for a guy that's under the pump, Murphy started really yeah. well. He's put himself in the position in the slot where the ball's getting kicked to him. And like you said just then, he just reacted a lot quicker then. It wasn't a contest. He marked the ball two or three metres in, in front of May. Um, I've really liked the way when someone's under the pump and they start the game well, it gives them enormous confidence and confidence for the other players that kick the ball to him as well. Well, you just tell the mindset's different than what it's probably been in previous weeks. He was up here in the centre square bounce trying to force a ball through earlier in the game then working hard to try and outnumber at the next contest. So then again, on his toes, ready for the ball. Sometimes when you're not uh, full of confidence, you're sitting back on your heels. So he's on his toes, which is good to see. Lines back out by seven. Gorn winning the tap, but onto it, Rayner. Gets it on his right boot. Lines back inside 50. No one able to mark. Out the back it goes. McDonald, Gardner right there with him. Gets rid of a handball. Wawoten the sub. Tackled quickly by Cameron. Ball jars free. Umpire says throw it in. Gives Wawoten a little benefit of the doubt. Charlie Cameron doesn't love it. Yeah, he was lucky to get away with that, Wawoten, but... How about the uh, the start from Rayner today? He's been, been red hot, hasn't he? Eight disposals so far. Had the four contested possessions, been everywhere. 450 stoppage here for the Lions. Gorn just slaps it away. Beyond the congestion, players go to ground. Onto it, Zorko. So to Bailey. Half forward for Brisbane. Zigging, zagging, snapping around the corner. Lever marking. Not paid the mark, so he's dumped in a tackle. That will be a free kick, though. So I'm not sure if it was touched on the way through, but Cameron with a dumping tackle. Which thankfully there wasn't a lot of force in it. Otherwise, that would be looked at by the match review officer. Jake Lever gets to his feet okay. At right half back, he can sends Melbourne long around the wing. Ben Brown's the target. He's outnumbered. Answorth in from the side makes the spoil, and it goes out of play. And a boundary throw in centre wing. Brisbane three one nineteen to Melbourne two straight twelve. Eric Kipwood has two of the three goals for the Brisbane Lions. Matt Clinch calling the action alongside Ben Cameron. Lauren Borden down on the boundary. Mark Murphy and Brent Harvey, your experts. Thrown back in. McInerney knocks it down. Gorn tries to do the roving. Picked up by Rayner. Another disposal. Nine for the match. Hand pass away to Dunkley. Kicks up towards Gardner. Can't take the mark. Tom McDonald makes the spoil. And it rolls out of play in front of Lohman for a boundary throw in. Anything to worry about? Murph and Boom in that tackle there from Charlie Cameron on Jake Lever? Oh, I don't think he... It, it didn't hit his head. He's not injured. Oh, I think that one's a, 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 a no case. Lines by seven. Slapping it down quickly is gone, but the line's away with it through Neil. Delivers a beautiful pass to a leading Danaher. 45 out, 30 degree angle to the left. And that was training drill stuff. It was, and, and when you're getting tagged like Lucky Neil is getting tagged at the moment, you need your teammates to stand up. And Cam, Cam Rain has been everywhere today. And another clearance there by, by Cam. And then Lockie can play that second fiddle and be the next man who can get the link play, and that's what he does so well. The Cam Rainer's been enormous so far. From right on the arc of 50, the left foot shot is good from Joe. Welcome to the Joe Show. A couple of first quarter goals. Eric Hipwood with two of his own. And if it is the Brisbane forwards against the Melbourne defenders, well, it's a good early start for the Lions, Mark Murphy, well, Brent I Harvey. I thought it was going to be probably the opposite going into the game where I thought May and Lever would certainly have it over the Brisbane key forwards. But the way in which the, the Brisbane Lions midfield has been able to use the football and, and kick the ball into space, and you can't stop that if you're a key defender. So that, that's, just, that's just too good from the stoppage where we talk about Cam Rayner and Lockie Neal getting out the front door. That's exactly the way you like it for a key target. That, that's the key, Murph, and that's what I was talking about, stopping Lockie Neal and only keeping him the 22, 23. It's the pressure on that kick. Like he, he was three or four metres in front of his opponent there, and he's just had all the time of the day to hit him up. You see, May puts his hand up like a soccer keeper. You know, when yeah. they go off the head, it's, it's too hard to stop. <laughs> Cameron has had 10 disposals with five clearances. Here's Lockie Neal on cue. Game 250 gets it out to the wing to Fletcher. Member side. Zorko turned it over. Got the hand pass straight to Tolstrup, who's locked up in a tackle, trying to charge his way through. Yep. He's gone. Lohman got him. He might have been over the boundary line by the time the umpire made the call. Yeah, it was the fend-off, though. As soon as you choose to fend off and you don't dispose of that ball properly, the umpire pings you every single time. Kai Lohman wins the free kick for the Brisbane Lions. Short around the boundary line to McCluggage. We're not going to miss Colton Tolstrom, though, with the fluorescent orange, uh, yellow boots and the mullet. 
It's the kick up towards Joe Danaher. Got hands to it, couldn't hang on to the mark, and it goes out of play. Lauren Borden on the boundary. There's quite a few running repairs going on Melbourne's bench. Christian Petrarca had a finger look, looked at. Uh, Clayton Oliver looked like what had a cut under his left knee. He's got that strapped up. And Kane Chandler just had his right knee pretty heavily strapped on the boundary as well. McInerney and Gorn. They have a little wrestle again. McInerney with the tap. Zorko tackled quickly. Rolled in the tackle. A ball up to come. Half Fletch forward here for the Lions. Fletcher's done a good job on Petrarca going to him at stoppages. Petrarca's had the four, but it hasn't been influential in any aspect of the game. Gorn slaps it down. It bounces back towards McInerney. Gorn tackles him. And another ball up. Mark Murphy, Brent Harvey, Mac Lynch, Ben Cameron, Lauren Borden between the benches. Gorn palms it down straight towards Petrarca. Onto it, Fletcher for Brisbane. Back feeds a handball to Zorko. Thumping kick inside 50. Up goes Gardner, punched away from him. These have the numbers. Sparrow in possession at halfback. Away towards Windsor, who kicks to the wing. Up towards Petty. Couldn't quite take the mark. And Harris Andrews locks the ball in. It's a right half forward for the Brisbane Lions on the members' side. Brisbane out by 13 points with the last two goals of the match. Danaher and Hipwood both with two. Another clearance for Rayner. Kicks inside 50. Gardner lunging forward. Just couldn't quite take the mark. Judd McVie under pressure. Knocks it towards the boundary. Charlie Cameron can't keep it alive. And it goes out of play in the right forward pocket. 45 he's, metres around from Brisbane's goal. He's on well record pace at the moment, Cam Rayner. He's had the six clearances. But <laughs> I'm just going to try and watch him for a bit. See if he's coming off a half forward flank and just losing his half back flanker on the way through. But... At the moment, just rolling around at will, doing what he wants. Six no clearances for six inside 50s. No one's going near him. Gorn wins the tap decisively down towards May. Worried out of it by Rayner. Here he is again. Tackle on Windsor. Held him so up. After him, yeah. Held him up on the Astro Turf. Gonna get dumped onto the Astro Turf, Murph and Boomer. I did against yep. the Blues, actually. It wasn't Murph, was it? Wasn't uh, Andrew Walker got me. <laughs> oh, no. Throwing in the forward pocket. Here for Brisbane. Danaher and Gorn both miss it. Out to the back it goes. Wilmot tackled quickly by Gorn. Umpire lets them rumble. Eventually a ball up to come. So, so this is a good game. Obviously two good teams. But there's so many little matchups within the within the game. It's fantastic to watch. Gorn one down the tap. Straight to Neil. Hand pass to Berry. Curly oh. shot from the right forward pocket. Just misses. Trying to bend it right from left. That would have been an outstanding finish. Just couldn't quite curl it enough. Yeah, it's a tough kick, that one, Clinch. You're running towards the boundary. You're kicking that snap, which is going the other way. Probably had enough time just to kick a drop punt around his body. Would have been a better, better choice. Only the good players can finish those ones. Brisbane by 14 points. It's a bit, it's a bit tough on Berry there, Clinchy. <laughs> I was more referring to Boomer. <laughs> McV with the kick up to the wing. Petty coming in from the side off the hands of the pack. Roving Petrarca. Melbourne down the members' wing. Hamble misses Sparrow. It allows in the line. Zorko picks it up on the logo. Hamble to Dunkley. Hamble to McCluggage. At half forward. Little fumble from Berry. His handball swatted down by McV. Now he goes and wins it for the D's. Little nutmeg. Hamble through the legs of his opponent, Neil. Now they work it away to Petrarca. To Oliver. And the D's are down the wing. Tom strip away to Petrarca. Swings on his right hand side, long towards Fritch. One on one with Payne. Fritch made oh. body contact. He barely moved Payne. Jack Payne, a man mountain, stands his spot in defence. Risky kick, looking for Zorko off the hands of Neil Bourne. No, it's paid the mark. Fritch does that to any other player, maybe in the competition, but certainly <laughs> the Brisbane Lions team, and he marks that nine out of ten times. That was that was brilliant by Payne. The 197, Jack Payne, barely moved. It's Brisbane working up the members wing through Berry, now up to Dunkley. Has it in front of the Brisbane bench, can poke a kick over the top to Rayner. He's been involved in everything good for Brisbane so far. Possession number 12 coming up. So with, with Rayner now dominating, it's, it, it forces Melbourne's hand to go, do we tag him now? That, that's what playing a good role does for Lockie Neal. Now he can maybe get off the chain. Kicks towards McInerney, Gorm was there, he spoils it down. And it's locked underneath Darcy Gardner, who slowly gets to his feet. Kicked a goal last week against North Melbourne. Been a couple of years since he'd done that. Gorn winning the tap. Straight down to McVie. Tackled by Cameron. Out of play. Throwing to come. You mentioned Rainer on track. in fact. Last time Darcy Gardner kicked a goal. He's normally <laughs> yeah. a defender. You mentioned Murph about Rainer being on world record pace for clearances. He's had six in the game already. 
The record is 22. I do know my records. <laughs> but I don't think you would get who holds the record. Gorn the tap straight to Neil applies the tackle yeah. on him. I do, I do know. Okay, who is it? <laughs> Big Fish. <laughs> it is Big Fish Salmon. Is it? How did you know that? Because someone got close earlier this year and they, they came up. So that's how I know. Gorn wins the tap down. Dunkley at half forward for the Lions. Kick goes straight up and down. Punching it on Dunkley again. Bouncing ball for Howes, unable to trap it, does a second time. Now he's worried out of it, dispossessed, bounces to Neil, half forward for the Lions. Handball back to Cameron, time to kick, centering ball, turnover. Mark taken by Wawoden at fullback for the Ds. He just missed Rayner too then, he would have had a goal to his name as well, Murph. Yeah. Would have been a massive start. Wawoden into the game for Salem, works it to Langdon at right half back, and now to Neil Bullen up on the wing. Kicks Melbourne up towards half forward, downfield free kick, and Van Royen will get it. Quickly gives the hand pass away to Billings. Drives the kick inside 50. Penny the target. Can't take it. Andrews makes the spoil. Berry gets back. Hand pass out in front of a teammate. Enormous pressure. In the end, Dunkley got the hand pass away. Although Lester's kick straight to the boundary. It trickles out in front of Cameron. And McVie and the umpire says, throw it in. Harris Andrews, so much like Dustin Fletcher, and his arms are just, just so long. long. He, yeah. have, he probably shouldn't have got to that. He just... Chucks the arm out. It's an extra couple of metres nearly. He's a brilliant defender. Brisbane by 14 points. Leicester fortunate that there was a couple of players in front as it went straight towards the boundary of the kick. Dunkley was dunked in a tackle by Windsor. The ball spills clear. Up to the wing. Lowman can't gather. House can for Melbourne. Hand pass to Oliver. Back to Stephen May. Around the boundary. Kicks up towards Windsor. Dunkley makes a big spoil. Then gathers. Tackle by McVie. Ball spills away. Lowman gets it to Lockie Neal. Through traffic. So clean. Back to Lowman. Kicks up towards Gardner at half forward. Tom McDonald in front. Taps it to his own advantage and across the boundary. I was about oh. to say, he did that so professionally, and then the umpires pinged him. <laughs> I can't guess him tonight. Right in front of the MCC members, which is full of red and blue. Not too happy with it. Gardner into the pocket. Massive fly, no mark taken. Tackle quickly, Howes. Taken to ground. Ball up to come. Murph, what was McDonald's other option? He only had one, by the way, and that was grabbing the ball. Take the ball cleanly. That's and, only he had. And get tackled. Yeah. He, the, the guy was holding him yeah. as he was doing it. Lines by 14 points. Steve's able to clear the danger. Petrarca, clean half volley pick up. He's tackled, though, by Berry. Ball spits out. Tolstrup gets involved, gets rid of it to Sparrow, kicks up to the wing. Mark taken by Van Royen. Caught to play on. Handball away, and it bounces through the legs of Sparrow. And that was all a little untidy. And Royan's not happy. The members aren't happy. The Lions are. They lead by 14. 4 2 26. Plays two straight 12. And it was billed by the coaches, or at least one of them in Simon Goodwin, as Brisbane's forwards against Melbourne's defenders. Well, the early points have gone the way of the Lions. Hipwood and Danaher both with two for Melbourne. Their goal kickers, Neil Bullen and Fritch. So it is the Lions by 14 points, 4 2 26. Leading Melbourne at quarter time, two straight 12. Great to have your company on Thursday night footy on ABC Sport, on ABC Radio, ABC News Radio, via ABC Sport Digital, and now streaming on the ABC Listen app. Just look for the AFL button. Do you often feel overwhelmed by the daily news cycle? Too many headlines with too little context? Well, join me, Sam Hawley, for ABC News Daily. You know, there's middlemen involved and you have to make sure that the farmers are getting a good deal. A podcast that walks you through one story per episode to help you with a deeper understanding of the issues affecting your world. All delivered in a comprehensive yet easy to digest 15 minutes. So join me for ABC News Daily. Hear it now on the ABC Listen app. This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL season. Every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. Petrarca gathers the clearance. Hand pass to Neil Bourne. Outside of the boot to the goal bar. And it bounces through for the opening goal of the match. Fire puts it aloft. McInerney slapping it down to Rayner. Quick snap inside 50. High ball. Hipwood coming up. The leaping chest mark. It was goalless his last time out at the MCG. That was on grand final day. For an early confidence boosting goal. Big Easy drives it through the middle. Handball to Bailey. He'll spiral a kick towards half forward. Danaher juggles it. He marks 55 out for the Lions. 50. Stephen May slapped the ball out of Joe Danaher's hands. 
So this will make a certain goal that from point blank range, Danaher comes in and kicks his first of the night. I think the one thing that Brisbane would be really enjoy at the moment, it hasn't gone down there and we've seen a lever mark or a May mark or a, yep. a third man up coming in and making an intercept. So that's what they're doing really well at the moment, Brisbane. They're holding the ball inside their 50. So Eric Hipwood with one already. A chance to extend the Brisbane Lions lead once more from directly in front. Only about 25 metres out. Comes in and rams it through. Slapping it down quickly is gone, but the Lions away with the through. Neil delivers a beautiful pass to a leading Danaher from right on the arc of 50. The left foot shot is good from Joe. Welcome to the Joe Show. The 2024 AFL Premiership season. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. The highlights of the opening quarter as heard on ABC Sport. The Brisbane Lions leading by 14 points. 4-2-26 to Melbourne. Two straight 12. It's been the Brisbane Lions key forwards who have shined. Danaher and Hipwood have both kicked two. Matt Clinch and Ben Cameron calling the action. The thoughts of your experts, Mark Murphy and Brett Harvey. Well, they've just been smacked up so far, Melbourne. When you look at the clearance numbers, 20 to 8 in favour of Brisbane. Then you look at the inside 50s as well, which are 20 to 11. And I it, think I think Melbourne started a lot better too. It was four zip or something inside 50s. I, I reckon the first three or four minutes, I think you're, you're spot on. They had all the play inside their forward half of the ground. And then from that moment on, it was just all Brisbane, and it was just all Cam Rayner and Lockie Neal through the middle of the ground. You look through the numbers, and Petrarca's had the seven disposals, but there was one influential clearance he had. Outside of that, he probably hasn't really done a lot to really trouble Melbourne, uh, Brisbane too much. And then look at a few of the other superstars, and Oliver's had the two disposals. Viney. And Viney's been very, very quiet with three. So... They, they need a lift out of the midfield of the, in the, uh, the Demons in, through the midfield. And, and to Brisbane's credit, they've just been harder around the, around the footy. And their work inside 50 has been first class. They haven't, they haven't been necessarily on the lead all the time, but they've got great uh, options ahead of the ball when you've got Hipwood and Joe Danaher really jumping at the football and bringing the ball down the ground. They've got their marks inside 50. But I just can't, I can't remember other than one occasion where Mays had a, had a defensive mark. And that's where Melbourne get a lot of their scores from, is those intercept marks and then getting the ball through the corridor on the way out. So Brisbane are just dominating nearly all areas of the ground so far. Oh, I totally agree, Murph, and you brought up Rayner halfway through that quarter. What a, what a quarter he's had. Six contested possessions, six clearances, seven inside 50s. Players, yeah. Midfielders don't have seven inside 50s for the game, no. and they've still had a, a decent crack and a, and a really good game. So he's on... Um, He's going to... Well, you're right. What, what does Melbourne do now? Do they chuck a Viney to him and say, mate, we need to stop this guy? Then Neil gets off the off the leash maybe. And you know, I loved what you said about... And Neil's one of those players, Murph, that have got the ability to do inside and outside. Yep. So now that Rayner's going to work inside and Dunkley always goes to work inside, can Neil be the second possession and not the first possession? I mean, he's still at the... He hasn't been amazing. He's still, you look at the stats. Still the four clearances. He's had eight, yeah. eight touches and yeah. four clearances. He just he gets the ball, and uh, Sparrow, his opponent, who has done a decent job to date, he, he's had four touches, but Neil's obviously got the, the, the chockies at the at this stage of the game. Well, what he does, Lockie Neil, is he gets the ball and then creates space for himself and then just releases his teammates into better positions. So he doesn't necessarily just get the ball and just flick it out or, or kick it quick. Yep. He always takes, takes an extra second or two to work out what he's going to do with it next. So it's a really good possession. So his next, his teammate can actually use his legs and take ground or find an option. We, we spoke about Cam Rayner being on uh, world record pace for clearances. He's well ahead of world record pace for uh, inside 50s in a game with his seven in the first term. The record is 16, 16. in a game. Boomer Harvey? Uh, no, it was no. a teammate of... No. Boomer Harvey's. Daniel Wells, maybe? No. Current AFL coach? Oh, Adam Simpson. Adam Simpson. Uh, that would have been Miyagi's. They would have hit the roof from Telstra. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a, a five-way tie. So Simpson, Rashudo, Short, Jaden Short, Josh Kelly and Patrick Dangerfield all have 16 in a game. Uh, Murph, you said that it was a battle of the midfield. That's where you thought it was going to be won, won or lost. Brisbane are clearly on top at the minute. Into the second quarter we go. Brisbane leading by 14 points. Looking for just their second win in the last 17 matches here at the MCG. 
McInerney wins down the tap to McCluggage, trying to break through traffic. Sparrow lays the tackle. Lohman comes charging in. Howes lays the tackle on him. Just to the right of the centre circles. Viney dives on top. Can't extract the footy. Answorth through traffic. Hand pass to McInerney. He shovels it 10 metres forward. Gets it out of the congestion. Langdon on off for Melbourne. Hand pass to Rivers. Kicks out to the members' side. And Sparrow takes the mark in front of Dunkley. Turned and looked inboard. Oliver was in the centre of the ground. He ignores that. Now veers out to the left. Kicks it as long as he can in the direction of McInerney. Caught behind. Gorn can't take the mark. Billings has hand pass. Got it to Oliver. Hand pass picked off by McCluggage. Kicks out to vacant space at halfback. It bounces in front of Hipwood. It cleared a path for Archie. Beautiful teamwork for the Brisbane Lions. Hand pass to Leicester. Kicks up towards Danaher. Out number two on one. May spoils his own teammate down. Spills the way of Sparrow who's locked up in a tackle by McCarthy. The umpire will ball it up at centre half forward for the Brisbane Lions. May's position, he's so proactive. He was 20 metres off down to her then, but still made up the ground because he's such a good player, but he's he's super proactive. Gorn wins the tap. McCluggage onto the footy, though. Bursts through a tackle. Dribbles a kick forward. Let him up it up. Howes, he can't cleanly. Comes down to Fletcher. Snap on goal. He's good. Brisbane pick up where they left off. They're away and running in their second term. 5-2-32, plays two straight 12. They lead by 20 points, 90 seconds into their second term. Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. 732 games experience, Mark Murphy, Brent Harvey. Well, there's one for the Tigers there too. Who's Jasper Fletcher's got the job tonight on Christian Petrarca and, and that's how you really get in the head of your, your tag player when, you, when you're able to go forward and kick a, kick a ball. And that was all in the defensive efforts there by the Brisbane forwards. They just... Refuse to let up, just contest after contest. It's a very greasy night, so you're always going to get opportunities if you're prepared to pressure. But then good pick up and good snap first time a goal. Yeah, very good finish, wasn't it? There was a lot of contested ball in this, isn't it? If you see McCluggage breaking, breaking a couple of tackles, trying to get the ball free. So Brisbane are uh, they're working well around the stoppages. Five of the last six goals in the match, and they've been able to dominate from stoppages. It's been such a strength of Melbourne's game. Ball was uh, volleyball spiked forward by Max Gorn, but it's going to be recalled. Boomer and Murph, which tagger was the best at slipping forward and kicking a goal when they were tagging you? Cameron we'll Ling. We'll get back to the play. Oh, Cameron Ling's going to like that shout out. Lockie Neal can't break away as Oliver and Gorn both lay the tackle. Got a name for me, Murph? I had, I had Mark Witzel's kick to me one day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to go defend him. He's six foot six. No. <laughs> Gorn's able to step around the tackle of Dunkley, gets a kick up towards half forward. Neil Bullen can't break away from Noah Answorth, and the umpire will ball it up. Still inside the centre square, Brisbane out. Well, as wide as it's been, 20 points with the first goal of the second quarter. Gorn just knocks it down to Viney for Melbourne. Hand pass to Langdon, hand pass to Chandler, kicks it straight up in the air. Fletcher tries to fly with Sparrow in front of him, brought it down to Lockie Neal. Hand pass to McCluggage, kick was smothered. Langdon lays the tackle and the ball is locked up with Noah Answorth on the bottom of the back. I just feel that the gear's been shifted a little bit. Melbourne, are, I reckon they got a little bit of a cook at uh, quarter time. They've come out and they've just lifted their tempo slightly. Born able to knock it down onto it. Fletcher, though, he'll kick a high ball back towards the wing. Up they go, no one marks. Bailey bursts onto it. Tries to don't argue. Dispossessed in the tackle. Umpire lets them play. Howes gets it back to McVie. Melbourne in possession. Billings a little handball to Oliver. His handball nearly chopped off. Back with it, though. Langdon running down the wing. Chips it short. And a good mark taken there by Viney. Five metres in from the boundary line. Five inside 50. And ignores some offers. Some, some big offers, too. You want to go back and slot this now? I reckon uh, Jack Billings was on there and on for a good three or four seconds. This shows you sometimes when you're going back to have a, a shot at goal, you need to still be on your toes on the front foot. So if something does pop up, you've still got the opportunity to then just pierce the kick. What's he doing, Murphy? Does he have a, sh have a shot here or put it atop the goal square? I really love a shot. We'll run out. Left footer. Right side for a left footer. A veers out onto his left. Sends it on goal. It won't get there. It'll come down in the goal square. Gorn hands to it. Slapped through cleverly by Zorko. Yeah. On the last line, a minor score. He definitely should have hit up Jack Billings, <laughs> and he was on. <laughs> when you can, he's only kicked that 35 metres, Jack Ryan. He probably should have passed it. Dane Zorko brings Brisbane quickly back into play. He spotted Lester free at right half back. Takes the mark and chips it around the boundary line to Calamachi. Brisbane 5 2 32 to Melbourne 2 1 13. Five minutes gone in the second quarter. 
Makes it back to Harris Andrews, who turns on the 45, kicks in to Zach Bailey. And a cross half back for Payne. At the defensive 50 arc, he looks out to Fletcher, who marks it left half back. They've got no closer to goal, Brisbane, but they've stretched Melbourne wider. Now the runners just drying up a little bit for Jasper Fletcher, who chips a kick looking for Dunkley. He marks in front of Ben Brown on his chest. Quickly with the hand pass away to Stasovic. Kicks it around the boundary line to Bailey. They're trying to force Melbourne a man up and find an easy option. Now Zach Bailey between wing and half forward. Might have to wheel around onto the right and kick long in the direction of Danaher. Tries to work his way to the front, but Jake Lever in from the side. Another impressive intercept mark from one of the reliable Melbourne key pillars in defence. Well, that's why Brisbane are trying to kick the yep. ball around and change angles because if you're prepared to go long like that, it's going to play into Melbourne's hands. You probably need to get the ball another 20 or 30 metres up the line, so another uncontested mark they need to try and find then, Brisbane. Howes kicks up to the wing, a cold turnover. Mark taken by Bailey for the Lions. This is when they can go quick. When there's a turnover like that, Murph, the Melbourne are out of position, yeah. and it's one-on-one -on -one at best for them. So you've got to go quick. Bailey kicks as long as he can. There's a whistle somewhere. Free kick going to Melbourne. Lever was being held. Made the action on himself. Sort of grabbed his grabbed his wrist and sort of said, yeah, I was being held. So what we're, what we're talking about, we're talking about Brisbane trying to get the ball 50 to 70 out so then they can get the ball in deep at the moment. They're... The release in this second quarter, probably from 90 metres out, which is playing to the hands of Melbourne and allowing them to set up. Joe Danaher missed throwing the ball back to him. Lever with the free kick at half back here for the, the D's, kicking up to the wing off hands. Pack quickly forms a little scrum and a ball up to come. The big, the big O, Big Oscar's not letting Max Gorn get any room at all in his marking contest. He's doing quite well. The voice of Brent Harvey with you on ABC Sport. Going one down the tap, McCluggage locks up Sparrow and the umpire will throw it in. Just in front of the two benches. Matt Clinch and Ben Cameron calling the action. Lauren Borden down on the boundary. Mark Murphy and Brent Harvey are your experts. Don't forget, of course, coverage on the ABC Listen app. Just look for the AFL button. All matches across the weekend. Gorn wins down the tap to Petrarca. Couldn't take it cleanly. Sparrow once more lays another tackle. It's stuck underneath Heat and Lockie Neal. Umpire puts it aloft on the wing. The umpire goes to ground. Coming away with it, though. Gorn for the Ds. Running and kicking inside 50. Off the hands of the pack. Stasevich roves. Cuts a sway through them for the Lions in the back pocket. Handball back to Leicester. Clear and kick out towards right half back. Archie tracking the ball. Bouncing ball. Gets a shepherd from McCarthy. Now the Lions away down the southern wing. Kick forward of it. Gardner can mark. Needs to move it on. He's got men on inside 50. Nothing he likes initially. He'll pedal back and assess his options. Gardner originally pointed in the direction in which he was intending and then waits for the leads to come. Danaher got underneath it. It clears him and Stephen May. And Tom McDonald taps it over the boundary line for a throw-in. So that's one play where the ball transitioned to one side of the ground. You want to go quick. Again, looking up, May had proactive position on Danaher and it wasn't just by two or three metres. It was by six, seven, eight metres. Gardner looked up, and the first thing he saw was big Stephen May yep. standing there, so he just couldn't kick it. Throw in, Sparrows alongside Neil, Rainers alongside Rivers. It comes down the way, McCluggage kicks towards goal. It's a vacant goal now. It pitches on its point and won't go through. Can Lohman finish? He can't get a boot to it. Oh, the footy can be cruel. And sometimes the footy god, Stephen Milton's thinking, where was my love? On that occasion, it just didn't go through. And Hugh McCluggage denied Brisbane lead by 20 points. Rivers with the kick in, runs out, takes a bounce, wants to kick up towards Tolstrup in front of him. Leicester brings it down, Tolstrup follows up, tackled hard by Leicester. Now they all are on top of it. Tolstrup goes in again, the rugged farm worker. Spoke about the great memories he has working with his dad and his grandfather on the farm growing up. Gorn wins the tap, knocking it on for Melbourne. Onto it, Sparrow standing up in a kneel tackle. All up to come between wing and half forward for Brisbane. Just look at the photo of his uh, family on the monitor who had to make their way from WA with a day's notice, Ben. Not the easiest place to jump on no. a plane and try and get some cheap flights. Lehman kicks around the boundary line in the direction. Tolstrom has spoiled out of play by Zork on a boundary throw in. Worse than that, they were in Esperance, which is <laughs> not close to Perth. That's seven hours away by car. Then the, the flight. 
drove out there to Esperance. Just another function down there, Boomer. Oh, I did have a little function down there. But <laughs> he talks, but he doesn't. With the, with the great, uh, great Glenn Jakovic. He'd go oh. anywhere, Boomer, for a function. <laughs> 20 points, the Lions lead. Thrown in. Neil Bourne's kicked to half forward. One direction was Wilmot. It's given a bit back, Benny. Grassroots <laughs> football, mate. It's also back. Was coming the other. Wilmot kept his eyes on the footy. It's an impressive mark. And left half back. Kicks to Leicester and then up to Dunkley. Brisbane's movement on the MCG has been impressive. Could have given a hand pass to Leicester, ignored that. Kick to Gardner, who was foot stationary. And while Woden slides in front, makes the spoil. Carter Woden, the son, of course, of Shane. Getting an early opportunity here. The sub into the match with uh, Christian Salem out in the first 10 minutes with a hamstring injury. Brisbane by 20 points. Umpire bringing it back in. Van Royen in front. Nice little tap down for Neil Bullen. Has to gather on the bounce. Manages to get rid of it. Loose footy on the logo. Rayner again having a big evening. Handball Laurent though. Leicester hacks it out of midair. Falls for Zorko. Lines going forward again. McCluggage. Handball away to Wilmot. Looking inside 50. Needs a marker. May comes across. Takes a good defensive mark. That fullback for the D's and flares it out quickly to Chandler at the halfback flank. They're setting their defence up a little bit better now. That's three intercept marks this quarter, Murph. So yep. I think we only seen one in the first quarter. Chandler up towards Petty, lost Andrews, and then lost his footing, and that was enough for Harris to get him. Holding the ball, Brisbane want to try and take the advantage. As they stream on from half, uh, from the wing to half forward, Wilmont kicks up towards Charlie Cameron. Just inside the boundary, 55 metres out from home. He looks for options, Hipwoods... Uh, Central, he hugs the boundary line with a kick to Archie. He's going to come inboard. McCluggage can't take the mark. Oliver <laughs> makes the spoil. It was high contact. Brisbane will get the shot on goal. It was there. Yeah, clip, clip across the forehead. He just, he, just, the he made it known to the umpire too that he, he'd been clipped. Just did the old head grab. <laughs> yep. See McCluggage through the head back <laughs> and the arms at the same time. And he will get the shot on goal in the right forward pocket. A bit tighter than a 45-degree angle. He'll have to kick from around 40 metres out. He just gets his opportunity purely on work rate. I've been watching in this quarter. He's, he's a very hard runner, Hugh McCluggage, and playing a really good game tonight. Out of contract at season's end from the right forward pocket. Likes it off the boot, and through it goes. Brisbane with six of the last seven goals of the match. The only two goals of this second quarter, and they lead by 26 points in the second quarter of the MCG. 6-3-39 to Melbourne, 2-1-13. 13 13 minutes gone, second term on ABC Sport. With Brent Harvey and Mark Murphy. Murphy, I love seeing sacrificial acts, and I've just seen one just there that I'd love to mention. Lincoln McCarthy had Jack Lever playing on him. The ball was in the... 55 metres out on the boundary. He kept leading, and Lever had yep. to go with him. He, you can pretend lead, Lever's going to drop off. But he kept going hard. Lever had to go with him. And, of course, we've already mentioned three intercept marks to Lever and May this this quarter. So little things like that, Brisbane is playing some good team football. They are. And, and what you what you have to do across the ground is lead through players too because they have that proactive positioning, Melbourne. So they stand out in front of you. You've actually got to lead through them. Create space for your teammate behind you. Here's a goal kicker, his 100th goal at AFL level. Back in the middle, Gorn taking it out of the right kick, goes straight up and down. McInerney punches it away, wins it there for the D's. Back feeds a handball away to Rivers, kicks to half forward, Neil Billen drops it. Picking it up quickly, Bailey getting involved, McInerney again for Brisbane. Bouncing handball from Wilmot. Onto it, Rayner had a lot of it, wrapped up quickly. Ball up in the middle. The Melbourne fans not happy, they thought there was a missed free kick on Neil Bullen. On the spoil from McInerney. Trying in the air. Gorn knocks it down to Sparrow. Into the path of Petrarca. From 50. On the run. It's offline to the right-hand side. Just scrapes through for a minor score. Brisbane by 25 points. But you keep thinking back to that game in round 18 last year when Brisbane led by 22 and Melbourne came storming home. Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. Good release kick from Stasevich. Barry Marks comes infield to Leicester. 50 metre penalty, is it? No. Umpire Power wants Lester back on his mark. Comes infield short to Answorth. Short kick to Berry. In line with the logo just inside the square. Sends it out wide to McCarthy. A very slow and steady here from Brisbane. They lead by 25 points. Quarter hour mark of this second term. McCarthy on the left. Sets it up to a pack. Hipwood in front. Doesn't mark down at ground level. 
Lever mops it up. He's away, releases Sparrow with the handball. Looks long to the wing where Petrarch is the target. Lester in from oh, the side, oh almost no. takes the mark. Had enough of it in the office of the umpire. <laughs> and the Melbourne fans don't agree with that call. He was off balance, landed awkwardly. Did you think he had enough of it? No, I did. I thought it was a great contest, yeah. number one. Petrarca was in great position. He came from nowhere, and yeah, I'd pay that mark. Lester, short to Bailey, across to the wing on the member's side. Maybe Starts not, maybe not now that I've seen the replay. <laughs> <laughs> Allowed to change your opinion. Now wider still to Darcy Gardner, who takes the mark. That's what Brisbane have done well. They try and stretch Melbourne's defence as he kicks up to Dunkley. Marks it left half forward for the Brisbane Lions. They lead by 25 points. Wide to Berry. Still two kicks from goal. Danaher's on from the bench. He runs the boundary line, receives the hand pass, shanks it inside 50. And Clayton Oliver takes an awkward slips mark. <laughs> Realise it wasn't intended for him, but he juggles the mark with the left uh, right hand still in a glove. And goes back to Rivers for Melbourne. Caught it with both his hands and both of his legs. <laughs> the D's nearly blow it coming out of their D50. Oliver has to go back and try and clean up again. A little flick pass out towards Neil Bullen. He spits it out towards Sparrow. Running to the defensive edge of the square. Kicks up to Chandler. Goes up. Brings it down. Follows up at ground level. Picks up the footy. Looks inside 50. Poor kick. Stasevich marks defensively for Brisbane. Wants to go up the middle. Kicks straight to Wilmot. Lines by 25 and with the footy in the middle of the ground. As Wilmot goes short to Rayner. They just rush themselves then. Melbourne, they had probably the extra ahead of the football then. They just need to be composed with ball in hand. They just tried to move the ball on too quickly. Just a second disposal for Cam Rayner in this second quarter. Had 12 in the first quarter. Out to Harris Andrews, to Dunkley. Chip kick, Miss McCluggage. Runs into traffic, drag down. He didn't have the footy by Rivers. Play on the call. Neil Bullen for Melbourne at halfback. Through the middle of the down. Kicks to Sparrow. This time he's a bit more reluctant to charge forward. His kick is smothered, though, by Bailey. It bounces in front of Petrarca. Tackled by Harris Andrews. Petrarca can't get a hand pass away. He's dumped into the turf. It's gathered by Payne. Gets a hand pass forward. McCarthy gathers. Centre wing member side up towards McCluggage. He gets the knee from Tom McDonald. He comes in from the side. And Hugh McCluggage is a bit worse for wear as McDonald kicks it forward to Chandler. Yeah, looks, right like a gen back. looks like a genuine hit pointer yeah. there for Hugh McCluggage. Just sitting underneath the, f the footy. Tom McDonald, as he should, drop the knee straight in the lower back. Chandler a long kick. Andrews at the front of the pack. Takes the mark for Brisbane. Might have been one of those ones. You know when you're really knackered, Murphy, and you've ran so hard? And you get a little hit and you think, I can stay down here for 10 seconds and just get a rest. <laughs> yeah, I might not have to chase this one. That's that two-way running, Benny. <laughs> Brisbane in possession, chipping it around. Berry back with the footy, breathing heavily on the bench. Here McCluggage. Berry just backward of halfway. A long kick up to the contest at half forward. Gone in front of the pack. Neil roving for the lines. Handball to Dunkley. Time to steady. Goes long in the direction of Archie. Cameron there too. Cameron! Somehow frees his arms to Mark. 15 out, plum in front. Out points McVee. Well, those are the two V2s that you want when you're deep, when you don't have Lever and you don't have May down there, who got caught high up the up the ground. It was a great ball win from Lockie Neal, front and centre, just clean, and then just released to Dunkley, who had space to analyse where best to use the footy. And this bloke's a very good one-on-one -on -one player. Straight in front, 20 out. Dental surgery in the off-season. Reason to smile again. Brisbane are all over them. They lead by 31 points. They've kicked seven of the last eight goals. 7-3-45 plays, 2-2-14. Two, two, 18 minutes into the second term, Mark Murphy, Brent Harvey. Murphy, you're spot on. You mentioned Lockie Neal. And we're going to talk about his 250th game. What he's got the ability to do is put players in time and space. Yeah. Like that handball, I'm not sure how he knew that Dunkley was to the right of him. He just, he just puts him in time and space. Dunkley has two seconds to get rid of the ball instead of one and a half or one second. He's, he's a star. If you're listening to this, go to the football if you're in Brisbane and, and watch his kid play because he, he can play. And not only does he just release the handball to a, a teammate, he does it in a perfect position too, but Dunkley's running forward with momentum so he doesn't have to break stride. And so it's easy for him then to dispose the ball of, by hand or foot. Mark Murphy with you on ABC Sport. A clearance for Lockie Neal. Hand pass to Rayner. Long inside 50. Clears the hands of Lever. And Danaher racing after it. Cameron once more. Can he pick it up cleanly? Underground hand pass to Danaher in the left forward pocket. Ooh. Curling shot. It slams into the right goalpost. 
Trying to work it from left to right, just overcooked the curl. The Brisbane are all over the top of Melbourne. They lead by 32 points. 30 to 16 inside 50s. 26 to 14 clearances. Wow. A spot of the game where Melbourne are, are usually very dominant, just getting really touched up at the moment. May runs to the back pocket, sends it as long as he can up to the wing. Good mark there by Wilmot. Payne, in fact, has taken the mark. It was an emergency on grand final day. Had that ankle injury and couldn't get back into the team. 70 out from Gull. He'll go long into the pocket, looking for a marker down there. McDonald in front. Oliver coming through. Rose for Melbourne. Wax it back towards where it came from. Bouncing ball up to the logo. Payne picking it up again. Brisbane back with the footy. Trying to knock it forward. It was Billings. He was held when he didn't have possession. And team and Sands feel like at last we get a free kick our way. Jack Billings has that centre wing on the Shane Warne stand side. Brisbane by 32 points. Ships it laterally to Max Gorn. The Ruckman had to turn his body to take the mark as the kick was behind him. There's some damage down on the bench with some running repairs. We'll head down to Lars Borden in just a moment. Hugh McCluggage has come off and Trent Rivers as well. Melbourne switch it through the middle of the ground. Taj Woden kicks it out to Judd McVie. Mark centre wing on the members' side now. Looking for options inside 50. Petty is wide as he sends it in that direction. In from the side. Good spoil by Darcy Wilmont. And the ball goes out of play at right half forward for the Demons. Brisbane by 32 points. Uh, Lauren Borden on the boundary. What can you tell us from your vantage point? Uh, Hugh McCluggage did come to the boundary. He was just breathing pretty heavily and needed a spell. The doctors chatted to him, but were happy to just leave him where he was. Trent Rivers looked like he got a cork. He walked along the boundary line, then just jumped on the bike. It is a bit cold tonight as well. Lockie Neal jumped on the bike when he was off, so a few players doing that too. Ryan will get the clearance from the throw-in. Kicks inside 50. Off hands. Answorth there for the Lions. Worried out of it. Handball just gets to Andrews. He'll kick towards Lohman at halfback. Howes in his back pocket. Howes, I'm going to worry him out of it, but out of bounds. The throw in to come. Brisbane with the last five goals in the game. That's the difference in it. They lead by 32. Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. Mark Murphy, Brent Harvey. Just finding it impossible at the moment, Melbourne, to try and find a mark. They've only had the 27 marks across the ground so far compared to Brisbane's 60. So one of two, one of two things. Are they getting outworked or not working hard enough? Melbourne at the moment and can't find that, that release kick at the moment by, by getting those marks and uncontested footy. Back at any one down the tap to Zorko. Hand pass forward, linked up with Rayner. Hand pass to Dunkley, kicks end over end up towards Hipwood. Can't take it cleanly, sliding in a lever. Hand pass to House of Melbourne. Under pressure, works it back to Tom McDonald. Hand pass to Taj Woden. The son of a gun gets a hand pass around the wing. Langdon didn't have time to take possession. Quickly over the top to Jack Viney. Kicks up towards Gorn and McAdooney. Harris Andrews in from the side, makes the spoil. Unable to take it cleanly was Fletcher of Brisbane. Hand pass to Lockie Neal. To Hipwood hard against the boundary. Underground hand pass was clever. Got it to Answorth. Kicks up towards McCarthy and Cameron. Cameron can't take the mark. It ricochets off his hip and goes out of play for a boundary throw in. They just can't get a, a clean possession. Everything they do is under under the pump, Murph. It's, they look around, they turn up, they, they kick the ball, and they, they're just getting pressured, a little push to the hip. It's just making their ball not go to their teammate. Really good pressure by the, uh, the Brisbane Lions. 450 stoppage for Brisbane here. Gorn hitting it away. Onto it, though, McCarthy. Handball out towards Chandler. He'll tumble a kick up to the wing. Bounces off the chest of Van Royen. He's able to work it out. Viney. Handball releases Chandler. Running bounce. Through the logo he goes. Long kick. Out in front of Petty. Bouncing ball. Right there with him, Andrews. Like a disobedient dog. It <laughs> doesn't sit for him. It tumbles out. And a throw in to come. In the left forward pocket. Lines by 32. Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. Massive round five. All ahead of us. It's the worst ball. Oh. The ones that don't bounce up. up. Yeah. You know you know, you got him by three or four metres. You can probably turn and outrun him and just doesn't sit up. Brisbane by 32 points. Thrown in. Gorn tucks to take it out of the ruck. Half pass away to Chandler. Hardy gets the boundary. It's across the face. And just scrapes in for a minor score. Brisbane by 31 points. The Demons are just two goals, three. At the 24-minute mark of the second quarter, Brisbane with the seven goals next to their name. Yeah, they're just not getting the ball forward to centre at all and we've spoken quite a bit about the clearance differential when you've only had 18 inside 50s for a half football you're just getting blanketed everywhere 
Zorko with the kick in, short to Payne in the pocket, short again to Berry. Still inside that offensive 50. Lines by 31 points. Did we have a matchup? Um, there's no really matchup for Clayton Oliver no. at the start of the game. Well, he's only had the seven possessions. Berry up to the wing. Dunkley, a lot of the footy. Windsor pinches it from him, takes it out. And a throwing to come on the wing right beneath the members. Both coaches in this game, of course, coach from the bench. So down there, talking to their troops from the throw in. Gorn and McInerney. Gorn taps it to himself. He'll snap a kick quickly inside 50. Bouncing ball for Tolstrup. Unable to gather it. Bounces to Van Royen. Little handball to Brown to Sparrow. His handball back into traffic. Favours the lines. A cluggage comes up with it. Clear and kick. Underneath it is Rivers. He takes the mark despite the late contact from Darcy Gardner. On the edge of the centre square at half forward for the Demons. And they get one here ahead of the main break. Max Gorn's certainly trying to lift his team. He's, he's been everywhere around the clearances in the last five minutes. That's six himself. So Rivers he's trying to lift his team. Spies a player free at half forward. It's Howes who runs to 52. Goes bang. Can he clear the goal line? It just hits the post late. Into the right goal post. It's Harris Andrews lost his footing. And another minor score for Melbourne. Brisbane by 30 points. Might have got a shove, Harris Andrews, which what impacted him losing his footing. From Harrison Petty. Short kick into the pocket. Fletcher able to accept it. Now slightly hemmed in the lines. We'll take the long option. Up to the contest on the wing. In from the side, Rivers. Good grab. Heavy landing as he goes to ground. Two kicks from goal. Chips it into the pocket. Looking for a mark. And Van Royen slips through his fingers. Zorko there for Brisbane, sweeping handball to Berry. Another sweeping handball, away out in front of Bailey. Wants to turn back inside defensive 50, onto his left and kick up to the wing. Lever going back, juggles the mark. Melbourne in possession, they've got a little bit of momentum at the moment. Haven't managed a goal so far in this second quarter. Lever tries to chisel the oh. kick. Sparrow scored his own teammate Petrarca in the end. A chance for Answorth. Gets it to McCluggage at halfback. Hand pass to Gardner. Turns and kicks inboard. And Joe Danaher takes the mark at left halfback. And the instruction is probably coming from the bench now that uh, halftime is almost upon us. So Brisbane will control the tempo. And chips it back to Gardner and then turns and comes inboard to Zorko. Well, they don't need to kick another goal, Brisbane, for the quarter. They just don't want Melbourne to score and go in with all the momentum coming into the uh, the halftime break. Brisbane with three goals, two in this second quarter to Melbourne's four behinds. After the Lions led by 14 points at quarter time. Gardner long down the line in the direction of Danaher and Rayner. Neither can take the mark. Gorn's tackled. Got a hand pass away. Out to McInerney, though, at Brisbane. He's got a hand pass to Danaher, who turns it over. This kick is marked by Trent Rivers. And the siren sounds for halftime. An impressive opening half by the Brisbane Lions, who lead by 30 points. 7 4 46 to Melbourne, 2 4 16. And the Lions, having led by 14 points at quarter time, now lead by 30 at the main break. Joe Danaher has a couple of goals. Eric Hipwood has a couple of goals. Individuals to McCluggage, Cameron, and Fletcher. Meanwhile, for the Demons, goalless in that second quarter. Their goals have come through Neil Bullen and Fritch. On the SMS, 0437 774 774. Clinchy, Ben, Boomer, Murph and Lauren. Top call, go Lions. Listening on the ABC Listen app. That's from Grant in Waterloo. Great to have your company, Grant. Ask Boomer if that's how he got to 400 games, by having those cheeky little rests on the ground. That's from Tim <laughs> and Applecross. <laughs> it certainly helped. I'll give you the tip. <laughs> uh, M from Melbourne. Hi, team. Great call, especially the special comments. If the Lions win, I hope they win. They'll continue with this, not just for Lockie's 250th game. Yes, of course, uh, Lockie Neal playing his 250th game tonight. And why don't they put Petty in the back line and McDonald in the forward line, for God's sake? Okay, let us know your name and where you're listening in from, and we'll try and give you credit. And from the doctor in the TARDIS, g'day, Ben. Um, are you sad you're not here in WA anymore because the new ABC Sport team have a show in WA from 7 p.m. Monday to Wednesday? Yes, of course, it's called Time On with Clint Wielden. Mitch Turner, looking forward to hearing Ash Nelson as well. So if you're not in WA, where it will be on local radio, you can hear it on the ABC Sports button via the ABC Listen app. So uh, extended sports coverage during the week, which is what we want. The thoughts of Mark Murphy and Brent Harvey with you. Brisbane leading by 30 points. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a long way back here from Melbourne, but I don't think they need to structurally change up anything. I think he, Simon Goodwin needs to just ask his troops 
around the around the contest. And and Max Gorn's probably been the only outlier to that who's probably won his position. He's fought and contested really hard, but the rest of their midfield just haven't got going tonight. Petrarca showed a little bit early, but he's been probably down on where he usually would be. But if you look across the border, the Brisbane Lions uh, midfielders, and you talk about Dunkley and Rayner and Berry, McLuggage, Neil, they've just dominated the, the, the contest and, and their work rate. But they've just been aggressive. It's, it's almost like they've bullied yep. Melbourne tonight. And, and that's usually one of the areas in which Melbourne are, are, are first class. And you, and you talk about Max Gorn, who I, I mentioned before. He's probably the only, only winner in there so far. But Viney's usually hard in there and, and, a, and a bull. Petrarca, Oliver, Sparrow I really like as a footballer. But probably to a man at the moment, they're just getting outworked and outhunted. Yeah, I, I totally agree. The, the midfield was the part of the game in the first half in particular and probably more so the first quarter where they they just ran over the top of them. And you look at... It's not all about possessions, we know this, but when you're used to seeing Clayton Oliver, he's had seven possessions, no impact on the game. Petrarca's had very, very small impact with nine. Viney, who is a bull, he's had, he's had ten. And on the other hand, the, the other boys... Oh, oh, I would make one little move if I was Simon Goodwin in the Melbourne Football Club. I feel like there's no speed in the game for him at the minute. Now, Judd McVie's playing a lock, more of a lockdown on Charlie Cameron. Yep. I, I would probably try to get a lockdown player to play on Cameron and because they've lost Salem. They've lost their kicking and their drive off half back. I would nearly say to him, mate, we need you to play higher up the ground, not so locked down on Cameron. We're going to give you the football and you're going to run and bounce it through the centre of the ground and you're going to kick the ball into side 50 for us. I, I just feel they're lacking a little bit of pace and speed around the contest. And it's, and it's hard to, to really show that speed too if, you, if you're not actually winning the ball on the inside the football. either because yep. the one thing that I think they've injected really well this season, Melbourne, is pace on the outside. And we saw it a couple of times then with Chandler, but um, Young Windsor's one who's brought a lot of pace and, and McVie that you've talked about. It's hard to show pace and do it on the outside when you're not winning the ball yep. the cold face. So Great call. I think that's, that's the one area that can get their game going and that's why they've been such a a good team for a great team for such a long period of time is their their bulls and their contested work around the around the centre of the ground and their ability just to go out of centre square uh, centre square bounces and score straight away. Uh, I think that's what they need to really focus on in the start of this third quarter is getting their centre clearance work where it needs to be and be really hungry through there. So Brisbane have kicked five of their seven goals from stoppages and you ran through the stats, Murph, throughout the call. So 27 to 18, the clearance is the way of Brisbane and the inside 50 is no surprise that they closely follow 32 to 22. So does Simon Goodwin put it on his midfield group? You look at the likes of uh, Jack Viney, who's had the 10 disposals, Clayton Oliver the 9, um, uh, sorry, Clayton Oliver 7, Christian Petrarca with the 9 and sort of say, right, oh, here's your chance either lift yep. the the work rate, or otherwise we're looking for someone else to get an opportunity? Yeah, well, he certainly does. I mean, Petrarca and Oliver are superstars, so he needs to go to them and say, you guys need a need a lift, and I'm sure they would understand that them, themselves, walking in at half-time, and it's not just purely just based on the numbers. It, it just looks like they're just not proactive around stoppages, which is something that they are just so good at. When you've got Max Gorn, who can yep. put it wherever he wants to. Oscar McInerney's competed really well, but, but Max has been fantastic, yep. I thought, tonight. But they're still not being on the move and, and hungry. I, I reckon they're just being out, outworked around the stoppage. And, and then from the stoppage too, Brisbane are able to get their uncontested mark game going. We've seen that quite a bit tonight where they just, when they have gone in long, when it hasn't been close enough to goal, Brisbane and Melbourne have turned the ball over. But they've predominantly, they've moved the ball. They've changed the angles really well, Brisbane, and been able to get it in a bit deeper and cause a bit of, of course, some issues for Melbourne's defence. And then you've had a good contest from some of their tours up there as well, which um, which I was, was asking for at the start of the game in, in Hipwood and, and Danaher. So they started the game really well. But I just I just think they've just come with a real hungry attitude tonight, Brisbane, and, and been far too good. It's going to be interesting to see because Sparrow's done a fairly good job on Zorko. Nine possessions for Sparrow, 12 for, uh, sorry, for, uh, for Lockie Neal. Now, if you do that, though, Murph, you lose one of Petrarca, Oliver, or Viney out of your centre mm. centre bounce and you ran your clearances. So it's going to be interesting to see if they stick with Sparrow on Neil or they say to those three boys, Clinchy, like you said, nah, we need you to go to work, we need you to win the football and you're going to have to go head-to-head with him. And then, unfortunately, if you do that with Lockie yeah. Neal, he, he can get on, get a hold of you on the, uh, in the second half. The other player is Cam Rayner, who had 16 disposals to halftime, but he had 12 in the first quarter. So you look at his numbers, 16 disposals, 7 clearances, 9 contested possessions and 8 inside 50s. Obviously, number one draft pick, Murph, so we knew he was going to be a good player back in 2017, but it feels like 
very much this game he's showing his skills on display oh yeah he's playing the game apart that first quarter was as good as the first quarter i've seen from a long for a long time i, I haven't seen numbers like that but he he brought his teammates into the game he was influential scoring he was just hungry around the contest he set the scene and the others followed him so when you've got Lockie Neal, who's your, your superstar and who every team would look to to try and blanket. And a lot of the, probably the discussion would be, well, if you, if you lock out Lockie Neal, you probably go a long way to beating the Brisbane Lions. But when you've got blokes like Cam Rayner playing that sort of football, then the taggers have to start thinking, well, who do we go to? And that's when, that's when you know you're really in business as a footy team. And they're obviously a great footy team. They got to a grand final last year and got within a kick of winning it. So they're, they're certainly... A very good football side. We haven't seen their best so far this year, but that first half was easily their best football so far. Thoughts of Mark Murphy and Brent Harvey with you on ABC Sport. Halftime in Brisbane lead Melbourne by 30 points here at the MCG. 7-4-46 to the Demons at 2-4-16. On the other side of the ABC News, we'll bring you all the team news for the rest of round five. But get, let's get the latest from the ABC Newsroom. <laughs> ABC News with Glenn Lauder. The Prime Minister is being accused of overlooking the role of households in transitioning to clean energy and cutting inflation. Anthony Albanese's Future Made in Australia Act targets investments in advanced manufacturing and renewables to boost industry and combat inflation. The founder of Rewiring Australia, Saul Griffith, says the country used to take heed from the United States and prioritise domestic clean energy transition. If we fully electrify our domestic car fleet and housing fleet, we'd be saving close to $2 trillion over the next couple of decades as part of an inflation reduction action response. The reason that's important is about half of the spending was direct incentives for households to electrify and decarbonise. Only about 15% of the Inflation Reduction Act was focused on manufacturing. The federal MP that represents the Tasmanian electorate where the Port Arthur massacre took place is urging the opposition leader to refrain from using the tragedy to make a political point. Monty Boville has the story. Peter Dutton last night drew a parallel between a pro-Palestinian rally on the steps of the Opera House in October and the Port Arthur massacre. He said while no one was killed at the protest, it was comparable to the social significance of the 1996 massacre in which 35 people were killed. Labor member for Lyons Brian Mitchell says the Australian people put politics aside and came together in common purpose following the tragedy. As the local member, he's asked Mr Dutton to reflect on that and refrain from using the tragedy to make divisive and inflammatory comments. State governments are being urged to look at the ACT's rent rise policy to help curb record increases. Data from PropTrack shows rents have again risen to record highs, with Melbourne, Sydney and Perth seeing the biggest increases. Emma Greenholch from National Shelter says more needs to be done and that examining the effectiveness of thresholds on rent rises in the ACT could help. Given that the ACT is the only um, jurisdiction that has... Um, let's call it, you know, a, a rent fairness formula um, in their tenancy legislation. It's the only one when it comes to houses in these figures where there's a very low quarterly change. The Australian Electoral Commission's worried voting rates in the Sydney seat of Cook could be lower than normal in this Saturday's by-election. Here's Jessica Kidd. The by-election in the federal seat of Cook in Sydney's Sutherland Shire has been triggered by the resignation of former Prime Minister Scott Morrison, who's held the seat since 2007. The Australian Electoral Commission says early voting in the seat is down more than 11% on the 2022 general election and down almost 13% on early voting in the voice referendum last year. Spokesman Evan Eakin-Smith says it's led to concerns of low voter turnout. We need to make sure everybody who's enrolled in Cook turns up, casts their vote because it is compulsory. Voters can be fined if they don't cast a ballot. A coalition of pro-democracy forces and ethnic guerrilla fighters have claimed an important victory after reportedly taking control of the major trading town on Myanmar's border with Thailand. But observers are concerned the defeat will prompt a counter-offensive from the military junta that could have devastating consequences for the civilian population. Around 200 fleeing soldiers were gathered at the border crossing bridge into Thailand near the town. Thai authorities are reportedly in talks with the soldiers deciding whether to grant them refuge. 
Canada's government says there is a risk of another catastrophic wildfire season this year. Officials are forecasting higher than normal spring and summer temperatures across much of the country, boosted by El Nino weather conditions. Last year, Canada endured its worst ever fire season. Eight firefighters died and 230,000 people were evacuated from their homes. This winter, the country experienced warmer than normal temperatures and widespread drought. The Minister for Emergency Preparedness, Hajit Sajan, says there are concerning trends ahead. Now, it is impossible to predict with certainty that the summer, the summer that lies ahead of us. But what is clear is that wildfires will, will represent a significant challenge for Canada into the future as the impacts of climate change continue to intensify. And the cost to Canadians are also growing every single year. And floods have engulfed cities and towns across Russia and Kazakhstan after Europe's third longest river burst its banks. Around 110,000 people have been forced to evacuate swamping parts of the Russian city of Orenburg. That's ABC News. The May issue of Gardening Australia is filled with growing... Feast your eyes on gorgeous new release roses. Read about growing proteus and Japanese zelkova. And take a fresh look at chrysanthemums. Visit an artist garden, give your indoor plants a health check, learn how to maximise your veggie harvest and get tips on easy ways to compost. Available from newsagents at abcmagazines.com.au. This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL season. Every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. Gorn wins the tap. McCluggy John to the footy though. Burst through a tackle. Dribbles a kick forward. Let him off it up. Howes. He can't cleanly. Comes down to Fletcher. Snap on goal. He's good. Brisbane pick up where they left off. He looks for options, Hipwoods centrally, hugs the boundary line with a kick to Archie, he's going to come inboard, McCluggage can't take the mark, Oliver makes the spoil, it was high contact, Brisbane will get the shot on goal. Out of contract at season's end, from the right forward pocket, likes it off the boot, and through it goes! Brisbane with six of the last seven goals of the match. Long kick up to the contested half forward, Gorn in front of the pack, Neil roving for the Lions, handball to Dunkley, time to steady. Goes long in the direction of Archie. Cameron there too. Cameron! Somehow frees his arms to Mark. Straight in front. 20 out. Dental surgery in the off-season. Reason to smile again. Brisbane are all over them. They lead by 31 points. The 2024 AFL Premiership season. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. Half-time at the MCG, it's Brisbane who are well and truly on top, leading by 30 points, 7-4-46 to Melbourne, 2-4-16. Great to have your company for Thursday night footy. Macklinch and Ben Cameron calling the action. Lauren Borden down on the boundary. Your experts are Mark Murphy and Brett Harvey. This is what we love on the SMS, a bit of listener interaction. 0437 774 774. Riley is coming for you, Merv. Random question. Who is better on both feet, Ryan Hallahan or Nick Stevens? Oh, 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 Pinky. I don't know. Probably Ryan Hallahan. You think he was better on both sides? Oh, Nick Stevens probably was, I reckon. But Ryan Hallahan had a better right foot. Okay, there you go, Riley. And Mark from Glenroy says, Pickett's stupid act last week is really costing Melbourne tonight. I'm not saying it would have affected the score currently, but his speed and energy would have come in handy. No, I totally agree. Oh, I think that's a great call because we mentioned at the start of the game that if Pickett's not there to put that pressure on, he doesn't just have shots on goal. He also has scoring assists. And Melbourne, well, they've kicked two goals to, to half-time. So mm. they're, they're struggling to, to score and hit the scoreboard. And they, to be quite honest, they don't actually look like it, really, do they? They don't look like hitting the scoreboard. Six shots on goal and a half, it's, it's not a lot. No, not when they're getting comfortably beaten in the midfield. Uh, the rest of the teams are round five that have come through a short time ago. For the Western Bulldogs, Caleb Daniel has been dropped. James O'Donnell comes in. For the Bombers, Sammy Durham... And Alwyn Davy Jr. come in. Unfortunately, Will Setterfield and Archie Perkins out with injury. Geez, the spotlight's been on the Bombers this week. They're 2-2 two and two under Brad Scott, but it feels like 20 years of suffering has come up this week about what is the right direction for Essendon and are they heading on it? Yeah, they're just they're on the roller coaster at the moment, aren't they? <laughs> Essendon, one week you, you're You've all for them, and oh, I've been on the roller coaster a few times. Benny, thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> but um, no, they they're finding themselves in a tough spot because a lot of people would be thinking, "Oh, what do they stand for?" Because you're not seeing it week to week, and 
when you when you're performing one week and you're showing signs and then you drop off the cliff the following week and especially when all eyes are on you when you're playing Port Adelaide over there on on gather around everyone's watching everyone's seeing are we going to see the new Essen and and they were, were re, uh, really poor losing by 70 points and just didn't really show much fight so again the blowtorch comes because people keep on asking those questions you know what what is their brand and and are we seeing just a, a side that thinks they're they're going okay and then they just fall off the cliff again? Who's bigger tomorrow night for Boomer? Jack McRae has been the sub in previous weeks. Caleb Daniels been dropped. Bulldogs feel like they've got plenty of talent and uh, maybe Sam Darcy is emerging as the, the next key forward and, and Aaron Norton playing a bit higher up the ground as Luke Beveridge discussed. But pressure's been on Brad Scott. Who's tomorrow night more important for? Mm, that's a great question because I... Th- I think the Bulldogs are underachieving. I look at their list and I just think that they've got a great list. Norton doesn't kick enough goals for me, so it's great to see Sam Darcy come in and, and hit the um, the scoreboard last week. Maybe it is, and I know there's a lot of noise about Norton to go back and can he play down there. And Like, imagine if like they let Jeremy Cameron last week do what, do what he wanted to. Now, Norton, you're a great player. I'm going to get you to go and play on him, and you're going to... Go for the marks. You're going to outmark him. You're going to you're probably not going to outrun him because he's a he's a oh. great athlete. But you're going to be a, a pillar down there for us, and we need you to mark the football because I don't know up forward. I just I don't think he. You know, I, I rate him. I think he's a fantastic talent, but he's just not kicking enough goals. And you got Jamara down there now, and you got Sam Darcy that can play in that role. Um, I don't know what's happening with Jack McRae and Caleb Daniel. I, I think they're both absolute stars. Caleb Daniel uses the ball with, as good as anybody in the competition. Now he might be a little bit of out of form, but oh, I still think he's in their best twenty-two for me. Did you tell North to uh, to go and maybe inquire about Caleb Daniel Boomer? Oh, I would, oh, 100%. If I was coaching, he would be in my in my team. Now, I don't see. I'm, I've got no idea what the Western Bulldogs are doing, what he's doing at training and what he's not doing on the ground as well. But just from afar, I, I just like the way he plays. And anyone that can have 25, 30 touches, Jack McRae, um, probably deserves a spot. And maybe he's not doing stuff defensively. Again, I don't know. I don't watch him that closely. But uh, I, th- I think they're both in their, in their best 22. They just always yeah. seem to be that side where someone's always falling foul yeah. in the Bulldogs where you, you, you can't see it, you don't see it coming. And it's like, oh, how's he out of the yeah, side? It was like Johannesson was, like, he was a bit of a... His scapegoat there for a bit. It felt bit, like yeah. he was the one that was foul for a little bit. And then there's always someone else. And always seem to be a few wholesale changes there at the Bulldogs. And maybe that's just the way in which he... Luke Beveridge likes to keep his, his players on, on their toes. I, I, I don't a, know. Yeah. It's not a bad way of coaching. It's yeah. not a bad way of coaching. If you're going to get it, if you get the mix right and you get these young kids to come through and perform. So the Western Bulldogs in Essendon tomorrow night with Corbin Middlemouse, Kelly Underwood, Mick Moldhouse, Cameron Ling and the team. Tim Hodges on the boundary on ABC Radio, of course, and via the crisp sound of the ABC Listen app. Uh, no changes for the Giants. They're flying. Win Hager and Hugo Garcia to make his debut for the Saints. Sam Walsh is back for the Blues. So exciting to see him. Hamill and Gallant come in for Parnell and Burgess for the Crows. And uh, another debutant for the Cats with Connor O'Sullivan to make his debut on the weekend. The players are in position. We're ready to go. Brisbane leading by 30 points as we head into the second half. Here's Ben Cameron. Gorn and McInerney, they stare each other down. Players in readiness. Umpire Finlay lays it down. Gorn takes it out of the ruck, gets the opening clearance of the second half. A high ball lands in the middle of the ground. Tolstrup fists it down onto it. Brisbane. Neil picks it up, gives it to Dunkley. Kick to half forward. Cameron trying to slap it on to his own advantage. Bursts onto it, kicks into the pocket. Going up, Gardner can't mark. McDonald right there with him, trying to come left forward pocket here for the Lions. Just interesting, Sparrow starting on the bench for Melbourne and the centre bounce crew was Petrarca, Oliver and uh, Neil Viney. Bullen, I think. Was it Neil, oh, was it Neil Bullen? Bullen in there? He'll go forward and yep. Viney straight back onto the ball. So um, <laughs> they would have got a cook at halftime to say, boys, we need a lift. Dawn takes it out of the ruck, gives it straight to Viney. Dump kick beyond defensive 50. Onto it, Leicester. He'll snap the lines back inside 50. Pack forms. They go down everywhere. Coming through, Rayner can't gather. Let him up up. Billings for the Ds. Gives it off to Lever to Chandler. Now pass back towards Billings. Missed him. He'll get it, though, from Tom McDonald. And left half back. Looks around the members' side. Kicks towards Neil Bullen. Made body contact with Archie. Clears him and Dunkley gathers. Hand pass to Archie for Brisbane. Kicks up towards Hipwood. Nudged underneath. Lever juggles the mark. On the second bite, he claims it at left half back for Melbourne. Brisbane by 30 points. 
Jack Lever veers out to the right, kicks up the wing. Petty the target. In from the side, Petrarca takes the mark, bounds forward. Fritsch has space over the back. He runs onto the left forward pocket. Can't gather it cleanly. Just keeps it in play. Harris Andrews dropped off. He can chip it over the top. And Chandler kept running. He marks in the left forward pocket. And a chance for Melbourne to kick their third goal of the match and their first goal since the first quarter. It's probably a good, good option to have all the Melbourne forwards really high up the ground and then try and work back into the space. It sort of hasn't worked for them so far where they've had lead-up players coming at the football. So it was actually quite a smart tactic to have all the half forwards up the ground and then running back towards goal and then Chandler's so quick found some space. Deep in the left forward pocket, a handy player, Kay Chandler comes in and splits the middle, turns to the Melbourne fans at the Olympic stand and pumps his fist. A hard starter for the Demons in this third quarter, their first goal since the 16 minute mark of the opening term and it comes through Kay Chandler. His seventh goal of the season. Brisbane's lead is cut to 24 points. 7-4-46 to Melbourne. 3 4 22. Mark Murphy and Brent Harvey with you on ABC Sport. Well, there's one way you want to beat Harris Andrews. That's it's exactly what you said, Murph. Get him up because I was just watching him, man. Well, they've been going for two minutes. It looked like he was playing for about 40 minutes. He was loping. Yeah. He was going very, very slow and didn't really work. Oh, he, he was probably working hard, but he just had no speed. So that's a good matchup for the Melbourne Football Club with Fritsch on... Um, Harris Andrews. He had the head back, didn't he? Yeah, he sort was of swinging it side yeah. to side. Looked like that big guy off Happy Gilmore, the big arm. <laughs> the Larson. <laughs> yeah, it's the Larson. Is that Mr. Larson? There we go. <laughs> Those are Mr. Gilmore's clubs. Here you go, the lines out of the middle. Neil with the footy, chipping it inside 50. Danaher, through his hands it goes. Onto it, Rivers, spinning in a tackle. Shovels out a handball. Archie coming through, big collision. Where Woden tackles him, ball up to come. Half forward flank. Here for the Lions. How do you know that character's name off the top of your head, Murph? I've, I've probably watched Toby Gilmore 40 times, <laughs> 40, 50 times. Gorn winning the tap. Neil Sharks it, though, for the Lions. Snaps to the hot spot. Dana can't mark. Paddles it down cleverly. Rayner bursting through. Gives it to Cameron. Snaps from 40 for the immediate answer. He's got it. Lions with a quick reply. Or are they? I reckon Tom we'll McDonald might have got a hand on that. I think he's touched it. It's just whether it's over the line or not. It's pretty close, actually. So to the score review we go. Definitely touched it. Yeah. Clearly a touch, I reckon. Soft call is a goal. A uh, behind, rather. I think he's touched it in play, clearly. Not getting the post cam at the moment, which would be the pertinent view. Sometimes the players know Darcy Gardner kind of signaled that he thought it was touched. He was trying to block Tom McDonald out. Yep, she's touched. Yeah. So Brisbane do not get the instant reply. Fingertip from McDonald. So I've been watching Bailey Fritch. He's just trailing Harris Andrews wherever he's going. So that's the matchup that Melbourne want to try and expose. So he's currently almost playing like a defender forward. On Harris Andrews. And when it's time to, to go, here we'll go. 25 points, Brisbane's lead. McVee kicks in, never got to Stephen May. Mark is taken by Wilmont, turns and comes in more. Dane Zorko marks. Still two kicks out from goal. Melbourne fans aren't missing him for some of his attention off the ball. Zorko called to play on. Puts it into the pocket. Where are the flies? Rainer sets himself. Almost pinched it in front. He might have got it. Yeah. Was waiting for a defender to reach over and he just timed his leap superbly. And Cam Rayner, who's doing it all tonight, takes the mark in the right forward pocket. Gorn could get a hand to it. Yeah, he did. He just came from behind the stoppage and just and just slipped his opponent and no one marked him at all. He was running in front of Hipwood and May who were competing in front of him. In the right forward pocket, an electric opening quarter for Cam Rayner on a 45 degree angle. Looking for the answer back for the Brisbane Lions. Rayner comes in and misses to the left-hand side. Brisbane by 26 points at the six-minute mark of the third term. Oh, short kicking just gets to Oliver. He's able to kick laterally to May. On the arc of defensive 50, stabs it short to Oliver. Not the required distance. Handball back to May. Brisbane pressuring. May able to wait a kick. Marked by Billings. Gives it off to Viney. D's down the wing. Wilmot tackles him, holding the ball. Viney wanted to take him on. Pinged holding the ball. 
Brisbane back with it right beneath the members. Here goes Wilmot. Kicking the lines into the pocket. Cameron goes up early. Hands to it, Danaher. Roving Lohman. Handball to Rayner. Handball comes back to Rayner. He'll get on the left and snap to full forward. Mays there. Drops the mark. The lines are all there. Lohman. <laughs> he'll dribble it through. He thought about giving the handball over the top. Then decided to finish himself. And Brisbane do cancel out that early Melbourne goal. And they're back out by an equal game high, 32. 8 6 54 plays 3 4 22. Mark Murphy, Brent Harvey. It was just a goal on the back of pressure. Yeah, it was. Wasn't it, Burma? Yep. They're just refusing to let up on any uncontested marks and go back to, to Viney down here trying to do the fend on Wilmot. He didn't buy any of it. Turnover. And it's just that they feel like they're just under the pump at every opportunity here, in Melbourne. And that's just due to, pre to the pressure that Brisbane are just chasing, harassing, that's refusing to give an easy possession. And then just smarts there from, from Lyman to. To one get front and centre and then to almost draw the handball over the top and to go underneath his Melbourne defender. Yeah, it was smart, smart little full craft. Yeah, it was very smart play. Two goals last week for Kyle Lohman. Also kicked 30 goals in the VFL last year, so knows where they are. Brisbane answer the challenge. Gorn wins down the tap, but straight to Dunkley. Kicks down the middle for the Brisbane Lions. Danaher meets it on the bounce. Hand pass away to Bailey. Ridden into the turf by Petrarca. Spills out the way McVie. Hand pass to Lever to May. Melbourne's hand passing a lead. All that took a tackle. Run down by Perry holding the ball. A great chase from Jared Perry. I can only assume Clayton Oliver didn't get a hand pass away successfully in the eyes of the umpire. And Zorko takes it for Brisbane. Switches through the middle of the ground to Answorth. Now out wider still to Fletcher. He marks it left half forward for the Brisbane Lions. The Lions by 32 points. Inboard to Zorko, not 15. Kicks over the head of Lowman and the mark is taken by Rivers. In the right back pocket for Melbourne. That's 8-1 to one inside 50s already this quarter in the first 7 or 8 minutes. Short kick from Rivers. Away to House. Here on the defensive arc. One goal apiece though for all of that. Ascendancy the way of the Lions. Howes with the kick up to a contest on the wing. Down in front. Fletcher there for the Lions. Handball to Wandsworth. Handball to Bailey. Forward now again towards McCluggage. Kick inside 50. Can't find a target. McDonald picks it up. Gang tackle. Bracketed by a couple of Lions. And driven over the boundary line for a throw in. Another inside 50. 9-1. So... Surely, eventually, the dam will burst, doesn't it, Boomer? It certainly does, and it wasn't a great kick in by Zorko into that 50 then, but McDonald picks up the ball and straight away two forwards for Brisbane, tackle him, get the ball out of bounds and give themselves another opportunity. Van Roy into the rock, tapped it down, Lohman to Dunkley, kicks towards the teeth of goal, Gardner gathers, trying to brush the tackle of May, brought down by Langdon, kicks it out, and surely that's out on the full, a free kick going the way of Melbourne in the right back pocket. And almost got around Stephen May. So the free kick going the way of Ed Langdon who plays on. He runs around the boundary line in the right back pocket at the city end. Kicks up towards Ben Brown and Van Royen but in from the side. The mark is taken by Harris Andrews. Turns into the middle of the ground. Dunkley takes the mark straight through the middle. Cameron on the lead. And Melbourne are caught flat footed. With so much space for Charlie Cameron to lead up into. And House could do a little bit watch as the small forward takes the mark. That's a different type of pressure on the ball. Dunkley had three or four seconds then Murph to turn off the mark, look up. You can't stop it. No, no defender in the competition is going to stop Charlie Cameron if there's no pressure on the ball. No, and Melbourne just on the on the way out too, actually in their D50. They're just not getting a good enough contest. Can't even get the, the ball to ground. So straight away Brisbane are coming off a short pitch and attacking. One goal one tonight for Charlie Cameron as he crosses through 50 from directly in front. It's out to the right-hand side and Stephen May punches it through for a minor score. Brisbane by 33 points at the 11-minute mark of the third term. The biggest lead of the match so far. They are just leaving the door slightly ajar at the moment, though. For all of their ascendancy. Haven't made the D's heard on the scoreboard. May with the kick in. Runs to the left back pocket, kick up to the wing. Off the hands of Payne, Wilmot picks it up for the Lions. Handball to Fletcher, back to Payne. Chips a kick, good kick. Mark taken by Dunkley. He's been good all night, Dunkley. He's had another great start to this quarter. That's his sixth possession. Chips it over the top and Lohman runs onto it. 55 out, very wide out on a half-forward flank. 
Kai Lohman sets it up to the hot spot. Looking for a marker. Hipwood hands to it. Down at ground level. The D's there through Oliver. Handball to Lever. Spins into a couple of tackles. And a ball up to come. Full forward here for the Lions. They lead by a game high 33. Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. 11 to 1. The inside 50s. Brisbane's way in this third quarter. Hipwood doing the ruck work against Van Roy and it spills down to Cameron. Tried to evade the tackler, didn't get a disposal away. Spills to Oliver for Melbourne. Hound pass to Sparrow. High kick towards halfback. Petrarca couldn't get a hand to it. Berry keeps it alive. Hand pass to Wilmot. Good sidestep. Jams it on the left boot. Long towards the goal mouth. Spoiled down by Van Roy and Lohman can't gather. Was he tackled when he didn't have it by Rivers? It spills out. Neil under pressure. Can't get a clean hand pass away. Sparrow brought down by Gardner. Umpire says throw it in. Right forward pocket for the Brisbane Lions. It's camped inside the Brisbane forward 50 at the city end. The Lions by 33 points. And they look really safe behind the ball as well. They've got a spare sitting out the back by themselves. So no fast play here. Murphy's going to probably help the, the Demons. Umpire brings it in. Hipwood and Van Royen. Van Royen winning the tap to the front. May coming through. Buffeted off the footy. McCluggage comes through. Dribbles a kick to the goal square. Follows up. Suckers it through. From the goal square, his second. And finally, Brisbane take toll of all of their advantage. They're out by 39 points. 9-7-61 plays, 3-4-22. 13 minutes into the third term. Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. Mark Murphy, Brent Harvey. Well, it was only a matter of time, wasn't it, Boomer? 12 inside 50s to 1 so far to Melbourne, Brisbane. They just have been all over them. Every time that Melbourne get an opportunity to get the ball out of D50, it's like hitting a brick wall. They're set up so well behind the footy. What I've really enjoyed is Darcy Gardner's work down there. He just creates contests and pressures and tackles and gets the ball to ground. Whenever Brisbane have the opportunity to go long, he's always there buffering in, not allowing that third man to come across, which is what Melbourne are really known for, and that's how they get a lot of their, their scoring chains going from their D50. They just can't get it going at the moment. The voice of Mark Murphy with you on ABC Sport. Petrarca bursting out of the middle. Sparrow dumped in a tackle. Didn't see Answorth coming. It was a hospital hand pass. And uh, Tom Sparrow slowly gets to his feet. Every possession in the midfield is having to be earned at the moment for Melbourne. Gorn's back on the ground against McInerney. McInerney taps it down towards Rayner. He battles at ground level and the ball can't be extracted with... Tajoy Woden on the very bottom of the pack, just to the left of the centre circles. Umpire throws it up. Gorn knocks it down. Brisbane trying to extract it through Neil and Answorth, but Chandler's on the very bottom of the pack, and the umpire will ball it up once more. You never want to say to Melbourne that they're out of the football game, but when you've kicked two goals, three goals, halfway through the third quarter, and you've got a, you're 39 points down, it's a, it's a big deficit. Sparrow with the clearance towards half forward. Wilmot keeping it in front of himself. Tolstrup coming through, stripped to the footy. Brisbane back in possession. Answorth's handball straight to Windsor. Melbourne back with it. Handball to Petrarca. Looping handball. Off to Chandler. Back to Windsor. Running shot on the left. This would be special. He can't finish. 39 points. Brisbane's lead. Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. Midway through the third turn. Lester in to Harris Andrews, who takes the mark in the right back pocket for Brisbane. Co-captain looks to come inboard. Wilmont takes the mark. 40 metres out from his defensive goal. At the punt road end. Short to Lockie Neal in game 250. The dual Brownlow medalist. Hand pass away to Answorth. His hand is uh, hemmed in. Has to return back by hand to Neal up to the wing. Hipwood charged the pack. Made the contact. Was taken high. Sported away from Petrarca. Down to Berry. Kicks up towards McInerney. Gone in front. Hand pass missed the intended target. Picked off by Rayner of Brisbane. Kicks up towards McCarthy who tries to fly early. Surely a free kick. No whistle. Well, Woden's wondering where the whistle was. Lohman gathers. Hand pass to Bailey. Hand pass to Berry. Looks inside 50. Can he get to Fletcher? He can't. And the mark is taken by Billings in the right back pocket for Melbourne. That's a worry cap like wasn't it? <laughs> Hands on the shoulders and yeah. hunt there. Took a seat in his shoulders. <laughs> did get a hand to it, which gave him more credit than what I did. 38 points, Brisbane's lead. Langdon in the back pocket, rolling with the Adam Uze style. Rolled up sleeves where you can see the white bit on the end of it. Kicking up to the wing. No one able to mark there. Melbourne have the numbers through Van Royen. Ample to Billings to Viney, running by McVie. 
He'll kick long out in front of Tolstrup. He drops the mark, getting back though. Sarsovic, Tolstrup tries to follow up. Misses his soccer, now it bounces inside attacking 50. The Lions get back and hold it up. They'll get a ball up, 45 out from the attacking goal for the Ds. Uh, uh, Melbourne are going to have to take some risks very shortly, Murph, because they wait to three-quarter time. I think they're going to be out of the game. They, they had an opportunity then to switch. Maybe Langley could use his legs a little bit more, but chose not to go down the line. You know Harris Andrews is going to be there. Yeah. Gorn trying to take another rock. He's pinged, holding the ball as McInerney laid the tackle. And a win for the big O. It's one of the premium ruckmen in the competition, and McInerney has it in the left back pocket. Looks out towards Lohman, who takes the mark. He's come to life in this third quarter. Kicked a goal. Has a left half back for the Brisbane Lions. Bill on the SMS, 0437 774 774. Zansworth has it at left half back. Kicks long up the wing. Gorn's waiting just for that kick. Dees looking shambolic. Lions taking uncontested pat marks. Dees kick in is going to Brisbane's advantage every time. Oh, Aaron Hamble, though, from Bailey, turns it over for Brisbane. Now quickly Melbourne back the other way. Here's Petrarca. He likes a vacant goal square. He shanks his kick into the pocket. And sliding back there, Lester Marks. These players everywhere with their hands out saying, what was that? Yeah, it probably sums up their night, to be honest with you, for Melbourne. That's their, their best player who's just should have just had some composure and waited for his troops to get get down and create some options instead just dropping the barrel from about 80 metres. Thought he could kick it. <laughs> thought he could kick it a mile. Now yeah, you're always a good judge, Boomer. Was that just a little selfish? That one was a little bit. Decision wasn't right. Can I say that? <laughs> Aligns by 38 points. Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. 18 minutes into the third. We know most forwards think they can kick from 80 metres yeah. out, but uh, he probably just had to bide his time there. Neil kicks up towards Archie. Tom McDonald was downed off the ball. McCarthy with a hand pass to Perry. Broke the tackle of Tom McDonald. Hand pass out in front of Rayner. Can't quite reel it in. And it trickles out of play in front of he and Van Royen for a boundary throw in. Just the little things, Evan. Just then McDonald's just missing a tackle, just putting one arm to tackle. It, they sort of just, it, it spreads when you're not attacking the fo footy at the... We're not hungry enough, and I don't reckon they've been hungry at all tonight, Melbourne. Mark Murphy with you on ABC Sport. Brisbane have had almost double the contested possessions in this third quarter. Unable to break away Chandler as he locked up by Noah Answorth, and the umpire will throw it in the air once more. Gorn and McInerney tangle off hands. It spills out towards Viney. Bailey tried to throw a boot at, a boot at it. Viney put his head over it and won the footy. There's no easy ball to be claimed at the moment, and he's locked up just between wing and half forward. For the Brisbane Lions, Gorn wins down the tap, wins are dragged off it, didn't have the footy, spills out the way of Zach Bailey for Brisbane, hand pass to Zorko, kicks it into the right forward pocket, charging out Tom McDonald, good mark, takes it just inside the field of play, and Darcy Gardner just casually stumbles into his back after he claimed the mark. <laughs> Very professionally yeah, clumsy. clumsy. Yeah. <laughs> McDonald with the kick. Up towards Gorn, up he goes, can't take the mark, Viney's there to rove though, dumps it on his left boot, kicks water the wing, off the hands of Petty, down at ground level, Chandler onto it, straight into a tackle, spills it out, Neil Bullen comes and picks it up, holding the ball, Chandler. Free kick going to Froggy Lester of the Lions. Yeah, he's been important, he's come from nowhere the last, um, the last year and a little bit, He's he's been fantastic. He's one of those players that can lock down a really, really good player and let Darcy Wilmot go to work and yep. run off. Playing his 185th game tonight. I mentioned last week that he did his first radio interview post-game last week as Payne kicks up the towards kidding. the wing. <laughs> off hands out of play. No joke. Up in Brisbane with our, our team up there. Did the post-game interview and said, this is actually the first time I've done a post-game radio interview wow. after 170-odd games. Wow. Wowzers. Lauren Borden on the boundary. Eric Hipwood came to the bench after that heavy collision when he hit the deck. He had some pain kills and told Chris Fagan he's all good to go on, but still sitting on the bench waiting to get back on the field. Thank you, Loz. Brisbane through Josh Dunkley. Squeeze the kick forward. Mark taken by Bailey. He's almost within range. He runs inside 50, sends it towards the teeth of goal. It won't reach Charlie Cameron. And Jasper Fletcher with Ed Langdon marking at the top of the defensive goal square. City end of the MCG, Brisbane by 38 points. You've got to give Brisbane credit here. Like, every time they've they've won the footy, Melbourne, outlets are covered. So defensively, Brisbane have been so solid. So they just haven't been able to get that first one, which then creates some overlap. And then that's when the players can work hard and try and create some 
uncontested marks. They just haven't got it all night. Howes kicking up to the wing, coming through Van Royen, punches it away from Starsevich and out of play for a throw-in beneath the great southern stand. Lines by 38 points. And you're spot on, Murph. That's a win there for Brisbane. You've you've got them to kick the ball down the line and their own players punch it out of bounds. Yep. It's a stop-start game with five and a half minutes to go over the third quarter. Melbourne need to score, so that's a huge win. McInerney winning the tap down, soccering it forward. Wilmot towards half forward for Brisbane. No one able to gather it cleanly. Oliver can. He's always clean. Picks it up. Releases Windsor with the handball. He zigs and zags around a couple. Takes a running bounce. Chips it short. Clever little kick. Tolstrup marks. 49 and a half out. Does he look to pass it off or either goals? And it looks like he'll go back and maybe have a look. They're pointing at the sticks. Yeah, the family's in the stand. They're all pointing at the goals. They don't want to. They don't, they don't want him to pass it. No. Be a nice kick from here, though. He'll have to kick this 55, 56 metres, won't he? What a cult figure type haircut, too. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of soul glow about that. Yep, <laughs> just soul glow. They boot the ball from just beyond the arc. Colton Tolstrup. His set shot is out to the left. Had the leg, not the accuracy. 37 points, Brisbane's lead, 22 and a half minutes into the third term. Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. Demons needed a spark and just couldn't quite deliver it there as Hawke goes straight down the middle to Bailey. Chips it to Jack Payne, who marks in the right back pocket for Brisbane. Back to Bailey, still 30 metres out from his defensive goal. He's able to work it to Wilmot. Brisbane playing a chip mark game as he works it back to Zorko. Stepped off his line. Umpire gives him the benefit of the doubt. Zorko works it around Van Roy and up to Cameron. Gives the hand pass back to Zorko. Brisbane just moving it with ease as he kicks up towards Link McCarthy. He marks it left half forward. Looks towards Cal Archie or Danaher on the lead. And Joe Danaher takes the mark. In the left forward pocket, Brisbane able to transition it from their defensive 50 to their forward 50. And finishes in the hands of Big Joe. Yeah, it's a training drill, that. It was, not it? Yeah, that's, uh, that was way too easy for a, a slow play, which they obviously had the, the shot at goal then, Melbourne, to be able to allow one straight up the guts and then just to work their way through by just easy change of angle, uncontested mark football and a final lead up forward. Pretty slack from Melbourne. Five marks for Joe Danaher. Kicked two goals in the opening quarter. Sets flight from outside 50 and just squeezes it in. For a minor score to the left. From kickouts, there's only about five percent of your total score come from your kickouts, and that was you mentioned chain and drill. That's what it looked like, wasn't it? They controlled the football yeah. the whole way up the ground. They weren't rushed. There was no pressure on them. McVee taking the kick in to the hands of Gorn. Does, Gorn doesn't mark it again down at ground level. Mays caught holding the ball, and Brisbane back in possession. Their pressure's been elite this quarter, oh. Murph. It's been unbelievable. And they lead by 38 points. Hungry for more. Lohman with the free kick. Comes infield to Neil. Game 250. And one of only 16 dual Brownlow medalists. Chips it short to Danaher. On the run. Likes his chances from 55. It'll go into the pocket though. Underneath it, Hipwood. Bringing it down to ground level. Cameron sharks the Oliver handball. And snaps a wonderful goal. Like all good small forwards. He was on the prowl. His second, and Brisbane are looking like the Lions of old. They're out by 44 points, 10 8, 68 plays, 3 6, 24, 25 minutes into the third. Mark Murphy, Brent Harvey. Well, you're going to see, by the way, in which players were celebrating behind the ball, and when Charlie Cameron got his hands on the footy there and kicked the goal, all fist pumping, all get around him, each other. They look like they're all on the same page tonight, Brisbane. They've just outworked and outhunted and outwanted the footy today. and Boomer's just ruined my third quarter analysis here because I was going to give you a bit of an inside 50 <laughs> update. And then it's 17 to 5 inside 50s Ooh. in this third quarter. It's a Brisbane. It's huge, isn't it? That's playing the game in your forward half, Murph. It's, that's where you want the ball. You can set up your defence and, and work from there. And you look at Harrison Petty, Ben Brown. They haven't touched it in this quarter. It's barely been down there. Viney gets the clearance. Hand pass to Rivers in the middle of the ground. Hand pass to Gorn. Shovels it forward to Matraka. Tackle. Gets it away. Falstrup almost brought down. He is on the second time. Holding the ball. And the young Colt just couldn't quite break his way through. And Stasevich takes the free kick for the Brisbane Lions. But if I tell you what they have done, their, their tackling pressure has been elite. 
but their tackles have been superb. They're, yeah. they're holding their tackles. There's been some really big tackles. Their last goal came on the back of a, a Lerman tackle. Out to Answorth, who kicks from left half back up the wing at clears hipwood. And Tom McDonald takes the mark. Turns and comes inboard. Stephen May just has to step around the umpire as he takes the mark in the middle of the MCG. Switching it out onto the member's side. McVeet marks. Now wider still to Billings. He's got a couple of metres on Berry. Gives it off to the runner, Woi Woden. Right to the 50. Sends it on goal. It'll go to the goal square and bounce into the post. Ben Brown down there in a wrestle with pain. Just on those tackles too. Boomer Brisbane leading the tackle count 69 to 44. So not only are they winning the ball and getting their hands dirty with possession, the Lions are out tackling and out working. It's been very noticeable. Mark Murphy, the 300 game champion from the Blues, and Brent Harvey, the game's record holder. Your experts on ABC Sport tonight. Jared Berry long towards Charlie Cameron, who got up early before acceptances. Couldn't come down with the mark. He then lays the bump on Clayton Oliver, who got rid of the ball, and he's a bit worse for wear. Clary. And Stephen May will take the advantage. Kicks into the middle of the ground. Rivers marks. Has Langdon on the far side of the centre square. Chips it out in that direction. Brown on the lead. Fritch in the pocket. Looking for the options. Goes for Petty. Can't take the mark. Stasevich makes the spoil. Brisbane have won all the key contests on the ground and in the air. And a boundary throw in the right forward pocket for the Demons. Brisbane by 43 points. 10-8-68. To Melbourne, 3 7 25. Gorn and McInerney. Gorn in front, able to win the tap. Following up, though, McInerney picks it up, gives it off to Archie. He dumps it on the boot. It'll bounce just in play. Umpire Nichols will say deliberate. Ooh, almost the Bronx cheers coming from the Melbourne fans. Feel like they're finally getting a free kick. McVee goes back towards the logo. I'll leave a marks just in front of it. Brisbane by 43, kicks across the square. McDonald goes more direct, inside 50, in the fridge direction, bounces over the back, free kick. Going the way of Harris Andrews. Brisbane at full back. They lead by 43 points. Matt Clinch, Ben Cameron, Mark Murphy, Brent Harvey, Lauren Borden between the benches. As Harris Andrews puts it up towards the wing. Joe Danaher has worked his way down. Tom McDonald reaches over the top, spoils it away. Rayner reels it in, but he's taken over the boundary line by Billings. So Brisbane with three goals to one so far in this third quarter. The Lions having led by 14 points at quarter time by 30 at half time. Currently leading by 43. They got out by as much as 44 in this third quarter. But the Demons a bit lost for answers tonight. As Gorn slaps it down to Chandler. Kicks into the pocket looking for Fritch. It bounces in front of him and goes out of play as the siren sounds for three quarter time. So back in round 18 last year. Brisbane led by 22 points with seven minutes to go before Melbourne came rattling home. It would be a miracle if they could do something similar tonight. The Lions have completely outplayed them with Brisbane leading by 43 points. 10-8-68 to Melbourne, 3-7-25. Despite the Lions having lost 15 of their last 16 matches here at the MCG. For the Lions, two goals to Danaher, McCluggage, Cameron and Hipwood. Individuals for Lohman and Fletcher. Well, for the Demons, they managed just uh, one goal since the opening quarter. Neil Bullen, Fritch and Chandler are their goal scorers. Great to have your company for Thursday Night Footy on ABC Sport, on ABC Radio, ABC News Radio, ABC Sport Digital. And don't forget, streaming on the ABC Listen app. Just look for the AFL button. So, what makes us Australian? Just be whoever you want to be. And who's the obvious person to ask how that's transforming? Welcome to Broken Hill, Miriam. I'm on a quest to learn what it takes to change and adapt. Occupation. I'm actually an escort. Oh, an influencer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Miriam Margulies, Impossibly Australian. You are changing the world. Starts Tuesday, April 9 on ABC TV and always free, always entertaining on ABC iView. This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL season. Every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. Fritch has space over the back. He runs onto the left forward pocket. Can't gather it cleanly. Just keeps it in play. Harris Andrews dropped off. He can chip it over the top. And Chandler kept running. He marks in the left forward pocket. Deep in the left forward pocket. A handy player. Kay Chandler comes in and splits the middle. 
turns to the Melbourne fans and the Olympics down and pumps his fist. Campbell comes back to Rayner. He'll get on the left and snap to full forward. Mays there. Drops the mark. The lines are all there. Lyman, he'll dribble it through. And Brisbane do cancel out that early Melbourne goal. And they're back out by an equal game high 32. Umpire brings it in. Hipwood and Van Royen. Van Royen winning the tap to the front. May coming through, buffeted it off the footy. McCluggage comes through. Dribbles a kick to the goal square. Follows up, suckers it through. You never want to say to Melbourne that they're out of the football game, but when you kick three goals halfway through the third quarter and you've got a, you're 39 points down, it's a, it's a big deficit. To Danaher, on the run, likes his chances from 55. It'll go into the pocket, though, underneath it, Hipwood, bringing it down to ground level. Cameron sharks the Oliver handball and snaps a wonderful goal. The 2024 AFL Premiership season. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. Break on the time at the MCG. The Brisbane Lions lead Melbourne by 43 points. 10 8 68 to the Demons 3 7 25. Matt Clinch and Ben Cameron call the action. Lauren Borden down on the boundary to start round five of the AFL. Thoughts of Mark Murphy and Brent Harvey, your experts on ABC Sport. How impressed have you been? with the Brisbane Lions statement tonight. It's, it's been a good statement, hasn't it? Um, I know Murph will probably touch on, we, we've been talking about the inside 50s that quarter, but Murph was on the back of their pressure. Mm. And we spoke briefly about their tackling and their tackles that they've actually stuck and got dropping the ball for, for their tackles. It's their pressure. When, when um, Melbourne are, are just out and you think, oh, they've got a clear kick, there's a Brisbane player just pushing them in the back or pushing them in the hip. Just gives enough pressure for Harris Andrews to, to read the ball um, the, the, the backs to read the ball a little bit better put themselves in a better position so I've been really impressed with their pressure and when the ball's been stuck in their forward line for so long they've been able to set up their backs as well and it's just mm. the ball goes out the ball comes back in they've had so many repeat 50s on the back of forward pressure and pressure in general so I think they've been fantastic tonight and um, what was it at the, the first 12 minutes it was 12 inside 50s to 1 mm. and for the quarter 17 to 9. It's a, it's dominant, isn't it? It's dominant. And it's, for Simon Goodwin, I mean, you know, really disappointing the start of that third quarter when there would have been no doubt there would have been a, a few hard conversations you would have thought to a few of his senior players who are, are absolute stars in their own right that they would have come out and, and actually showed a bit of hunger, a bit, a bit of aggression around the contest. And we're just saying off, off air, we haven't really seen a, a 10 minute period where Melbourne have been dominant mm. tonight. And, and that's pretty, that's unfortunate to say because. They've just been outworked all night. And to Brisbane's credit, they've come here and want to get the job done. And you could see that from the first bounce that they actually really wanted to achieve something tonight. And uh, they haven't played their best footy at all this, this year. And they've played in patches, but tonight they've been just comprehensively too strong for Melbourne. They've been beaten everywhere. And we, we talk about numbers, and a lot of times we say it's not about the possessions and stuff like that. But when you've got, when you've got Viney, 15... Langdon, you know, he runs up and down the, the wing all night, 14. Petrarca, 14. Oliver, 14. You're not used to seeing that no. with uh, with Melbourne. And then you, you flip to the other side really quickly. You've got Dunkley, 24. Zorko is playing off a little bit of half-back, so he rack, racks it up a little bit, 21. Rayner, who had an amazing start, 21. Lockie Neal's up to 21. Berry's 20. Zach Bailey, who floats through. McCluggage, 17. Yep. They're, they've just been dominant. They've... Melbourne haven't been able to get their hands on the footy inside the contest. And like you said, and they if you don't win the inside, no. you don't get the ball on the outside. No, and they, and they haven't been first to the footy and they haven't pressured enough being second to the footy either. So they haven't tried to turn the ball over by tackling or, or the next man in coming and wrapping the ball up. It's been too easy for Brisbane to get their hands on the football and release to a teammate. And you're seeing that with the numbers that we're getting at the moment. When you're looking at the clearance, Differential with Brisbane being 38 to Melbourne 23. That's an area of the game that I thought going into tonight yep. that would have been Melbourne's bread and butter. Agree. And when you've had 66 more possessions, they've had uh, the the Brisbane Lions. Normally the tackle count is the other way, 69 to 46. You mentioned that halfway through that third quarter. They've been out tackled. They've been outplayed. They've been out everything tonight. And uh, you'd like to think they don't give up, though, Murph. They've kicked three goals for the game. You'd like to think they just. Throw the throw caution to the wind now and 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 play with some risk. Three seven twenty five is Melbourne's lowest score at three quarter time since the COVID years back in round four 2020 against Geelong. Into the final turn we go. 
Bounce in the middle, spills out Mackin in his way, wins down the top, but it's Petrarca who gets the clearance courtesy of a hand pass from Rivers. Kicks inside 50, Harris Andrews takes the mark. 40 metres out from his defensive goal. He's been good tonight, the co-captain of the Brisbane Lions. Called to play on, he looks one way and then the other. Hand pass around the back to Stasevic who kicks out wide to Dunkley. He takes the mark despite the late pressure from Christian Petrarca at left half back. And Brisbane don't need to change up anything they're doing so far tonight. Keep finding the free, change angles. Melbourne need to go hard and fast. Dunkley called to play on, kicks up towards McCarthy who crashes into the back of Lever, brings it down to the front. Langdon gathers, hand pass to Chandler around the members wing, kicks up towards Ben Brown in a wrestle with Payne, spills down to the front. Answorth gathers for Brisbane, turns and kicks it straight back from where it came, but Lever was waiting for that kick. He marks five metres behind Camarena and takes the mark for Melbourne. Wants to go with the switch into the middle of the ground. There might be 50. Hipwood bundling over McDonald. Umpire not buying it. McDonald spears a pass to Clayton Oliver. Wearing the glove, has that finger issue. He'll send it long. Inside 50, deep forward 50 entry. Ben Brown sticks out the inspector gadget arms and marks. 25 out directly in front. Well, that's what Ben Brown's actually got to do. He's got to run and jump at the ball. He's playing on pain and... If you get into a wrestle with him, you're probably not going to win Ben Brown. So what he just done then, he came at the football, he ran, he launched forward at the football and, and marked it in front of him. That's his go. He's done that for a very, very long time. That's when he plays his best football. On that very long run-up. Virtually right back in the middle of the MCG. Into a canter now. A little more of a trot. Building into a run. 30 out directly in front. Gives the D's some hope. Back to 37 points. 4-7-31 move, Melbourne. Brisbane, 10-8-68. Mark Murphy, our 300 gamer. And Brent Harvey, the game's record holder. Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. Give him a chance still, Benny. <laughs> oh, I'm glass half full kind of okay, guy, good. Boomer. No, to come, just making sure they kick four for the game. They need to kick another seven Six. without Brisbane scoring. Yeah, I'm probably glass half empty tonight unfortunately <laughs> and they've tried to put a little bit of pace as well inside with rivers going on ball which is a good little change i think just try and change something up uh, absolutely and, and we spoke about the pace with with salem going down and pickett not in the team they, they had to try something so uh, that's a that's a move let's let's see what rivers can do can he break the line and kick the ball in the 50 for us it's been a quiet night for some of melbourne's key forwards ben brown alongside van royan petty brown on the board now tonight Back in the middle of the ground. Gorn one down the tap, but straight to McCluggage. Kicks Brisbane up towards half forward. McCarthy tries to slap it to his own advantage. Got past Oliver. Too easy. Head pass to Bailey. Into the open. Goal mouth and slams through the response. Zach Bailey with his first and Brisbane with the immediate answer. Back out to 43 points. The Lions 11-8-74 to Melbourne 4-7-31. Three and a half minutes gone, final turn. How many inches just come out of that glass, Benny? <laughs> <laughs> Two. Two. <laughs> okay. One more. One more we need. That well, was a perfect response, wasn't it? Yeah. I, was, I was looking to see, obviously, Rivers playing inside the centre square band. Who was going to be the mid that would fall out? There was Clayton Oliver who was, was down there. He's been down there a little bit this, during that third quarter, and he started there in this last, but... He's like a little bit of a bit out of depth down there and his halfback flank and Bailey just had that smarts and just didn't run towards the contest and snuck out of the back. It was footy smarts, wasn't it? You know that Oliver is not there to defend really, is he? No. He's there to try to win the football and you're right, that's that, that's forward craft there. Send your opponent to the contest, Murph. You can just sniff a little win and you get forward on him. Crooked bounce in the middle. Kick two great goals in the grand final, Zach Bailey. Cam Rayner has fought, uh, fallen behind on world record pace. Only nine inside 50. He's had seven in the first term. 16 in a game is the most ever. And Royan following up at ground level after the restart. Gives it off to Viney. Kick to half forward. Payne attacking it. Defensive mark at centre half back. Kicks laterally. The kick will find Fletcher. Marking on the half back flank. Kicks around the body. Out towards the wing. Danaher gathers on the bounce. He'll kick up forward of the wing. Looking for... Dunkley up there. Van Royen comes and punches it away. Loose footy. Gardner slaps it on. It'll stay in play. Bailey will arrive. McVie beats him to it and carries it out of play. McVie throwing to come. Did see on the big screen Neil Danaher in attendance. Of course, the uncle of Joe and big Melbourne man after coaching the D's in the early 2000s. 
Lions by 43, five minutes played in the fourth. It's incredible, isn't it? To see the Reverend in the house given his life expectancy with motor neuron disease. He continues to fight on and, and do such a great effort with King's birthday and what's that's become McCluggage for Brisbane. Half past the Zorko pump, but he got a kick away into the pocket underneath the Tom McDonald. And by teams that went 15, so he marks in the left back pocket for Melbourne. Brisbane by 43 points. As McDonald looks to switch play all the way back to Stephen May, who marks on the last line of defence. He'll kick out to the members' side, where Billings has a couple of metres as he marks in front of Cam Rayner. Turns and looks around the members' wing. Can't get it to Alex Newbull, and then Darcy Gardner chops in and takes the mark for Brisbane. It's unusual to see this many skill errors from Melbourne. Brisbane's pressure has been enormous. They've won so many of the key statistics throughout the night. As Berry looks up towards half forward, Rayner up, can't take the mark against Neil Bullen. He drags it in, Neil Bullen has to be careful. He's taken over the boundary line by Answorth, and the umpire says to throw it in. Well, what would you do with the sub right now, Murph? Do you give the young fella a, a go now that you're so far up, not going to lose the game? Do you take off one of your stars? Of course, one of those stars don't want to come off, by the way. You're not taking off uh, Lockie Neal in his 250th. No, he came off last week as the no. sub. Umpire brings it in to the front. Goes Van Royen, takes it out of the ruck. Cold turnover, though. Brisbane back with it. Handball from a cluggage of turnover. Free kick. It'll go the way in the end of a fend Brisbane. Off. Yeah, fend off. My fend off. I'd get the young fellow a run. Yeah, I'd get him on right now. Get him out there. Tunstall. So Dunkley will get the free kick. 55 out. Half forward here for Brisbane. Sets it up towards full forward. Up they go. McCarthy launching at the back gardener. Gathers on the bounce. Gorn wraps him up in a big bear hug. Ball up, 15 out. 43 points, Brisbane's lead. Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. Throw it up, Gorn, McInerney, Tangle. In fact, it was Gardner who did the ruck work. Comes down the way of Viney. Out pass to Oliver to Neil Bullen. Just got away from Charlie Cameron. Kicks to Windsor. Opens up the field in front of him. Away he goes, the dashing wingman. Two bounces as he gets the centre wing. Three bounces as he runs the Shane Warne side. No one will catch him, but he turns it straight over. And Thalstall and Brown, he missed both of them, and Starsevich takes the mark, chips it to the top of the arc, the defensive 50 arc, and McCluggage marks. So all the blood rush to the brain as he is charging forward. He kicks out to McCarthy, who marks it left half back. McCarthy comes infield to Neil, gives the handball back to his great mate. McCarthy chips around the corner, and the mark taken in front of us by Dunkley between the interchange gates, chips it over the top to Rayner. They're just working harder off the ball, Murph. Just those little possessions that they probably shouldn't be getting. Melbourne are just trailing, and Brisbane are working super, super hard. Here is an inside 50 for Rayner. A shallow inside 50 right to the arc. Gorn in front of the pack. Juggles down the mark. So a tenth inside 50 for Rayner. Needs six to equal the record. That's probably the... long odds, isn't it? Yeah. He's on world record pace in that first quarter. Kicks up towards Van Royen, who's in a wrestle, and Harris Andrews takes the mark. Turns and chips it into the middle of the ground, where Stasevich marks. And looks to swing it out to the Shane Warne stand side, where he can go laterally out to Leicester. Takes the mark and looks wider still. Fletcher has space. So many uncontested marks for Brisbane. Kicks up towards Darcy Gardner, who leads up. Marks on his chest, out to the right, 50 from home. McCarthy leads into space, it won't get to him. The mark is taken by Taj Wawoten of Melbourne in the left back pocket. Brisbane by 43 points. Some questions coming through on the SMS around whether this is concerning for Melbourne or will they be all right come the business end, Boomer? Oh, I think it's tonight's a little bit concerning because if other teams are watching, which I'm sure they certainly will be, it might be a blueprint. Oh, and they do. I mean, personnel is part of it as well. They do get Cosy Pickett. I think that changes a lot for Melbourne. So... It is a little concerning, though. They're working it down the southern wing here. Petrarca, clean pickup. Fires a handball to Fritch. At half forward, centering ball. Langdon goes up. Spoils his teammate and getting back Answorth there for Brisbane. Fires a kick to Fletcher. Marks on the halfback flank. Gives it off to Answorth, running by again. Gets past Petrarca. He'll kick up to the wing. Brown comes up. He marks for Melbourne. Lines by 43. I do see an interesting name on the list in terms of most inside 50s in a game. One Brent Harvey with 14 back in 2000. Well, what was the record? 15. 16. 16, yeah. Must have come off a three-quarter time. <laughs> <laughs> Brisbane around the wing. 
as Leicester kicks it up towards McCarthy. Can't take the mark, but gathers. Hand pass to the runner, Bailey. Between wing and half forward, Charlie Cameron in the lead. Takes the mark, bursts away from Lever. Catch me if you can. <laughs> Into the open goal goes Charles. As he puts through his third. And he is lighting up the MCG in Brisbane season. The slow start for 2024. And Charlie Cameron with his two front teeth is smiling like a Cheshire cat. Brisbane lead by 49 points, 12.880 to Melbourne, 4 7 31. Uh, poor Jakey Lever, oh. just uh, deep in defence against Charlie Cameron and just the old sneaky little look over the shoulder to see who was on him and mm. took the grab about 40 out and thought, well, yep, I'm just going to take off here and run straight towards goal. A very Brent Harvey thing to do, yeah. that actually. It was <laughs> what I was thinking too. It was like the roadrunner. That reminded me of the road. Do you remember that one? Yeah, yeah. Bit, beep, beep. yeah. He just looked around and said, it's just Jake Lever. I'm going to, yeah, nah, not, you're not catching me, mate. I'm going. Just looked at him with disdain, didn't he? He did. He just looked back and, nah, I'm, I'm going to take another bounce. Former teammates at Adelaide, of course, as well. Jake Lever and Charlie Cameron. Restart, McInerney knocking it down. Berry coming in off the edge of the square. Can't gather it. These bundle it towards half forward. Viney. Will swerve onto his left and kick to full forward. Van Roy in front of the pack. Gordon doing the roving. He's stripped of it. Comes down to Chandler. Kick smothered. And the Lions work it out. Clearing kick coming from Payne. Back out towards the wing. How to bring it down though quickly. Howes has support in Sparrow. Knocks it to him. He gives it off to Viney. Viney will kick to full forward. Whistles somewhere. Dealt with was Viney, I think, by Danaher. Is it downfield? No. It'll come back. Viney with the free kick. High left half forward. The Lions by 49 points. Jack Viney looks into the pocket. Petty leads. He needs to take it over the top of Answorth. And he's able to do so. A chance for the fewer than Melbourne forwards who have had a quiet night to try and get on the board late here. Ben Brown kicked a goal in the final term. Now it's Harrison Petty's turn. Yeah, they've been starved to opportunities. The Melbourne forwards... Only their 48th inside 50. But just the way in which it's been coming in hasn't really given them much opportunity. Nothing with real space or nothing with any speed on it. So it's been a tough night for the Melbourne forwards. His first disposal for the night, Murph. Comes at the 13-minute mark of the final term. Harrison Petty comes in and misses to the left-hand side. A minor score. 48 points is the Brisbane Lions lead. Yeah, Petty the one touch. Bailey Fritz three, Ben Brown four. And only two goals between the three of them. Van Roy and six. Still only two goals between the four of them. And Hansworth getting stuck into Petty. Had the run in with the Lions a couple of years ago. Harry Petty. May on the wing. Goes backwards to the logo. And mark taken by McDonald. A little unsure where to go next. Wants to switch it into the middle of the ground and leave a marks. Lever looks at every player on the ground in front of him, so he sends it to the southern wing. Howes accepts it. Brisbane by 48, Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. Howes will look towards Harford, close to the line. Sparrow comes up and takes it. Now he looks inside 50. Offering to the pocket is Brown. Doesn't like the look of that. Goes in the Gorn direction. Gets separation and marks. Big Maxi. Deep in the left forward pocket, 30 metres out, 10 in from the boundary line. Well, it was slow, but it was methodical, and, and they got some space in front of the, the target they really wanted and Max Gorn. So it was actually quite smart. I know probably a lot of fans were sitting here watching, going, oh, they're just kicking a ball around, but there's method in it, and that's to create space for the bloke you wanted the ball in your hands, and that's Max Gorn. Not very reliable in front of goals. Big Maxi looking for his 100th goal in AFL footy. He slots it. Something to celebrate for the D's. They bring it back to 42 points. 12-8-80 the Lions. Melbourne 5-8-38. This is Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. Mark Murphy, the former Carlton captain and games record holder, Brent Harvey. Well, he can probably hold his head up high. He's, he's probably been one of maybe two winners on the night for Melbourne. Probably him and Chandler, probably the two that have actually really dug in. I think Viney's cracked in in this second half, but he's been one that uh, has certainly worked hard all night, big Maxi Gorn, and tried to lift his side, tried to get some form of, of momentum going, but pretty hard out there tonight for, for Melbourne, and Max gets, uh, gets one. 
he's had, had the seven clearances and he just keeps on digging in, doesn't he? He's been an absolute oh, you know, superstar. You know what you get from Maxi every week, and every now and then he has a not so good game. But tonight, he, like you said, it's a captain's game. He can hold his head up high. He'll be really disappointed with the rest of the group. Still trying sure. to lift his group. Boomer as he gets the clearance here, hand pass away to Neil Bullen, kicks inside. Fifty oh. Dan Ryan comes out of the lead and marks over the top of Stasevich. So Melbourne with a little late flurry here, more for pride than anything else. But the captain is trying to show the way. Oh, he is and. Good leap and attack of the footy, wasn't it, from Van Royant? I love seeing that from him, but we haven't been able to see much of it, unfortunately, tonight. But love him throwing himself at the contest. Six disposals for Jacob Van Royant, and this is his first mark of the match. Slightly right of centre. Kicking from inside 50. Jacob Van Royant for two in quick succession. He steers it home. Still a long way to go. 36 points, the Brisbane Lions lead. 12 8 80 to Melbourne, 6 8 44. But the Demons able to string two together since uh, the. Wow. Well, I don't think they have strung no, two together all night. That's the first time they have at the 16 minute mark of the final term. You like seeing your, that from your big forwards, Murph, but, you, but you're right. The inside 50s haven't been nice enough where they've placed the ball where they want the forward to end up. Mm. They've just kicked it on its head, or it's been under a lot of pressure. So. It has to go in like that. Just then, Neil Bullen had a little bit more time, put the ball there, and it was a great grab by Van Royen in the end. Had an opportunity to run and launch at the football, similar to what Ben Brown did before, but we just haven't seen enough opportunities for Melbourne to do that tonight. I just went back and had a look at some of the vision with Answorth and Harrison Petty as well. I'll come back to that in a moment. Out of the middle goes Rivers for the Ds. Long kick towards full forward. Punched away quickly there by Andrews. Onto it swiftly, Petrarca, his snap-on goal misses. So a couple of years ago, Dane Zorko had a few words to Harrison Petty, and he was quite upset about it. And uh, Noah Ransworth just made the, the crying face emoji at Harrison Petty. So Going back to the well. I yeah, think. going back to the well, and the bad blood lingers. I'm, I'm not sure I'm big on it. Zorko stranded straight over to Petty on cue, but he missed his intended target. And Harris Andrews takes the mark for the Brisbane Lions. Right back pocket for Brisbane. So certainly no love loss between these two sides, but, uh, yeah, that's a bit of poor form, isn't it? Kick up towards Jake Lever, who can't quite take the mark, but gets the hand pass away to Neil Bullen. Hand pass to Tom McDonald, just got the hand pass away in the nick of time. Zorko gathers for Brisbane. Quick one-two with Gardner. Kicks around the outer wing. Joe Downerher almost claimed the mark in front of Stephen May, but he... Certainly had the arms chopped if the mark wasn't paid. Slowly gets back to his feet. Ammo wants to know, given the uh, Charlie Cameron country roads, if you guys had a song after a goal was scored, what would be yours at the MCG? Oh, mine's pretty easy, I reckon. Here comes the boom. <laughs> <laughs> He's, 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 he's thought that too easily. Nah, that was too what? quick for that's, my liking, Benny. That's, that's not an outstanding. Nah, you just okay. thought <laughs> on for the first time. He's been waiting for that. Nah, Cooper come home the other night and said he had to put down, if they kick a goal at Marvel Stadium, what the song would be. He said, what can my song be, Dad? He goes, what would yours be? Oh. And I said that to him. So, And you know what? They used to actually play it at Marvel Stadium when I kicked the, when I kicked the goal. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's quite great. good. I already text that into Clinchy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Got the heads just up. Check, we'll yeah. check the number. Yeah. <laughs> Zorgo to Bailey around the outer side. Stings well and truly out of this game as Brisbane kick up towards half forward. Tom McDonald wrapped up by Berry. Good support and the umpire will ball it up. 43,098 fans in for Thursday night footy at the MCG. Brisbane by 35 points. There's a lot of songs with boom in it, you know, Murph. <laughs> some, some I wouldn't want, though. Oh, I'm just thinking of a couple of them, yeah. <laughs> Not going to read them on radio. <laughs> Kick up to the wing and gathered there for the lines by Zorko. Handball away to Berry. Slips the tackle. Gets it off to Answorth. He'll run around a couple of men and kick inside 50 for Brisbane. Back there. Petty can mark, or McDonald rather, in the back pocket. Gives it off to the run of Woe Woden. Running across fullback. He kicks towards right half back and McVee marks. He'll go back to Woe Woden. Misses him. Gardner spoils it. It comes down at ground level. McVee able to mop it up. Handball away to Howes. Wrapped up in a tackle. Ball up to come. 45 out from the attacking goal. We haven't seen McVee's trademark dash no, of halfback no. tonight, have we? Tajway Woden going to play in his first loss. All of his seven games so far have been wins. 
Dawn wins down the tap. McCluggish kicks Brisbane into attack. And Cameron Mars again. He's playing on every way is forward. Swings on the left, back on the right. Puts through his fourth. Charlie is putting on a show now. Slow out of the gates, but he's found his rhythm. Hang on, we're going to check. Shall we? No, I think the all-clear has been given. Brisbane back out by 41 points. 13,886 to Melbourne, 6 9, 45. Well, Stephen May is certainly saying it was touch, and he did it really early off the boot too. So I think they review every game, every goal yeah, they right? do. before they yeah. bounce the ball. So I'm sure they'll have a look at this one. Murph, I want you to tell us your song as well, because I know you weren't too keen on listing a song that you would have had as your <laughs> goal-kicking anthem. Wait, we'll wait till the end of the game. <laughs> 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 trying to give our special comments on, on the footy here, Benny. Don't talk about <laughs> songs after goals. Oh, you can see the finger yeah, it's and wobble. Hot. Yep. Flick yep. his rude finger. His <laughs> left hand. Yep. Score review. Everybody is now realising on the big screen what's going to take place. Yep. I'll have to do some research in the meantime, Benny. <laughs> Scratch out. Charlie Cameron's fourth goal. And uh, Brisbane now lead by 35 points. Had one, 36. Lauren Borden on the boundary. I think, that, I think the sting might have been taken out of the game for James Tunstall sitting on the bench. He was doing some warm-ups and now he's just gone back, sat there, and for the last 10, 12 minutes, just sitting in his long sleeve. So he might not be getting on at all tonight. Come on, Fags. Yeah. James Jordan in the grand final Melbourne one never got on the ground. Weren't allowed or technically allowed to make tactical subs at that point in time. It was an injury sub, but surely they could have found one. Lines with the free kick at half forward. Cameron into the pocket. Going up. Hipwood doesn't mark. Archie keeps it in. Runs out of room. May corrals him out. Throwing to come. What, are, what did Melbourne win by in that grand final? 73 or something of the like. It like blew out late. You'd like to think one of your mates would have come off with a dislocated finger or something the last 15 Surely. minutes. Cramp. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get him on. 36 points. Brisbane's lead. Danaher and Max Gorn. Max Gorn taking it out of the ruck. Manages to get rid of it to Neil Bullen. Releases Windsor. Up the middle he goes with his kick. In the middle of the ground where the contest takes place between Billings and Wilmot. Wilmot dragged it in. Now the umpire view there is holding the ball. And Melbourne will take it in the middle of the MCG. Jack Billings slowly gets to his feet. It's Tajway Woden free at centre half forward. Kicks wider than him. Out in front of Max Gorn. The Melbourne Ruckman chips it inside 50. Tolstrom just couldn't quite take the mark. Starsevich gathers. And uh, Tolstrom lays the tackle 60 metres out from Melbourne's goal at the city end. And that's just a, by 36. That's just a hand in again by McCluggage. Late in the game, they've been doing it all night. Just that little hand, just to, just to defend and get the ball back. All right, footy at half forward for Melbourne. On top of it, Clayton Oliver, a ball up to come. So Brisbane have Geelong, GWS, Gold Coast and Adelaide to come. Ball up at half forward, Gorn. Looking it down. Onto it though, Neil for Brisbane. Handball away towards Zorko. Tries to get it back to Neil. Turnover straight to Langdon. Handball to Neil Bull and inside 50. Spinning out of a tackle. Can't get away from the second. Dunkley's got him. Holding the ball. And Brisbane back with the footy. They lead by 36 points late in the fourth. That's a clip. Chris Fagan will love seeing during the week his last couple of minutes just chase down tackles, just not letting him up an inch. As Brisbane working through the middle of the ground, McCluggage to Wilmont, the kick long towards McCarthy, can't take the mark, keeps it alive, left forward pocket, bouncing shot on goal, misses to the left hand side. Through for a minor score. Brisbane by 37 points at the 24 minute mark of the final term. Melbourne quickly in. To Lever straight down the middle. Petrarca can't mark, gets it to Viney. It's a training drill now. Kicks it long out in front of Fritz. She's got five metres on Harris Andrews and he marks in the left forward pocket. It's a goal in the first quarter. Bailey Fritch. And a chance to add a second here. And uh, Melbourne keeping in mind, Boomer, that they only had three goals to three quarter time. They have managed to keep three in this final term. Too little, too late. Yep. And she? Bailey Fritch starts his approach outside 50, out to the left, with the famous number 31 on his back. Comes in and a clinical finish for his second and Melbourne's seventh. Brisbane 12-10-82 to Melbourne 7-9-51.
25 minutes gone. Final term on ABC Sport. Yeah, three in a row for the Demons. That is three in a row, yeah. yes. Finished off nicely, but... Yeah, it's been dominant. We've seen a couple of more tackles there. Uh, I think we'll, when we speak and after the game, Murph, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll be speaking yeah. about their pressure. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, we don't have to bang on to that again right now. But going, but going to Brisbane's next two weeks, big night tonight winning when you've got Geelong and the Giants to follow. If they, if they were going to go down 1-4, it would be a tough long yeah, year, I reckon, really from, from there when you're playing against the, the Cats, even though it is at home. But And the Giants... You just would have been really doubting themselves about where they were at if you if you go down tonight. So that's why it's been such a a big performance for their the rest of their year, the Lions. Lead by 31 points to get out to as many as 49, believe it or not. Crooked bounce in the middle. Lockie Neal will celebrate his 250th in style. Gorn winning the tap in the direction of Rivers. Nowhere to go initially. Gets it on the boot. It goes out towards the wing. Langdon, nice mark. Now runs away with it. Ford handball to Sparrow. Through the attacking edge of the square. Driving ball to the goal square. Fritch, chance to it. Slips through the fingers. Through for a behind. Back to five goals neat. 26 minutes and change into the fourth. Thursday night footy on ABC Sport. Ben Cameron, Matt Clinch, Mark Murphy, Brent Harvey, Lauren Borden on the boundary. Stasevic called to play on, goes short to Berry. He marks 30 metres out from his defensive goal. The Demons have the bye next week, and then Richmond, Geelong and Carlton. So a couple of good tests in the week to come for Melbourne as well. Berry out towards half-back and able to juggle the mark. Josh Dunkley at right half-back for Brisbane. Dunkley looks inboard, nothing really on offer, so he'll kick long down the Shane Warne stand side. Max Gorn's waiting for that kick, though. Works his way in front of Stephen May and Joe Danaher. And the Melbourne captain takes the mark, veers out onto his right-hand side. Kicks it long up towards Van Roy and who flies, can't get hands to it. Was dragged down, though, so a Melbourne free kick. He'll come back to him and he's just outside 50, so maybe within range. Frampo just putting him back on his mark now. Jack Levers nudge forward, spots him on the edge of the centre square, but no closer to goal. He marks just on the edge of the oh. corridor, and then 50. As uh, Darcy Gardner was moving on the mark, and the umpire hadn't played quite call. Uh, the umpire hadn't paid play on, even though Jack Lever had well and truly moved to his right. Such a touchy rule, isn't it? You just, you just hate that to big decide a, a big game when you. Huge penalty. He's only ever kicked four goals in his career, Jake Lever. So we'll line up here from the top of the goal square. And a chance to make it four on the trot for Melbourne. Jake Lever comes in. The unlikely goal scorer. And something for Melbourne fans to cheer about late in the night. 28 minutes gone in the final term. Melbourne have pulled the margin back to 24 points Brisbane's way. Chris Fagan looks pretty unamused <laughs> on the boundary line. 12-10-82 to the Demons, 8-10-58. Yeah. And you look at the scoreboard, Murph, up yeah. and you go, it's only four goals, but it's been completely different yeah. to that. They've kicked the last four to half the margin, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, that doesn't. the scoreboard's not going to do the game justice, unfortunately. No, they haven't got the uh, the reward for winning by a big margin, have they? Nah. Brisbane, they've just been all over them. But, you know, got to give credit to Melbourne to, to keep fighting out this last quarter when the game's dead and buried. Clinch, he mentioned, not a very big goal kicker. Just his fifth in his career. First of the season for Jake Lever. Gorn, slapping it straight down. Neil with the footy handball, misses Bailey. Onto a Petrarca. Handball to half forward, Neil Bullen tackled. Manages to get a kick away, bouncing ball for Fritch. He'll gather, snap across his shoulder. High floating ball, drifts through for a behind. Wouldn't have wanted too much longer left in this game, Brisbane. They're only out by 23 as it stands at the moment. Zorko out to Leicester. Got rid of Neil Bullen. Takes the mark. Hand pass inboard to Fletcher. To Rayner. He gets the hand pass around the member's wing. Out towards Link McCarthy. Takes a bounce and kicks up towards half forward. In between McInerney and Danaher. And Stephen May takes an uncontested mark. He can chip it to Lever inside the defensive 50. Short to Christian Petrarca at centre half back. 
Some of those two moments throughout the match. Oliver was run down. Petrarca tried to kick a goal from 70 metres out, which were very un-Melbourne like. Neil Bullen tries to charge his way through. It's locked up by Leicester at the edge of the centre square. Just short of half forward for Melbourne. Brisbane by 23 points. Up it goes. Gorn and McInerney looking it down. Gorn out into space. Rainer tracking after it. Was hot early in this game. Windsor tries to gather it. Wrenched off it by Neil. Brisbane back with the footy. Here is Rainer kicking on his left around the boundary line. Up to Gardner and off hands out of play. A throw in to come. The Lions by 23 points. To get out to 49. It's been a shellacking. Melbourne saving some face late. They've kicked the last four goals in the game. Going to win the tap trunk to spike it forward. Zorko onto the spill of the ball. Tackled by Neil Bullen. And it's not coming out of there anytime soon. So a ball up to come. Brisbane by 23 points. It's going to be their second win of the season. Led by as much as 44 points. Spills down the way of Viney. Still trying to wrestle the footy clear. Hand pass to Oliver. Tackle by Dunkley. Back to Viney. Brushes off the tackle of Bailey. Gets the right half forward. Kicks towards Van Royen and Harris Andrews. It clears the two. And Leicester's happy to take it over the boundary line for a throw in. Right forward pocket. And throw in at the 31 minute mark of the final term. Melbourne with five goals to two in this final quarter. As it's thrown back into play. Gorn works his way to the front, taps it down. Zorko tries to duck out of the tackle, spills away of Answorth. He can't rip clear. Zorko's in there once more, and the umpire will ball it up. Inside attacking 50 here for the D's. McInerney taking it out of the ruck, shoveling out a handball. Rivers there for the Demons. At half forward, gives it to Windsor. Kick into the pocket, looking for a mark. And Van Royen takes it. Deep in the right forward pocket. His shot won't matter. Brisbane are back looking like the Lions of old. A win they'll hope will kickstart their season. Van Royen will have the shot. He snap hits the post. And Brisbane, they will win by 22 points. 12-10-82 plays 8-12-60. Brisbane back on track. We are the pride of Brisbane town. We wear the roll, blue and gold. We will always fight for victory. Life is Troy and there's a So the Lions, they led by 14 points at quarter time, 30 at the half, 43 at three quarter time. It got out to as many as 49, and in the end, they win by 22. Oh, 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 we will always fight for victory, like the Troy Champion Lockie Neal, who celebrates his 250th with a win. One of only 16 dual Brownlow medalists in our game. The goal kickers, Cameron, that's Charlie Cameron with four of them. Two to Danaher, two to McLuggage, two to Hipwood. They were big, the Brisbane forwards. Singles going the way of Lohman, Jasper Fletcher and Zach Bailey. While for Melbourne, multiples to Bailey Fritch. He was their only multiple goal kicker with a couple and singles to Van Royen, to Lever, to Gorn, Neil Bullen, Chandler and Brown. A big win for the Brisbane Lions. They win by 22 points over Melbourne. So the Demons get the last four goals of the match in the last 14 minutes, but it was a, a commanding win in the end for the Brisbane Lions, which gives them hope of trying to wrestle back their ledger and
Trying to get their season back on track. The thoughts of Brent Harvey and Mark Murphy with you on ABC Sport. Yeah, it was a convincing win. 22 points doesn't certainly do it justice by any stretch of imagination. Um, you just mentioned, Clinchy, they kicked the last four goals and probably should have kicked the last five if Van Royen had to kick that goal as well. But it was a dominant fr from early too. And you know what I liked really early, Murph? The two big tools. Yeah, they asserted themselves in the contest, they did. didn't they? You know what? They didn't kick another goal between them after a quarter time. But they set the game up. Yep. They got four between them at quarter time. And uh, it was like, yep, we're here. We're here to play. We're ready to go. On the back of that, their pressure was, was yep. outstanding. Yeah, their, their aggressiveness and their pressure around the contest. And, you, and you're right, the two big boys up forward, kicking goals but taking grabs up forward, being involved in play. Uh, it, just, it, it just showed you they, they meant business. And Melbourne looked flat-footed. And Brisbane come here and get the job done for their... Superstar skipper playing his 250th. Lucky Neal has completed his TV interview. So a guard of honour with the Melbourne players on the right-hand side. Brisbane on the left. And it's Cam Rayner and Harris Andrew who chair off Lucky Neal in game 250. And what an impact he's had at the Brisbane Lions since making the transition from the Fremantle Dockers. He's won in all of his milestone matches on debut in his 50th, 100, 150, 200. And now his 250th game. And he played a, a pivotal part in the centre square. Although maybe in the first quarter it was releasing Cam Rayner and really providing uh, some, some support to make sure that it was him who was receiving the handballs and trying to set it up to Rayner. Yeah, we had Sparrow on his on his tail for most of that first quarter, or most of that first half. Lockie Neal, he still had a really good quarter himself. I think he still had the three or four clearances in that first quarter, but Cam Rayner just came to play, didn't he? He had the... Just had the stats just going through the roof in every department. Clearances, inside 50s, contested possessions. He was uh, it was a bright spark at the start of that game and really set the uh, the place on fire here at the G. He meant he meant business and almost slowed up towards the end. I thought he'd just done enough probably to get the three votes, Benny. <laughs> but um, yeah, they they've got a, a really solid midfield with a lot of powerful athletes going through there. And when they turn up to play, they can they can mix it with with the very best. And Melbourne came here as favourites, as they should have been. They've been playing some great football to start this year, Melbourne. But Brisbane, you know, to their credit, played a... Well, they didn't actually play full four quarters. They played three quarters and, and probably let themselves down that last quarter. But uh, up until this point this season, they'd, they'd played in patches maybe a quarter, a quarter and a half and haven't been able to win games of football. But tonight, they were comprehensive for three quarters of the first three quarters anyway. And uh, I think the only positive that Melbourne can really take out of the, the game is that they finished well. And... That momentum hopefully takes them into the following week. That's the only thing you can ask for. You can't turn up your toes and you know go from 48 points to 68 points. So they've done they've done okay in the yep. last quarter, but the, the damage was done in the first first little bit. And uh, Cam Rayner, he put together one of those one of those quarters in the first first quarter that was good to watch. He was bustling. He was strong. He's strong, isn't he? Yeah. He just, he, he just he wants the fan. He wants that physical. He, want, he wants to fend off. He wants to do it all. So he was fantastic. He's a perfect player to, to sit on a half-forward flank, come up to stoppages, then just stoppage. rush forward. Like You don't want him anywhere near the back half of the ground. Doesn't need he's to be. Too, he's too important to be to be back there. He's, he's got to be a forward half, forward, forward to centre player. And if he can get a bit more through the midfield and, and extend that out, he's finished with 25 disposals. I think he had 12 in the first quarter. But from where he was in that first quarter, he should have probably finished with 30. But... He, um, he did enough damage with his possession. He, doesn't, he probably doesn't need to be, and he will never be one of those players who will get 30 week yeah. to week. He'll, he'll be a 20 to 25 touches at best, but what he does with the football, he just exudes class and brings other players in the game by the way in which he attacks contests. He takes yards in front of him, so he doesn't just get the ball and bang it on his boot. He, he's aggressive and powerful, and he loves seeing these types of players at their best. So the Brisbane Lions, after losing their opening three games, now make it two wins on the trot. And such is the evenness of the season. They go from 13th on the ladder up to 9th at the start of round five of the AFL. So the Brisbane Lions uh, losing in round one, uh, opening round to the, uh, the Blues, to Fremantle, to Collingwood, and then beating North Melbourne and now Melbourne. Let's join them as they make their way into their change rooms with Lauren Borden. Thanks, Clinchy. Yes, yeah, slowly making their way down there. I could see on the monitors in here they were just gathered up there at the top of the MCG. Lockie Neal waiting for what looked like a few players to do the big laugh at the MCG, but here they come. Lockie Neal, the first one through, Josh Dunkley following behind him. He's going to high-five a few of the players as they get into the circle there, but a lot of high-fives coming 
from friends around here. Chris Fagan had a big smile on his face as well when he came in a little earlier on for the players. He's just watching on now from just near the meeting room where the players will go into a little later on after the song here. But a lot of smiles on the faces. Obviously a pretty comprehensive win, but it looks like they're pretty happy with this one now having strung two in a row as they get ready right now to sing their song. This one, they all go and backslap and uh, shake the hair of Lucky Neal as well. Every single player's got around here in game 250 just to celebrate that milestone with him. Literally every player has gone up to him uh, just to celebrate a little with Lucky Neal. So we should be able to get Dane Zorko in just a moment's time to have a chat about the game. All right. Thank you, Laws. Brisbane winners by 22 points, 12-10-82 to Melbourne. 8 12 60. But the final scoreline probably doesn't flatter Brisbane for just how comprehensive they are. So, Murph, I mean, there would have been some concerns for Chris Fagan coming into tonight. You know, he has six players over the age of 30. Uh, Kitty Coleman out It's amazing, it's amazing those conversations start happening, isn't it, when you, yeah. when you lose a couple of games well, about just... the blokes over, over 30. And we, we saw that before the, the Brisbane and Collingwood game, didn't we, talking about the Collingwood uh, senior players and talking <laughs> about how much, how much more football they've got left in them. But tonight was as, as comprehensive as, as you see. Let's head back down to the Brisbane Lions rooms. Thanks, Quinji. I have got Dane Zorko with me to chat about the win. It's a pretty happy rooms right now. Obviously, you had the win last week against North Melbourne, but today, one against a team that's won four in a row. What is the vibe like now? You've got a pretty comprehensive win. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, you probably saw you heard. Um, yeah, it was great. I mean, to do it for Lockie's 250th as well. Um, our record in milestones hasn't been great, so um, to get the win for him tonight, who's been a fantastic stalwart of our club since he's come here, um, yeah, I'm just super proud of the way the boys have sort of responded the last fortnight. The record at the MCG is one that's spoken about a lot and isn't great. Is it a bit ironic, I guess, that it comes after you play at Norwood last week, which the dimensions couldn't be any more different? They were different, yeah. Um, we had wings and grandstands on top of us to, yeah, open pastures, but uh, yeah, look, obviously there's a lot of... Um, talk on the outside world about us and the MCG but we still don't mention it um, it's very similar dimensions to the Gabba and I think what we saw tonight we've changed up a few um, key words that we like to use and I thought we used the ground really really well so um, we should like playing on the MCG, everyone loves playing on the MCG everyone loves coming to the MCG um, and we're no different And you obviously got such a great win tonight do you feel like you won basically every position on the field? I thought it was collectively a great effort, and it started with our, our key forwards once again in the in the first quarter. Um, you know, Eric jumping at the ball, Joe making contests, and then guys like Charlie and Link get involved. You know, their pressure was outstanding, and you know that's 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 our bread and butter. That's what we want to do. And um, you know, our midfielders, yeah, as you said, everyone was collectively as a team played really well tonight. So I'm super proud of them. Let's head upstairs now for some more questions from Mark Harvey and Brett uh, Brett Harvey rather than Mark Murphy. <laughs> Yes, it's Boomer here, not Mark. <laughs> Dane, how are you, mate? Congratulations on another personal great game, but collectively you thought oh, we thought you were outstanding. You mentioned the pressure up forward. Uh, we thought the pressure was outstanding over the whole ground tonight. Every time Melbourne looked like they were clear, there was always just a, a little hand in to put a little bit of pressure on. Was that, was that a focus tonight going into the games that looked like it lifted to another level? Yeah, it was, Boomer. Um, we obviously know they like to come out the front a fair bit, so we as defenders and, and our wingmen really had to be on our toes for those, you know, those spike forwards that Gorn sort of does, but um, I thought our come forward pressure was excellent and our chase from behind. You know, Jared Berry laid an unbelievable tackle on Clayton Oliver just when the momentum sort of looked like it was going to start going their way and ultimately changed it once again. So, yeah, I thought pressure tonight. Um, Fags was super proud with us at half time, but the job was to do it again. We've, we've had good halves and good quarters this year, but we haven't been able to execute for four quarters. But I thought tonight, um, yeah, it was, it was a really, really super effort. What about the um, Cam, Cam Rainer's first quarter? I'm not, not sure if you had a, would have yeah. sat back and watched the Cam Rainer show, but he had six contested possessions, six clearances, seven inside 50s and 12 disposals in that first quarter alone. Oh. Uh, he was outstanding, especially when so much focus goes on to Lockie Neal. I mean, you playing off half-back a little bit, you can get the football. Josh Dunkley, we know what he can do inside. But 
it must be good to see a young boy like that come through and, and stand up and take the pressure off Lockie. And Lockie doesn't have to be the three-vote player every single week. No, that's right. And he did that superbly tonight. I mean, you know, he's been thrown forward. He's been thrown back over the last two pre-seasons, you know, just trying to find where we can get his impact. And tonight, oh, we saw it. I mean, Lockie was a little bit down. Um, I think he had a tag early on and Cam came in and his aggression and his, his hunger to get the ball and get it going forward for us was superb. And um, I'm hoping that's the, you know, that's the start of the making for his season. You know, he's, he's sort of, he's been consistent the last few weeks without ripping a game apart. But I think what we saw tonight, especially in that first quarter, to really get us going was, um, you know, a little bit that what I've seen over the last four or five pre-seasons and copping his fend off in the chest. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's good that I wasn't on that end of it tonight and he was able to do it on the opposition. Uh, Dane Murphy, mate, congratulations on your game tonight. I thought you were terrific. Talk to me about some of your role playing off that halfback flank and a, a young Darcy Wilmot, only early on in his career, but he's showing signs of being a really important player for you this year, obviously with Kitty Colburn not being there with that knee. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he came in on the scene a couple of years ago. His first three games were all finals, so he's had a, a, an unbelievable introduction into the AFL. And, um, you know, his, his versatility, I, I guess, is his real weapon. I mean... He looks like he's out of his out of a contest, but his speed and his ability to jump at, the, at, at a ball when he's out of position is, you know, a real highlight. He, he's, he's working really hard with me on on his disposal and his execution when he has the ball. But as a as a one on one defender, I mean, there's him and Stasevich, There's none better. So um, he's just going to keep growing and growing and, and get better every single week. And um, tonight we saw another sample size of that. And just your skipper, Lockie Neal. I know you, you talked about him a little bit earlier, but. What still stands out to you, Lockie? I know he's an ult ultimate professional, the way in which he trains, but just setting the scene day to day, doing those extras. I've, I've never seen him fumble below his knees. Like, yeah, neither. What's it like playing with him? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I mean, I, I've had a pretty good front row seat to it over the last four or five years. So, um, But you're right, his ability to, to not only work to a contest, but then when he gets there, impact and... You know, his ability to get first hands and find a hand pass that no one, you know, not many in the competition can do. His vision is just elite and, and it's no no stranger. I mean, he works so hard on that. And tonight, although he was down, you know, we really wanted to win for him for what he's done for our football club over the last five years since he's been here. So, um, yeah, look, super proud of him and, and, and it's no surprise that, uh, you know, he's, he's one of the greats of the game. It's not a bad down game. He's had eight clearances and 24 disposals. Not too bad, but... Do you give him some honest feedback about a few of his tattoos? No, he's getting a bit carried <laughs> away. It's very patchy and there's a few interesting ones to discuss. Yeah, there's a few stickers on his arms now, which, uh, yeah, he's liking. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, it, I, I try and stick clear of that. He normally wears a shirt, so they cover it. The only time they really come out is when um, he's got a jersey <laughs> on. So, uh, look, he's, um, yeah, he's a superstar. This was a serious question. Did you say stinkers or stickers? Uh, both. <laughs> 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 uh, Dane Talker to the Sydney Brisbane Lions. Uh, Dane, did it feel season-defining heading into tonight? Uh, somewhat. Um, yeah, somewhat. We obviously understood just how good they've been going over the last month. And to go over to Adelaide and, and play their back-to-back -back weekends against the two Adelaide sides and put up the performances they have, um, you know, it was a real important game for us. There's no doubt about that. But I think we took a lot of confidence after last week's game against North Melbourne. And... Um, our ability to move the ball there. We sort of carried it into tonight as well. So um, maybe not season-defining, but we knew it was an important game. And Noah Answorth, late in the game, seemed to sort of make a, a crying gesture towards Harrison Petty. I don't know if you saw that. Um, obviously, there's been a rivalry between the two clubs. Is that a statement in which you're comfortable with a, a teammate making on the ground? Oh, I, I wasn't aware he did it. Uh, I'll probably go and have a word to him. Yeah, that's obviously not the way we want to win, but, um, yeah, obviously, heat of the moment, stuff happens, but um, I'm sure he would have fixed it up after the game. Uh, good on you, Dane. Thanks so much for your time. Two wins on the trot. Well done. Nice, guys. Thank you. Dane Zorko joining us from the Brisbane Ryan. Brisbane Lions rooms winners by 22 points. Uh, well handled by Dane. I think you've got to be uh, humble in victory and gracious, or gracious in, in victory and humble in defeat. Yep. Or vice versa. I got it right the first time. But <laughs> I don't think that, um, yeah, you you want to say that. And I think Dane would, would be right going there and having a word to him about it, especially when you, you're in front late in that, uh, in that game. Yeah, it'll win the right way. And they've done all the talking on the field, haven't yep. they, Boomer? Um, oh, they even did. Though Melbourne kicked you the last need. four goals of the match. Um, that was sort of his biggest statement as Brisbane have made really since the 
the grand final where they, they could have almost won the premiership had it not been for the last uh, goal from Collingwood. 49 points, did you say, Benny? They got out to... Uh, 44. Uh, 44. Uh, no, they got out to 49. 49, yeah. 49 points at one stage. It's a, that's a big margin against a pretty good team. Yeah. That's a, that's a big margin. They'll be really disappointed the way they finished, and good teams would be. Mm. Now, they've kicked the last four goals, the Demons, and um, I'm sure Chris Fagan will have something to say about that. There was something I didn't like tonight, and that's that um, young Tunstall didn't get on the ground. Yeah, I... Please don't understand. There, surely. You're, you're going to win the game, and I don't know, I'm sure he's got a reason for it, and he probably didn't want to take someone off, but uh, I would have liked to see halfway through that last quarter at least to come on and give him a run. Perhaps but, perhaps he's playing a game tomorrow or on Saturday. It is only Thursday night. Yeah, that's true. Because give, what, give him a normal run. What, what happens is if you only play half a quarter or a quarter, they'll say, right, yeah, you can go back and play three quarters in the yeah. NFL now. So um, they might have just thought, you know what, let's just hold him off and let him play a full game, get some really good match condition in the in the VFL. So what do you think would have pleased Chris Fagan the most? You mentioned Cameron with his first quarter, Lockie Neal with his milestone win, Charlie Cameron kicks three goals, career-high 17 disposals, Joe Danaher and Eric Hipwood help set the tone early. Is there one or two elements you think that would please him the most about tonight? Uh, all of it. I was I was very impressed by the way they played tonight. I, I thought that if they lost tonight, it was going to be a tough road to, to play finals, being you know one and four, and and having lost to teams who were are going to feature at the end of this year. So they got back to what they're really good at, and that's their, their clearance and their their contested work. Uh, but I I reckon that's the best they've played for a, a long period of time. Brisbane, I was I was really impressed by the way in which their forward line worked. They probably they stopped after three quarter time, so they they will take some some learnings out of that. They'll understand that when we don't get certain things right, we can get scored against and get scored against pretty heavily in that last quarter. The game was completely done by that stage, but yeah, they were comprehensively too good for Melbourne tonight. And and Melbourne, as Dane Zorko just talked about, and then being over in Adelaide and having back to back victories against both Adelaide sides over there is no mean feat. Yep, and they. Uh, looked again like they were going to be a top four, six team. Melbourne, they probably still might be. Everyone has a bad, bad day, but they just had a lot of players down today, and they looked a bit sluggish. Uh, a question for for all three: Did was was it Brisbane was so good in the first three quarters, let's, three quarters, or Melbourne were off tonight? I've never seen Melbourne's midfield whacked like that. I, it's the eternal question every game: Was it more good lines or bad days? Isn't it up? Really tough. Well, you're the experts. Why are you asking us? <laughs> I think it's, I think it's still a yeah. Melbourne next week, and you just wonder about the toll of playing those two games in South Australia, which clearly they were rolled up for. Mm. And then the quick turnaround again to Thursday night, even though they did play last Thursday night, but just the, the mental toll it takes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You're only five games in. I, I don't think being tired or looking... Uh, they look sluggish, though, tonight. I understand they're away for a week, but... I think the professional athletes these yep. days. I don't think Agreed. there's any any room for that sort of that any that sort of talk. And I just thought Brisbane were just were hungry and wanted it, and they they understood their season was on the line. My main concern going into a Melbourne game, we know defensively, I think they're ranked two or three in the competition at yep. the minute. Is can they kick a big enough score? And they don't need to kick a huge score because most teams don't kick big scores against you. Now, Brisbane have kicked. 12 goals, 10 tonight. So they've had some, some shots on goal, but they've had a, they had a lot of inside 50s too um, yeah. to, to do that, a lot of easy ones. My biggest concern was if Fritch, if, without Cosie Pickett in, Fritch needs to kick a small bag. And a small bag for me for a forward is probably four, four to five goals. He's kicked two tonight, I think. I, I just don't know where they get their other, their, their other goals from. I don't think Petty's going to kick a, have a game where he kicks you five. I can't see Ben Brown doing that anymore, no. and Van Royen is just young. He, he doesn't need to do that just yet. Um, they need a couple of goals out of Petrarca. They need their midfield Viney, Oliver, to hit the scoreboard. And, yeah, I just I think if you can stamp Bailey Fritch, I reckon you can beat Melbourne. That's That was a concern going into this game. That's the whole reason why I, I tip Brisbane tonight. I mean, the obvious question is going to be around the absence of Cosy Pickett, is that their their forward line looks slow when it's Harrison Petty, Ben Brown and Jacob Van Royen. Take aside Bailey Fritch, who's pretty yeah. good at covering the angles, and, and Kate Chandler's had a really good sort of last 12 months or so, but you take out that spark, but they yeah. weren't really winning the ball around the uh, game, so I feel like that gives them I f- I felt, much of a chop out. Yeah, I felt going into tonight's game, I thought Melbourne were, were going really well. I thought they'd 
they had played some really good football over the past three weeks, had some some really big wins over there in Adelaide. Uh, I thought they were coming here tonight to to beat Brisbane. I thought Brisbane were, was certainly under under heat if they did lose tonight, and but they just got smacked up around the ball, and they just. When you, especially when you've got Max Gorn who can do what he can do in the air for you, to not be proactive, to not be on the front foot, I found very surprising. So they obviously were a bit sluggish for whatever reason. They'll, they'll only know mentally inside their heads what, what they were thinking going into tonight's game, but they just didn't li- really look like it at all in that first three quarters. When the game was on the line, they were second to the ball and they didn't hunt enough. They weren't wanting to tackle, weren't wanting to turn the ball over. I think they... They just got outworked in general, whether that's from the uh, at the contest or from it uh, on the defensive end. Brisbane are really strong. Melbourne just didn't have any opportunity to try and win the ball back from their D50 and get any form of sentency through the corridor at all, which is something that they've been really good at in the uh, the, the first period of this, this season. So, so, so it was 58 to 27 hitouts Melbourne's way. Yep. 44 to 35 clearances. Yep. Brisbane's way. So they're roving Max Gore they're, by the end. Well, that's what they did for for majority of the night. And when you've got those players like Lockie Neal and Cam Rayner, particularly in the first half, doing the work they did, Dunkley in there, they, they got beaten up at the stoppages, yep. the Demons. Mark Murphy alongside Brent Harvey, Matt Clinch and Ben Cameron with you on ABC Sport. We're with you still for another uh, 27 minutes or so, so you can get in touch with us on the SMS 0437 774 As Rod has done from Hobart, the pressure the Lions applied to the Ds when not in possession was fantastic. The tackling was great. Vital game for the Lions to win. Lohman has really come along. He certainly looks like there's a spot for him inside Brisbane's forward 50. Uh, Kevin from Shenton Park says Ainsworth disappointing. And Ammo from Dandenong wants to know what should, can the Brisbane Lions do to keep the momentum going up to the end of the match? I'm not sure the it's, momentum so much. Yeah, it's, this thing had gone by that stage. Well, they they knew they won the game, so I don't think they were trying anything different. But you just, when you've won the game like that, you, the opposition kick a couple of goals. You're not super concerned, are you, Murph? You know you've got the four points back. No, you're not. And I think Chris Fagan would would show some clips of where they were at in the first three quarters and what they weren't accepting, and probably what they were accepting in that last quarter. Yep. There might be some subtle differences, and it just shows you when you when you're not right on, you can get scored against. And Melbourne weren't right on at the start and Brisbane came here with a real attitude of just getting at the contest and getting hungry for it and they just were too good too strong and it just shows you when you're a little bit off you can get scored against there was a moment there was a moment just on the forward 50 in the first quarter where Starcevic wrapped up Fritz and I just thought that was a great tackle it was a strong tackle nearly could have been a free kick because he dumped him but it got dropped in the ball it was it was a fantastic tackle and it was nailed the game and set the tone Brisbane winners by 22 points over the Demons. Let's head back down to Lauren Borden. Thanks, Clinchy. I'm here in the Melbourne rooms with Jack Viney. Thanks for your time after the match. You've just come out of your line meetings and your meetings with Simon Goodwin. Can you give us a little bit of an insight in what the uh, reception was from that match? Yeah, no, obviously disappointing. Um, probably felt like we got beaten in in most phases of the game tonight. So, um, yeah, all in all, a uh, disappointing result. We, we spoke a bit about the season as a whole because we go on a buy at the moment. So... We kind of step, had a step back as well. Looked at the season holistically. Um, you know, we're, we're four and two. We're uh, we think we're in an okay position, but certainly there's some things we, we're looking to tidy up over. Um, you know, over the coming weeks. Was there anything about spending the uh, time in Adelaide, two games playing across in South Australia, that maybe you felt you're a little bit flat coming into tonight's match? Uh, you know, not really. You know, it was it was a big campaign. Uh, over there, but you know, no excuses tonight. We um, we had the full seven days. Um, you know, we prepared really strongly. So um, yeah, no, there's no excuses as to um, you know any any dip in performance tonight. Is there anything that you felt changed in that final quarter when you started to be able to string together consecutive goals for the first time throughout the night? Yeah, no, we just tried to um, you know uh, get the ball back quickly off them. You know, obviously they were, they were using the ball, uh, taking some unconnected marks throughout the game. So really emphasise about um, trying to take that away from them um, and, and doing doing the same to them on the flip side. So, you know, I see them get a little bit of momentum in the last quarter. Um, the guys fought, uh, fought pretty hard to, to make the most of it, take some learnings out of it. We tried a few different things. Um, so that, you know, that was one small positive to, to take away from it. Let's head upstairs now to a few more questions from Brent Harvey and Mark Murphy. Uh, Jack, Mark Murphy here, mate. Uh, was it like when you come at 
out of the rooms and you and you digress and you talk about what worked for you and what didn't. Like, what's your gut feel on tonight? Um, yeah, no, very disappointed. I thought there wasn't necessarily uh, one specific thing that really let us down tonight. I just thought, uh, you know, across the board they were better than us, um, you know, in the contest and clearance. Um, thought they used the ball, you know, built the ball up really well. Um, and then defensively their, their pressure um, was, was really high. So felt like they beat us in most phases tonight. Um, so, you know, when that happens, you come away uh, pretty, pretty disappointed. You're obviously a very experienced side. You've got some superstars, some terrific players in your list. It, do you already have those discussions post game so far with Simon Goodwin about you know letting yourself down, or was it just one of those nights where you go, look, boys, we just got shown up because we weren't hard enough at the contest, and they really hunted us, and and we'll learn from that and be better next week. Yeah, you know, full credit credit to Brisbane. Um, you know, they, they played really strongly tonight. Um, you know, they're, they're grand finalists, um, and you know, whilst their record this season, we, we really felt, felt like they're. Um, uh, you know, doesn't really paint a picture as, as, as to the team they are, and they, they played a terrific game of football. Um, you know, to come into state, play on the G, um, and then to, to come with that kind of intensity early uh, in the game, um, we just weren't up, uh, you know, we just didn't match it. Um, and as experienced players, you know, we, we tried fighting, finding solutions throughout the whole whole game and felt like, you know, we started to get some things working in the, in the last quarter, but unfortunately it was just a bit too late, so... Um, you know, it's, 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 it's lucky we're having these kind of conversations now early in the year because um, we feel like there's, there's a lot of good things going on uh, with us at the moment. And like I said a bit earlier on, we're four and two, so it's a pretty positive start and there's some really clear opportunities to get better. Jack, you touched on the clearances there. Big Maxi gone, 58 to 27 hitouts in your favour. Uh, you, you guys lost the clearances 35 to 44. Was that noticeable you, you mentioned it but was it noticeable out there that they were sort of probably sharking you guys a little bit more than maybe anticipated yeah uh, you know they're, they're a strong strong midfield max gets his hands to the ball most weeks and um teams teams are finding uh, uh you know making it really difficult for us to get to get clear uh clear clearances so um, you know, that's something definitely that we're going to look at um, over the bye and, um, you know, try and maximise Max's hits going forward. Uh, Jack, Ben Cameron here. A couple of quick ones before we let you go. Uh, Colton Tholstrup, uh, I think he... Did he spend some time living with you? What can you tell us about uh, this young lad who a lot of people wouldn't know much about that we saw for the first time? Yeah, no, he's exciting. Uh, Colton, he, he lived with me for uh, three or four weeks when he came over from, from Esperance in WA. Um, you know, he's a country boy, full of energy. Uh, he's like an energi- energizer bunny, um, and uh, he's going to be really, um, really exciting for us going in the future. So, to see him get his uh, first opportunity tonight, um, I'm wrapped for him, and you know, he's going to be a pretty special kid for us. So, uh, he's made of the right stuff. We've got the right attitude, and uh, looking forward to seeing his career unfold. Great hair too. Um, <laughs> we've. I've seen some stuff on your socials, I think, uh, around the place. I think it's your brother, Max. Uh, jiu-jitsu training that you guys do a lot of work in. Yourself, Clayton Oliver, I think he's done some stuff with your dad down at North Melbourne as well. What do you get out of that in the sort of hand-to-hand combat of sort of um, being an AFL inside midfielder? Yeah, you know, my brother's, uh, you know, black belt in jiu-jitsu and kind of finding a little niche, you know, um, contest, uh, tackling, uh, craft, uh, in, in footy um, so you know I, I find it extremely valuable just his little uh, techniques and the way that you know he's able to manipulate uh, his opposition uh, body and find advantages you know in close close uh, areas so yeah I've been working pretty hard um, and closely with him uh, over the last kind of two years and uh, you know dragged a couple of boys along as well um, whilst he's, he's also been doing his, his own stuff on the side and working with North Melbourne and he's also with uh, AFLW uh, Melbourne uh, program as well. Uh, Jack, we always appreciate you giving some of your time, especially after a loss. Uh, thanks very much. Enjoy the bye. We'll see you on uh, Anzac Eve. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. Jack Viney joining us from the Melbourne Rooms, Brisbane winners by 22 points. Have you heard of the jiu-jitsu training, Murph? No, we did a bit of it. Bit of it? Mm. Yeah, back in the day. We, I think there was quite a few clubs jumped on that little bandwagon of um, Johnny doing a bit of Johnny yep. Donahue, doing a bit of the mixed martial arts. And it was one of those sessions in, 
in pre-season. You were either on for a 60 or 90 minute period, depending on how you approach the first 60. How'd you go on the dojo? Oh, I was I was quite crafty, Benny. Surprising, <laughs> surprisingly for a few out there. But um, he it is it is correct in what he's saying, Jack, about learning little tips about how to try and manoeuvre your opponents around stoppages and trying to hit them at the right time and and understanding the weak points. So Break, breaking tackles, yeah. Yep. You see Jack do that all the time. He's got this little duck thing going. Yeah, how to roll roll yeah. your shoulders, roll roll into the tackle rather than trying to um, just submit to it. So right. You'd be good. You'd be good at it because the lower centre of gravity, the better it is. <laughs> I'm the second tallest member at... of this commentary what team are you today, Boomer. About? You're smaller than me and I'm taller than Murph. So you... <laughs> no, I'm... <laughs> I've got, I've got a foot on you, blokes. <laughs> so we're not, we're you've not got to tallest. play in the ruck, so we, we need you. We're not um, the tallest the commentary team, are we? So, um, Kane Corns told me that he reckons Simon Black, right as the ball would go up, used to turn and just hit him with an open palm right in the sternum, which yep. would, one, get him a little bit of separation, and two, have him go, yep. right, as, uh, right as the ball went up. Yeah, a few little tricks good. that you, you do, but you, you probably can't, you couldn't really do them anymore. You'd probably get rubbed out. You would, yeah. yeah. Some of the moves, yeah, and, and Johnny Donahue. He was at about six different clubs at the same time, so yeah. I don't know what advantage we got. We all knew <laughs> how to do the opposite to what he was teaching you. Yeah, on the SMS, uh, 0437 774 774. Uh, Phil from Victoria says, D's obviously didn't come to play, thinking they would have it in the bag. Ammo from Dandenong's followed up. The song for Murph, if he had played for the Brisbane Lions, Ooh, yeah. still kills me he didn't. Would be sweet child of mine. <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> not and uh, Brett says I'm oh. sick of seeing players slip over <laughs> in today. Zero a blight on the game. Uh, zero four three seven 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 four seven seven four. Brett wants the long stops out. Oh, I yes. love it. Uh, who's Good. got the votes for the ABC Football of the Year tonight? Oh, what did, oh, we've sort of we've looked at each other and we gave each other a couple of nods and winks, so I think we're on the same page. Well, who do you want to give one vote to then, Boomer? Because that was the one that I was a bit we, worried about. We didn't, yeah, we, we spoke about Big Maxi Gorn. He had 23 touches and abundance of hit-outs and kicked the goal as well. I thought he was really good, but it's going to be hard to leave out a, um, a Dunkley, a Zorko, who we didn't have in the top two. Um, Charlie Cameron, maybe... Well, I, I went with a. I'll, I'll go here now, Boomer. I've gone with Hugh McCluggage. I'll give one. One. I know you wanted to give him two. Yes, I thought he was fantastic. They kicked the two goals. Had the twenty-three disposals. I thought he was terrific all night. Had the six clearances as well, and just such an important link player for them as well. He's such a hard worker. Really, one of those players who just goes from wing to wing and just really opens up pockets of space for his teammates to work into. Josh Dunkley, I thought, was probably second best on ground. He, he had the 30 good. disposals. He had the four tackles, three clearances, five inside 50s. He, he's just a really solid player, isn't he, through that midfield? He's probably he's better than a solid player. He's, he's he a star. Much better. And he, he blankets, usually blankets an opponent and then gets a lot of ball himself. So he had another terrific day, to, day oh, night tonight. And then my best on ground, I thought, after quarter time, it's hard to go past Cam Rayner. I thought he just broke the game open with the way in which he went about it. He probably could have got stuff off at half time and still got our votes. Well, I was almost going to write the votes at half time. <laughs> but uh, the heat, that was an absolute domination by him and so important for Brisbane going forward that he can come in and, and play a role like that. He's not going to do that and break the game open every week that significantly. But if he can come in and just add to what Lockie Neal does, a, a Dunkley a uh, McLuggage, uh, Zach Bailey, who had 23 disposals tonight and kicked a, a goal. It's a really it's a, six or seven really good midfielders in there at the Lions, and there's no doubt that's why they got to where they got to last year. But Cam Rayner can be that next level up if he can just be uh, an injection to that midfield and, and get clearances and, and hit the scoreboard. He's he's a crucial player for them, and he gets my three votes. Three to Cam Rayner, two to Josh Dunkley, one to Hugh McCluggage from Mark Murphy in the ABC. Football of the year. I thought Harris Andrews might have been a bit unlucky, but uh, I guess he and Jake Lever kind of cancelled each other out. There's lots of unlucky blokes out there. Charlie Cameron, <laughs> I thought, was another one who was, was terrific tonight. The three, but uh, they all can't get in there, Clinchy. No, they can't. So in front of 43,098 fans, Brisbane winners by 22 points, 12-10-82 to Melbourne, 8 12 60 uh, just some quick final thoughts on the round to come as round five of the AFL continues tomorrow night. It's the Western Bulldogs and Essendon from Docklands. All of a sudden, there's a, a lot to like. The uh, spotlight has been brightly shone on Brad Scott's side as to whether there is the improvement, given the Bombers have missed out on winning a final for 20-odd years and the expectations are so high. What are you looking forward to most around tomorrow night's match? I'm probably looking to see if the Western Bulldogs can stand up to what I think they're capable of. 
I think they've got a great list, like I mentioned earlier, and I'm probably more looking and focusing on the Bulldogs than I am with Essendon. I would love to see just something. Um, Caleb Daniels out of the team. What McRae can serve up. Um, is Norton going to stay forward and they play a three-tall prong forward line, or do they need him to go down back? I'd just like to see a little bit more potency through their midfield. A little bit more bang for buck for me. Yeah, well, they get great numbers, don't they, through the midfield, yep. the Bulldogs, but it's not seeing that transferred necessarily on the scoreboard, but yeah, I think there'd be probably more fallout if the Bulldogs were to lose against mm. the, the Dons tomorrow night. I'm not sure how well Norton and Hugo Hagen are working together at the moment, and maybe it's a time and chemistry thing and they need to spend some time together, but it feels like they fly for a lot of the same marks and get in each other's road at the moment. Something that we don't see from... Are you saying they're not intelligent footballers, Penny? I'm just saying maybe they need to develop the chemistry. Now, take, look, it, it does take time for key forwards to, to work together with that chemistry. I only really seen last year still Charlie Curnow and Harry McKay, you know, flying for the same balls. And they've been a lot better at it this year. Back half of last year, they started to get it, either one up, up the ground, working high up the wings, and the other one being a, a bit deeper. So it, it does take a bit of time. Um, I, I feel Norton's got to be the one that's got to be a, a bit deeper and mm. play a bit more of the, the bigger presence. He's got to say, get out of my swamp. Yeah, and, and you can obviously go up and do, and do what he does and then take it in turns. But I, I, I think Norton probably doesn't have the tank than what probably Hugo Hagen well, would just, just as a key forward, I just think he needs more shots on goal. Whether he kicks them or not, he just needs more. Imagine if Charlie Kerno or, or Harry Mackay was having one shot, no goals a game. People would be on him. Hip, hip would. If, if he's hip would. Yeah. People are all over him. Uh, I just think he needs to have more of a... I shouldn't say presence, because when I watch it, he's got presence. He jumps for everything. Yeah. He's but there must be a reason why he doesn't have that presence, because I looked at a stat throughout the week, and it was Norton had been an, uh, an inside 50 target 10 times compared to Hugo Hagen around 30-odd. And that's just the, the sway is completely yeah. too too significant. So it's either, it's either one thing where he doesn't catch the eyes of his midfielders coming out, that he's, he's not explosive enough or he's not moving, so they don't necessarily look, look for him, whereas... Hugo Hagen is, is that tight? How many goals do you think he's kicked this year? Four four games they've played? I think. Yeah. Four games? How many goals do you think he's kicked? Five. Yeah, four. Four. Four, four goals. Mm. It's, it's not, not enough, enough, is it? No. Nah. So I was looking at that same stat you were, Murph. So Jamari Hugo Hagen has been targeted 27 times inside 50 for six goals. Cody Waitman 10 times for 11 goals. Aaron Norton 10 times for four goals. Riley West 9 times for four goals. And, and Sam Darcy with eight times for six goals. Hmm. So it feels like Sam Darcy is a good inclusion just to try and break it up a little bit. Clearly, they like the, the movement in which yeah. Jamara offers inside their forward 50. So whether it's whether it's movement or it's positioning, like if he's getting his positioning wrong, like I'm not sure what it is. I haven't seen them play live this year, but... Uh, you did them in round one. No, I didn't. Gold Coast and... Who played round one? Richmond. <laughs> I, I could have sworn you were here for around. Melbourne and the Western Bulldogs. No, it wasn't. Round one. I think he might have been on Formula One duties that day, maybe. Oh, oh, old Lanyards. Old Lanyards <laughs> Murphy. Lanyards Murphy, <laughs> Murphy walking was around that, the pit lane. Is that it again? <laughs> no, uh, I wasn't here, Benny, but anyway. It's, I, a, I, it's I a think... pretty good VFL side for um, Footscray as well. It is think pretty of, handy. Uh, Rory Lobb in there, Caleb Daniel, yeah. James Harms they got from Melbourne. Yeah, so they're obviously still trying to work out their best mix, but I think Norton, they just need to do some work on where his position mm. as, as It's clearly not right. Yeah, because he, he should be... More of a target than ten times the first four weeks. Can, can I just say one thing? And I've sort of I haven't whacked him, but I think he needs to kick more goals. Bulldogs get a lot of football. I don't think there's a lot of clean football into their forward fifty. So Trelaw, he racks him up. He had thirty odd last week. Bangs the ball in a lot from stoppages. Just bang. Bont and Pally's got the class. Mm. He, he's the one that you want to be leading to when you hit him up. I don't. I don't think the Bulldogs have got clean ball going inside fifty. So not all Norton's fault for me. Uh, Archie Perkins is out and will set a field for the Bombers. Alwyn Davy Jr. and Sammy Durham comes in. Peter Wright still has another three matches to serve of his suspension. A replay of the elimination final to kick off proceedings on Saturday. GWS taking on St Kilda. The Giants are flying at the moment and it feels like they're going from strength to strength. The Saints bring in Marcus Winhager and Hugo Garcia is going to make his debut. Sort of feel like in uh, Canberra this is going to be a tough challenge for Ross Lyons Saints. Will be tough, but I like the way in which the Saints go about it. You know, you're in a in a contest when you play St Kilda. The way in which Ross Lyon likes to to play his football, you, the Giants know they won't have it easy up there at Monica. So it'll be a good challenge. But I still think the Giants got too much class. That was a great goal last week for the Giants, wasn't it? Between Brent Daniels and Toby oh, Green, 
Yeah, they, that's, that's schoolyard fun yeah. type stuff. Wasn't Harlem good Globetrotters. He's a good player, little Brent Daniels. A very, very, very good player. Important yeah, player. He's, him and Bedford. Got a, bit of, got a bit of boomer about him, I same, reckon. Same name, <laughs> that's about it. Yeah, it's, oh, <laughs> it's maybe the same height. Are we, uh, the speed? You both yeah, quick. No, speed quick yeah. Now, I, I really like him as a player. Yeah. Bedford as well has added um, a lot of dash, a lot of speed, but but the pressure. Them yeah. two put on they, pressure. They love their um, pressure. Amazing pressure. So, good on Giants are my tip, early tip for the for the grand final. I think yeah. they're a, a great team. They're, they're two backs down, Buckley and... Um, what's that of mine, Blake? Ryden. No, who's, who else plays down back? He's a star. Um, Taylor. Taylor. Taylor yeah, yeah, Taylor and, and Buckley down there. Now they've got Hogan, who's on fire. Yeah. Toby Green, who's one of the better players in the competition as a forward. Um, Riccardi. They, they, yeah. He's got they a just, lot. And yeah, he's, got, he's gone down on a limb, hasn't he? Yeah. Giants are <laughs> play favourites. Top of the ladder. No, early, like I, I picked this four weeks ago. <laughs> Come on, guys, we got him. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if the St Kilda captain Jack Steele goes to uh, Tom Green, who's averaging over thirty-one disposals. Uh, the Blues and the Adelaide Crows in the twilight. Adelaide are one of a, a few sides who are winless so far this season. Sam Walsh returns for Carlton Merv, so uh, interesting to see how he goes. First up yep. in his uh, first game of 2024. Yeah, game 100 for Sam Walsh makes me feel old. But, um, yeah, he, he, he's he been ready for a couple of weeks. They just had to make sure that he's he's been doing all the training and, and getting all the necessary hits to make sure that when he does come in, he's not going to get sore again. So, yeah, I think he's a he's a crucial piece to the to their puzzle, Carlton. But, you know, the, the Crows last year belted him off the park, didn't they? But it's a different, uh, it's a different side that what we're seeing. Well, both sides really. Adelaide have just got no confidence whatsoever, and and Carlton just keep on finding a way. Any Marvel coffee? Stadium? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Docklands, Any yeah. coffees with Sam Walsh recently, Murph? No, I was saving him for when he got back. So I was catch up next week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Murph still hasn't given us his song yet either. Yeah. No, we're, we're going with that. You said that six track. minutes, mate. <laughs> Sweet child of mine. <laughs> Sweet child of mine. <laughs> we joining Murph. You would love that. What what sort of genre of music do you like, Murph? Oh, I'm a bit of. Oh. <laughs> what was that? Pop, pop, bit of, pop, not bit of, pop. Bit of rap, bit of R and B, R and B. Uh, the Gold Coast Suns host, Haw- host Hawthorne on Saturday night. I'm just going to keep powering my way through. Uh, Sam Mitchell, his Hawks gave up a good challenge against uh, Collingwood last week, but uh, it feels like Damien Hardwick's made a bit of a statement with the the young brigade of the Gold Coast Suns getting the opportunity. Brandon Ellis is out of the side, and uh, Damien Hardwick hoping that. And take the Suns to a place they haven't been before. Well, they, look, they look good, didn't they? A couple of those young boys last mm-hmm. week, they didn't look out of place. There's some. I just don't know how they make these big boys 18 years old that big. And he, like, it's, it's crazy. Chicken, what is it? It's the chicken that they're eating. Yeah, Jed Walter looks ready to he's, die. Oh, yeah, he's, oh, he's enormous. A, he's huge. They're certainly Eight, like, 18 years old. Whatever they're eating, we missed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, just, they're just like, they're ready made when they get in, aren't yeah. they? Very rarely do you look at them and go, geez, they're scrawny. He'll be, like, he'll be good once he puts yeah. some meat on. There's obviously going to be some yeah. natural growth that'll come. But they're certainly so much better prepared than when whoever we went through the, the 17 or 18 days. I don't think I lifted a weight. Yeah, you're right. I don't think we did under 18. A lot of body weight stuff. <laughs> It'll be just interesting to see if... Uh, Slim lifted a weight, didn't he? <laughs> Sam know, Mitchell leaves Blake Hardwick forward, having uh, swung the magnets in the final term. Clinchy, he was good last week when he did that. He was, that absolutely. was an amazing move, and he yeah. nearly turned well, the game. It was it was unbelievable. Did you know, when, in his draft year, in the TAC Cup, forward. as it was then, he played as a forward. Yeah. He was the leading goal kicker in the competition, Ahead of Charlie Kerno and Harry Mackay. In the TSC Cup. So oh, wow. playing as a leading sort of undersized full forward was well, the good best goal week. kicker he, in the comp. He yeah. read the ball super well. Yeah. And you know if you're in a contest with him, you, it's going to be tough because he's a, he's a strong bugger. Been played out of position his whole AFL career. <laughs> 150 games and they're just starting <laughs> to work the set, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. He gives a good contest and that's what Sam Mitchell needs is uh, other guys who try and lock the ball inside the, the forward 50. Uh, Port Adelaide will look to continue their centre bounce dominance. They'll take on the Fremantle Dockers, so another good test to try and work out where this Port Adelaide side sits. Um, Travis Boat didn't quite get up for this week. Ollie Wines and Sam Palpepper return, but uh, Fremantle, they continue to build, so uh, another good test for them uh, after narrowly going down to the Blues last week by 10 points, and uh, there's probably a few Freo fans still in the West who think they were pretty harshly done by in the last couple of minutes. Uh, Match the round on my I reckon. Port Adelaide, Freo. Some, yep. Two really important, like, good sides. I, I really like the way which Freeman will go about. I know they're, they're a bit defensive. Port they Adelaide... They get their offence going. They do. But I'm just a bit worried about probably there's some of their key targets going forward. That's probably why it's, they're finding it a little bit harder at the moment. Freo or...? Freo, no, yep. Freo. Whereas I think Port's a very 
fun side to watch. They're very attacking. I love their midfield. They've, everyone speaks about Butters and Horn Francis and, and Rosie, and so they should. But um, Yeah, Willem. Yeah, Willem Drew. Willem Drew. He's uh, leading the stats in like four of the... Yeah. Yeah, he's a good player. He's like the third-rated player in the competition through the early part and, of the and season. And he's one of those players that you you put to Lockie Neal tonight. Yep. You yep. say, play on him. Yep. You know you're going to get a, a, a great... Um, he's going he's to be... A he's very much like player, a, a, a Josh Dunkley type yeah, but, player, isn't he? But works off. He's got, he's got amazing endurance. He just works. And he's their most effective kick going inside 50. Is he? Wow. So you, you look Better at Butters, Rosie, Butters. Rosie and, and Horn Francis, but he sort of has this weird little kicking style and it... it doesn't look effective, but he finds targets. He's a competitor. That's what he is. Just the two games on Sunday. The Cats bring in a, another youngster. Connor O'Sullivan will make his debut. Sean Manor comes in. What will we see from North Melbourne Boomer? Uh, Tyler Sellers makes his uh, first appearance. So looking forward to seeing him. But they made the decision at the selection table with Jaden Stevens and Cam Zerha out. Liam Shields as well. Yes, yeah, so I think Cam's got an injury. Um, Steve O, I think, omitted. So great to see Sellers in because he was our... Uh, picked this year in pre-season. He come off our VFL list and got an opportunity. He kicks a kicks a bag every time he plays VFL. Good size. He's got. I think Larky needs him in the team now that Coleman Jones is out. So um, it'll be good to see. But I mean, we need to bounce back in in a lot of aspects. It's mm. a little bit disappointing last week against a pretty good outfit, by the way. I know Brisbane hadn't won a game to that um, to that stage, but they were they were good last week, Brisbane. So. We've got to tidy up a few things, Clinchy. Yep. Uh, just on Conor O'Sullivan, so managed by our very own Brett the Leo. So uh, he, he had him. He played in the O&M Grand Final. We went up and broadcast in uh, Albury last year. Uh, that was a heck of a day uh, out there. There were about 12 lead changes, and uh, it was within a kick all day. But, uh, yeah, Lids went up and caught up with him in a top pick, and Geelong are very big on him. They think he's going to be a, a star of the future. So, And that's, that's not what Lids, Lids tells us. That's... Genuine reports That's out of Geelong. Okay. So, um, yeah, look forward, forward to seeing forward him. To on yeah. Sunday, uh, West Coast and Richmond close out the round. Um, Harley Reid kicked his first goal last week. Are there any more positive signs in the, the West Coast rebuild? Oh, there's positive signs, no doubt. I thought they were, they were good from the, the... Andrew Gaff is main name for the West Coast Eagles. Yeah, for the, the vision that I saw last week, they looked like the side that was well-organised and wanting to attack, which is what you want to see rather than just being the side that was chipping it around and playing a, a defensive sort of style of ball movement. So it looks like they've given, me, given the licence to try and have a, a dip more through the through the corridor and yeah. play a bit more overlap run and, and back in their legs. So... Uh, that's the way in which you want to see some of these young players want to try and play. I know everyone talks about the defensive side of the game, but yeah, I, I was a big fan of what they did last week against Sydney. So uh, get Richmond on, their, on yep. their home deck. You never know what could happen over uh, there. Personnel is huge for West Coast. Like you bring in McGovern fit, Yo fit. Yep. Um, that just makes yep. a huge difference. They were all out last year, and Barras was battling one out when he was playing. So personnel for West Coast, if they can keep their good players on the park, they're going to be competitive. The thoughts of our team of the remaining matches of round five. Of course, you'll hear them all on ABC Sport across the weekend. Thank you, Boomer. Thank you, Merv. Thank you. Ready, boys. We'll see you next week. Uh, thanks, of course, to Ben Cameron, to Lauren Borden down on the boundary, to Stuart Hollywood Baker, and to Jonesy back in the studio. Thanks for your company tonight. Round five continues with Friday night footy from Docklands. It's going to be a belter as well. The Bombers and the Western Bulldogs. Our team will pick up the coverage from seven o'clock local time in Melbourne. Until then, stay safe. We look forward to your company across the weekend. Healthy living is your thing. The ABC Listen app has all the podcasts. Try the health report. These are ultra-processed products. And if you compare the calories... You might also like, what's that rash? You're talking about zits. Teenagers love to go... All Life Matters. Love online after 50. It took me 18 months to download my first dating app. Get your health kicks anywhere, anytime with the ABC Listen app. For the latest sports results and stories from around the globe and at home, check out ABC Sport on our social pages. Just search ABC Sport wherever you scroll. Welcome to ABC Grandstand's Hall of Fame. On mobile, online and on your radio.
With me is Tracy Holmes to talk about Sports Hall of Fame. And in today's program, you and Neville Oliver speak with Ron Clark and Ralph DeBell. Do you know what either of them are doing now? I definitely know what Ron Clark is doing now. Ron Clark uh, is very heavily involved in uh, the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games. He became the mayor of the Gold Coast um, during the whole bid process. And, um, you know, the Gold Coast went on to, to win that nomination. So the Commonwealth Games is coming to town. And uh, Ron Clark, who, you know, one of the, the greatest 1500 metre runners of all time, without doubt, uh, is, is still so heavily involved. And it's amazing when you think back to these great names of the past and to think they're still giving back to the sport that they competed in when, when they were children, effectively, or young adults. Uh, and they're still there. And, and to have names like that, you know, still influencing young people that are coming through is tremendous. And Ralph DeBell, what was he involved in? What sport? Crack and field. <laughs>